Temperatures till 8:20 and then 9 p.m. And so, what we've reported today is that when the polls, uh, the vast majority of them, close at 8 o'clock, this means that we won't get the results immediately when they close. It's going to take a little bit longer than that. But we do anticipate once the results come in, it'll be quick because this is different this time around. Last election, there were wards across the city. This by-election is electing one person, the next mayor of Toronto. Yeah, and they do tally the results as they go, so they're not waiting for the very end. And a lot of it's electronic as well, so they're very fast with the results. Of course, CP24 will have all that coverage as well. So roughly 15 minutes after the polls close at 9 o'clock, then the results will come in and we'll find out once and for all who is going to lead the biggest city in the country. And it's been such an interesting race because, as you said, we have 102 candidates. In one case, there's a dog running for mayor, right, <laughs> along with a human. And a lot of people have been telling us throughout the day that they just weren't quite sure who to vote for because in this case, there have been so many candidates in this case. So we will know very shortly. There's still an hour left uh, and a little bit till all the polls close. And once again, you can get those results. You'll want to tune in. CP24 has an election night special starting right after our newscast at 7 p.m. And be sure to join Omar Satsadina tonight at 11 for CTV National News, followed by Zoraida Allman with our next local newscast at 11.30. In the meantime, our coverage continues anytime on CP24 and online at ctvnewstoronto.ca. For Lindsay Morrison and all of us here at CTV News, thank you for watching and have a good night. Your doctor says you can't work, and I believe them, and so should your long-term disability insurer. My name is Aaron Waxman, and if your disability claim has been denied for any reason, call me at 416-661-4878 or pound LTD on your cell phone. And before you call, you should always remember that there are no bad questions. 416-661-4878 or pound LTD. Come on, Snow, let's go. This Friday, unlock the mystery of the greatest adventure ever. Turn left, turn left. What are you doing? Rescuing you! Hang on! Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. At the Brick Mattress Store, we have the right mattress for you, guaranteed, for four days only. These spring roll mattresses are just $2.99 each. And get 40% off this Beautyrest Queen mattress, only $5.99. The Brick Mattress Store, the right mattress, guaranteed. Once upon a time, there lived a beautiful princess with sleeping fingers. With her bad network, her fingers just slept and slept for so long. Until one day, she came upon a charming store. And she discovered that the best network is even better than a prince. Claire stayed in this amazing hotel and paid this much for her room. Jess stayed in the same hotel and paid a lot less. How? Let's go back. While Claire found her hotel on her usual booking site, Jess found her deal on Trivago. Have a look-see, Claire. Trivago compares hotel offers from major booking sites so you can find the best deal for you. Hotel Trivago. Susan, beautiful dream. Thanks. But the next Lotto Max jackpot's an estimated $30 million. Let's turn the country home into a villa. <laughs> Girl can dream. Why dream to the min when you can dream to the max? Six, Broadway's Tony Award-winning euphoric celebration is headed to Toronto. Now Six is coming to the Six. Join the Six Wives of Henry VIII at the Royal Alexandra Theater. Beginning September 23rd. Book at Mervish.com. At Schneider's, we care about making hand-tied, carefully crafted sausage. We care about mixing specially selected, perfectly balanced spices. We care about using smoke from natural hardwood in traditional smokehouses. We care about following 132 years of tradition. Because you care about what you bring to the table. Schneider's, Canadian crafted since 1890.
election night in Toronto and voters are deciding who will be the city's next mayor. There are a record 102 candidates to choose from in this election, which of course was triggered by the shocking resignation of John Tory in February. You still have 16 minutes to cast your ballot, Toronto. Polls close at 8 o'clock, except at four locations in the city, which have been extended for what officials are calling earlier interruptions. Nearly 130,000 people took advantage of advanced voting. So after months of campaigning, it all comes down to tonight. Candidates have been crisscrossing the city, debating the issues and pitching their priorities in the hopes of securing Toronto's top job. From 299 Queen Street West, this is Toronto's breaking news. Good evening and thanks so much for being with us. I'm Lena Latifat. And I'm Nick Dixon. Welcome to our special coverage of Toronto's new mayor. Common sense solutions that are going to actually get you moving. Prioritize what the exact needs and wants are for today and also for our future. Building more housing, making sure that the TTC actually gets moving. A livable city, a city that we're proud of, a city that we're not just waiting for the city to come through for us. Go back to basics and reinvest in those core services that residents rely on. We need a new deal and I have those relationships, I have the track record. A city that is more caring, more affordable. CP24 will be with you all evening as Torontonians elect a new mayor. On the right of your screen, you'll see information and results by ward. And then on the bottom of your screen, you're going to see the numbers as the votes roll in. Of course, those numbers right now are at zero until the polls close at 8 or 8.15 in some cases. Our reporters and crews are out all across the city covering the candidates as the results come in this evening. And joining us live in studio for some insight and analysis this evening are three people who know City Hall and know some of the candidates quite well. We are joined by Adrian Batra, Editor-in-Chief of the Toronto Sun, Adam Vaughan, Principal at Navigator and former Toronto City Councillor and former Liberal MP, and Jamal Myers, current City Councillor for Ward 23, Scarborough North. Also joining us live in studio for expert political analysis, including the impact this election will have on Queen's Park and Parliament Hill are Jennifer Keysmat, founder of Marquee Developments and former chief city planner and mayoral candidate. Scott Reed, CTV's political analyst and co-founder of Fest Chuck Reed and former advisor to Prime Minister Paul Martin. Also joining us live in studio is Kristen Wong Tam, former city councillor and current NDP MPP for or Toronto Centre panelists. Welcome to you. Looking forward to those conversations. In the meantime, CP24's Lindsay Biscaya is live at the Power Board tonight. She's got the stories behind the numbers. Lindsay. Yeah, that's right. Nick and Lena, we're going to be showing you this map quite a bit tonight. So it's dark right now. These are all the 25 wards of Toronto. Uh, but as results start coming in in terms of who uh, has the most votes per ward, you'll start to see these wards changing colour. And that will show you, you know, some of the issues and values that people in this city have uh, and who they want to vote for and why. Why? Back to you for now. All right, Lindsay, thanks so much for this. Now, Olivia Chow is the perceived front runner in this race, leading in the polls throughout the campaign. But will that translate into a victory? One of the big questions we're following tonight, CP24's Beatrice Vaisman is live at Olivia Chow headquarters and joins us with more on the feeling inside that room about an hour before polls close, B. Yeah, it's going to be uh, an exciting day here at Olivia Chow headquarters, Nick and Lena. Uh, this is the Great Hall at Queen and Dover Court. Right now it's still empty, but uh, a team Olivia Chow hoping that this is going to become not just a concert and event space venue, but a, a venue for a celebration tonight. That's the magic question that you just asked here. Will all the opinion polls uh, translate to the ballot, to the polls where voters right now are casting their ballots? Uh, she's been in the lead largely in every opinion opinion poll since this campaign started, though her lead has slowly, slowly narrowed just a little bit in this past week. Uh, we just watched Olivia Chow out here on the floor of the Great Hall going up to the stage, getting a feel for the room, getting a feel for the podium, uh, wearing a teal blazer and a white shirt to stand out against the purple background here inside the Great Hall. And look at what we've got for you. Our, our camera operator, Matt Reed, finding a bag full of buttons from the 2014 race when Olivia Chow ran for mayor last time. Uh, it's the same campaign colors, but you can bet she's hoping for a different campaign outcome. She came in a dismal third last time. Will she pull up all the stops and be elected as Toronto's new mayor? We'll find out in just a little bit. Nick and Lena. Right, right. yeah. 
Thank you, Beatrice. Well, Mark Saunders, Toronto's former police chief, of course, he is no doubt hoping that Premier Doug Ford's endorsement of him will put him over the top tonight. CB24 Steve Ryan joins us live with more on that. What is the mood like there, Steve? Well, Lena and Nick, we're at Bistro on Avenue Road, which is a quaint uh, pub-style establishment that's been in this neighbourhood for decades. Uh, Mark Zahn has arrived here at about 6 o'clock with his supporters, and he remains optimistic. He still believes that he is the number one uh, qualified candidate to lead the city. Uh, he and his supporters will be here tonight as the votes come in, and he said that uh, when he was campaigning, he spoke with voters who were concerned about law and order. And, of course, him being a former police chief, he served with the Toronto Police Service for 37 years. He believes that he is the best candidate to address the those issues and the other issues facing the city of Toronto. So back to it. All right, Steve, thanks so much for this. Live now to CP24's Eden DeBebe. She is at Anna Bailao's headquarters tonight. The former deputy mayor has been collecting endorsements from a number of city councillors, even former mayor John Tory. Eden. Exactly. That probably is the most notable endorsement, Lena, coming in in the last hour of the campaign. And of course, has it made an impact? Has it really made a change in Bailao's chances to win? That is the big question. We're hoping to get that answer in just a few hours when polls close. But the big question here moving forward is what is Bailao's plan for the city? And of course, what is her plan if she does end up losing? It's turned into a two-horse race. Bailao clearly submitting herself as second in the lead. But again, is it enough? Big question. A lot of high spirits here. We're expecting to see Anna Bailao a little later tonight. Doors have officially opened. People already trickling in. We're expecting hundreds later tonight. We'll just have to see if it's all enough to secure her that spot. Lena Nick sending it back to you. Okay, Eden, thank you for that. Live now to CP24, Scott Hurst. He is covering the Anthony Fury headquarters this evening. Scott looks quiet there now. Nick and Lena, we are live at the Metropolitan Centre along Finch Avenue East. The party night headquarters for Anthony Fury, all quiet right now, Nick, as you said. This party should get going around 8 o'clock, and it's quite a big ballroom, so there could be a few hundred people here after the polls close and when the, once the results start to roll in. I'm told the candidate himself is at home having dinner with his family and should come here a bit later after the polls close, and there could be a few hundred people here greeting him. And this is a campaign that's shown some momentum over the past few weeks. The big question is, will it turn into votes on election night? We'll have to wait and see in just a little bit. Nick and Lena, we'll send it back to you. Scott Hurst live at Anthony Fury HQ tonight. Thank you, Scott. City Councilor Josh Matlow, he was one of the first to announce that he was considering a run for mayor shortly after John Tory resigned. Mm -hmm. CB24's Bakari Savage is live at Matlow HQ this evening with more on the situation mm -hmm. there tonight. Bakari. Yeah. Good evening, Nick and Lena. So we are at uh, Firkin on Bay right now. So the doors just open at 7 o'clock. We are still awaiting supporters to come in. You know, it's only been about eight minutes, so no one started to trickle in just yet. I understand that Josh Matlow and his family, they are uh, having a smaller, more intimate watch party not too far away from here. But I was talking to his campaign manager, Catherine, a little bit earlier. And, uh, you know, one of the things that she talked about was the heart and, you know, the pure enjoyment that she's had by working on this campaign, that's something that I've also been able to, to witness from other people from my coverage uh, throughout all of this. And that's something that, again, we will be speaking with people about as they begin to come in here. Again, we are at Firkin on Bay, and the night is young. Nick, Lena? All right, Bakari, thanks so much for this. Now, as we mentioned earlier, voting will be extended at four locations in the city, which means the release of results, that's going to be delayed by about 15 to 20 minutes this evening. So these are the locations. West Hill Apartments on Lawrence Avenue East, that will stay open until 8.15. Mm -hmm. Sacred Heart Catholic School, they're also staying open until 8.15. St. Thomas Aquinas on Glenholm Avenue, that is going to stay open until 8.20. And the Britton House on Mount Pleasant Road, that location will remain open until nine. And with that, CP24's Mark Liverman is at a polling station at the East York Civic Center on Coxwell Avenue. What's happening where you are, Mark? Yeah, been relatively smooth and quiet for the last few hours, Lena. We've seen uh, people kind of trickling in and out. Uh, I spoke to a poll worker here a little while ago who said uh, they expect somewhere between uh, 300 and 450. That's usually what they get for a local election. I've got uh, Alan, and remind me of your name as well, Therese, Therese here. Uh, guys, tell me, you just came from voting inside. How was it? How'd you find it in there, first of all? 
it was, it was, yeah. yeah, it was quick. Yeah, it was. We we're in and out. I think there's a lot of advanced voting going on, so should definitely come out and <laughs> there's no line. Just come out and vote. Yeah. It's important. What about you? Yeah, yeah. We just walked right in and did our thing and walked right out. How, what did you guys? I mean, how important is it? Uh, it's still an hour to go with voting. How yeah. important is it to get out there and uh, and get your vote in? I mean, this is this is our chance to make an impact, right? And I mean, like we said. You're in and out. Just, just get in, and then you you can't complain about what's going on in uh, our city afterwards. You get the chance to complain about it. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. Appreciate your time. We'll let you get out of the drizzle here. Uh, again, a lot of people uh, making their way in and out right now for the uh, last hour of voting here at East York Civic Center. I made my way inside earlier. Uh, relatively quiet in there too, but uh, smooth sailing so far at this location. Guys, back to you. Okay, just about 50 minutes to go there, Mark. Thank you. Of course, the candidates have also cast their ballots, Josh. Josh Matlow, for example, was at a Midtown polling station earlier today, shortly after it opened. He was joined, as you can see, by his wife and their daughter. Anthony Fury, who saw a surge in polling in weeks leading up to today's election, he cast his ballot at Kimberly Public School. And Brad Bradford was also with his family, including his newborn daughter Bronwyn, as he arrived to vote this morning as well. Olivia Chow was among the candidates who voted during the advanced polling period. And the same story for Mark Saunders as well. He cast his ballot on the final day of advanced voting. This, by the way, is Saunders' second run of public office after losing in the provincial election. Anna Bailao voted at the Trinity Community Recreation Center with a crowd of supporters to cheer her on. And Mitzi Hunter also voted early at the same Trinity Community Recreation Center. All right, well, Toronto Zoo Mayor will have to forge a new relationship, of course, with the provincial government and Premier Doug Ford. So with more on that, let's bring in CTV's Toronto Queen's Park Pier Chief, Siobhan Morris. Oh, well, this will be a totally different uh, relationship we've seen. We know that Doug Ford and John Tory had a really close working relationship. Uh, in fact, Doug Ford talks about John Tory as being something of a mentor to him. So this, of course, a brand new situation. We've heard Doug Ford talk quite emphatically in the last week or so about who he doesn't want to have uh, be in the mayor's seat. He says Olivia Chow would be an unmitigated disaster for both the province and the city. He really, uh, I think, stoked some fear about the possibility of very high double-digit tax increases driving businesses out of the city. Her mayoralty is one that the premier says that Torontonians, that workers should be afraid of. We did hear, of course, uh, Doug Ford promise early on to stay out of this mayor election that didn't really stick. In the last week or so, we saw a lawn sign for Mark Saunders pop up on his lawn, and he said yes, that he feels Mark Saunders is the only candidate to lead the city, in part because he has experience leading an organization, of course, as the former chief of Toronto Police. Uh, Doug Ford feels that Mark Saunders is the only guy who has uh, led an organization of that uh, of that size, represented really all of the city all at the same time. There are some other complications too. I mean, uh, the province and city have some big challenges in the next term ahead. Uh, things like housing, affordability, getting uh, major projects like the Ontario line moving down the road a little bit faster. So this will be a very interesting race to watch tonight. Mm. Okay, thanks so much, Siobhan Morris, live at Queen's Park tonight. In the meantime, we have an update on the situation at those four polling stations. That's right. Toronto Elections has provided the following response. Here it is. Each location, it says, is being extended due to unique circumstances, which include fire alarm interruptions and medical emergencies. The temporary power outages did not impact the ability to process voters. As a result of this extension, the release of by-election results will be delayed by about 15 to 20 minutes. So that is the latest there. We're going to take a quick break now. Our special coverage of Toronto's new mayor continues right after this. Yeah, we'll be checking in with our city hall and expert panel about what could happen tonight. More coming straight up right after this. You don't move on because you're ready to. You move on because you've outgrown who you used to be. I'm on the precipice of doing something either really stupid or totally liberating. Come work for me. But my kids need me even more these days. I realized you never know what tomorrow will bring. Sitting here with you is like 10 years just. You're too depressed to work. You know it and your doctor knows it and still your long-term disability insurer denies your claim. 
My name is Aaron Waxman, and I've spent my career helping disabled people just like you. Call me at 416-661-4878 or pound LTD on your cell phone. And before you call, you should always remember that there are no bad questions. 416-661-4878 or pound LTD. Uh, Six-piece McNuggets meal. What do you want? Um, nothing. Here we go again. Those dips look good, though. Here it comes. Maybe she'll let me have a nugget. Better make it ten. Order wisely. Hot weather. Cool deals. Boxing Week and Summer Sales event is on now at Glassman's Bad Boy. Exclusive Boxing Week prices. Up to 70% off on most furniture, appliances, mattresses, and electronics. Buy more. Save more on top brand appliances. Who has better prices? Welcome back to our special coverage of Toronto's new mayor. The latest from the city, it says due to earlier interruptions, voting hours have been extended at four voting locations. And as a result, results are going to be delayed by about 15 to 20 minutes. That's a live look at the East York Civic Centre, not impacted by these delays. Let's check in with our first panel tonight, our city council panel. We are joined live in studio by Adrian Batra, Adam Vaughn, and Councillor Jamal Myers. Thank you all for being here with us. Adam, we'll begin with you. This is the biggest by-election in Toronto's history. No matter what happens tonight, we will see new leadership. How exceptional is this moment? Well, it's, it's, it, nobody gets uh, access to as many voters as the mayor of Toronto in any election across the country. So for that reason alone, it's, it's, it's a big election, and it's amazing that the city is being able to pull it off with only four polling stations across 25 wards with delays. Um, but it'll be interesting to see what the turnout is. Um, By-elections typically don't get a high turnout, and a low turnout has impacts for all the candidates in terms of where they think their vote's going to be coming from. I'll be watching two things. One is the upside-down T, the old city of Toronto, which tends to vote most heavily, mm. but also the upside down U around that is where a lot of the suburban councillors and a lot of suburban candidates get their strength. And those are the two elections that are happening simultaneously. And if you can win both of them, you walk away with this election. The trade-off between those two often decides the winner and the loser. Adrian, there are a whopping 102 candidates, including a dog, in this race. <laughs> Is this the sign of a healthy democracy, or is it just too many candidates? Well, it's too many candidates. <laughs> and, and I think that one of the first acts as the next mayor, someone should actually look at what the threshold is to enter it. Look, there's not a lot of barriers to entering politics in Canada, and that's a very positive thing. But this it could use a, another look and, and to, to weed some of it out. But that all said, look, we, we're, we're in this by-election now. Let's not forget why we're here. It's $13 million of taxpayers' money. I felt like we were just here a few short months ago, but now we find ourselves in a position where a new mayor is going to be elected. It's um, one of the things I'm looking for, of course, is voter turnout. Mm -hmm. Speculation, of course, that it will be generally low. You know, so we'll do it all again in 2026. But this, whoever is successful tonight has such a significant opportunity to tackle so many of the challenges this city has. Obviously, there's different ways of doing that, but that's what Torontonians want them to do. Go to City Hall. And like Jamal will tell you, get the work done, yeah. get the city cleaned up, get the crime under control, handle the TTC the best you can, and, and lead the city into uh, you know, a, a far brighter future out, out, out of the pandemic. Jamal, what does this night mean for Toronto? Is this a change election? Oh, this is 100% a change election. I think you saw that in all the campaigns. Uh, whether they've been in City Hall for a long time, whether they've been away for City Hall, everyone was sort of giving that same message of, People want change, and I heard that all the time in the, at the door, heard that all the time when I did my own campaign, but there wasn't really that opportunity for change. And now that there's sort of this unexpected opportunity to really change the direction of the city and to really have that conversation of where do we want to go as a city, I think a lot of people are excited, and I think a lot of people are looking forward to what this means in Toronto's future. All right, City Council panel, thanks so much. We'll continue to chat, of course. Let's check in with Nick now. He is standing by with our second panel tonight. That's right. We've got our expert political panel on this side of the house as well here. Jennifer Keys, Matt Scott Reed, and Kristen Wong-Tam here. Appreciate all of you being here. Jennifer, I'll start with you. You and I talked just days after the sort of shocking news about John Tory's resignation broke. What has stood out to you about this mayoral campaign? We've talked about the number of candidates, but what about the campaign itself has sort of stood out to you in terms of what Torontonians have heard? 
Well, when this first happened, people were asking me across the city, who are you going to vote for? And I said, I don't know. I need to see their campaigns. Mm -hmm. I need to say what people are going to say. I'm, I need to see how they conduct themselves. Mm -hmm. I need to see how they stand up to the pressure of being a mayoral candidate, because none of them had been a mayoral candidate other than Olivia Chow previously. Mm -hmm. And look, maybe she benefited from that experience. But I think the big thing that stands out to me is that we had a policy-rich campaign. That's pretty rare. Mm -hmm. But it didn't move the dial. We really see many of the candidates going into this evening in a pretty similar position to where they were at the beginning of the campaigning. So there wasn't kind of a breakout candidate, there wasn't a breakout moment, there wasn't a great debate, let's face it, there was no great debate, um, but there was some great policy. So I think what's kind of shocking to me is that some of the people in the middle of the pack who we expected, given their experience in politics, given their experience in public life, to really stand out, didn't end up having a standout moment, and instead have had to rely on the endorsements of people like Doug Ford and John Tory to try and boost them over the finish line. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty big surprise to me. That is indeed a lot of people talking about the endorsement side of it. Scott, I've got to talk to you about the different levels of government side of this, of course. I'm not going to get, ask you to get inside the mind of Doug Ford, but Doug Ford was pretty vocal about Olivia Chow's potential mayorship and what that would mean to the city. She has been the front runner throughout. What do you think is going through the minds at Queen's Park tonight when they think about a potential Chow-led city? Well, there's no question that some people around the Premier think, well, it's great, we'll have a foil in the mayor's office and that will work for us politically. I don't think that's right. I, I, I think when you take a look at the city of Toronto, what it's asked to do provincially, what it's asked to do nationally, um, I just don't think that it makes sense for Queen's Park to be at war with City Hall. And I think that they're going to have to try to find ways to work together. And if you look at Doug Ford, when was Doug Ford experiencing rough road himself as Premier? The first year when he was fighting with everybody. When did it start to turn around for him? When he found ways to cooperate, collaborate, when he's like, you know, talking about how he and Christian Freeland are high-fiving and going roller skating together or whatever in hell it was. I think ultimately he's going to have to develop some sort of partnership with Olivia Chow if she's the next mayor. And party stripe and partisan banner is going to have to be put aside. Okay, interesting. And of course, Kirsten Wong-Tam, you're at Queen's Park. You watch the Premier in action. You're also representing the New Democratic Party, which clearly Olivia Chow is part of as well. So what are your thoughts then on what an Olivia Chow mayor might mean to the city of Toronto and how do you see the Premier interacting? I think Olivia is going to surprise everyone. There's been a lot of, uh, uh, of tax uh, that have been uh, sort of tossed at her, uh, largely unfairly, by uh, opponents throughout the campaign. They've, uh, they've labeled her and they provide a lot of misinformation. But the Olivia Chow that I know is someone who's actually very principled. She's very hardworking. She works across the political aisles extremely well. So once the, the gamemanship is over, I think you're going to find that Olivia is going to be reaching out to Doug Ford. She'll be firm when she needs to be to stand up for Toronto, but she'll also be very principled as how on how she advances Toronto's ob objectives. And I think that Doug is going to have to, the Premier, sorry, the Premier is going to have to do exactly the same. This is the largest, most powerful city in Canada, and he really couldn't be at war with us all the time, yeah. even though he does pick on Toronto a hell of yeah. a lot. And, and, well, and Scott did make a good point about the Premier's first year and, and how, you know, it was a little, let's be honest, a rough start. Uh, Jennifer, really quickly, this could be a redemption story for Olivia Chow as well. 2014, uh, she was leading for quite a while and ended up becoming third uh, behind John Tory and Doug Ford. What about this? About about the comeback side to this. Well, the comeback side is really fascinating. And look, you know, we need the results to come in. Of course, in. absolutely. Yeah. Um, just, but, yeah. the, you know, the comeback side is, is really fascinating for a variety of reasons, including in her campaign for mayor, mayor last time around, um, you know, the analysis was that she was overhandled. Mm -hmm. And, you know, having, having been in that seat before, I know what that's like. You kind of get twisted into knots. Say this, don't say this. Wear glasses, don't wear glasses, you know. Mm -hmm. Should you wear a coat? Should you have, you know, sleeveless dresses? And this time, it was very clear that Olivia's position was, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to be me. I'm just going to be me. I'm going to be very authentic. And I think that that actually was something that came really, really through on the debate stage, that she wasn't twisting herself in knots like we saw some of the other candidates do. They were mm -hmm. moving themselves around the political spectrum to try and, you know, pick up a few votes here, pick up a few votes there. And Olivia sort of was, you know, very straightforward through the whole campaign. She never looked like she wasn't being herself mm -hmm. and just being who she's always been. And 
very clearly that's something that has resonated with voters. And very clearly we do have to wait for the votes we to be counted. To so definitely appreciate the perspective <laughs> there. It looks like polls will close in a little under an hour from now, so we'll have more on that. Appreciate this first kick at the can here panel. Right now, though, we're going to send it down to Lindsay Biscaya. She is at the Power Board with more on the maps. Lindsay. Yeah, thanks, Nick. And I really just want to take some time to show our viewers something that they're going to be seeing a lot tonight. Now, this is only on CP24. And Veronics Analytics has gone through thousands of data points to come up with these 12 voter segments. And these people, these groups of people make up Toronto. So you've got affluent families, big city burbs, new Canadian mosaic, young in the city. Uh, you're going to be seeing a lot of these groups tonight as we go ward to ward looking at who lives in each ward. For example, let's go to one of those wards now and just show you. If we look at Etobicoke Center, this is kind of what you'll see tonight. So big city burbs, new Canadian mosaic, and affluent families make up a majority of this center, this ward rather, with big city burbs making up about 34% of it. So who are these people? Well, they're well-established immigrants and second-generation families, household income of about 121,000. And if you take a look at the map, big city burbs are the orange parts, and maybe it doesn't look like they make up majority of this war, but that just means high-density areas, right? So think apartments, high-rise buildings. Uh, so that is big city burbs. If we take a look at another one of the groups that really make up Etobicoke Center, New Canadian Mosaic, middle to lower income immigrant households. Uh, so this group makes uh, a little less money, mixed education, but still making up a good chunk of Etobicoke Center. And lastly, we'll take a look at affluent families. So these are wealthy families, empty nesters, $319,000 is the average household income and usually at a university uh, level of education. And again, when we take a look at this map, it's very yellow. So it looks like affluent families might make up most of this ward, uh, but these this group is is probably living in a more kind of spread out uh, area with a little more space. So that's just an example of what you'll be seeing tonight. I'm sure our viewers will get familiar with this as we move forward. Um, and we really take a look at these different groups and they all have different issues and values and are going to be voting for different people for different reasons. Nick, Lena, back to you. All right, Lindsay, thanks so much for this. As we mentioned earlier, voting will be extended at four locations in the city, which means the release of results, that is going to be delayed by about 15 to 20 minutes. So here are the locations. They are West Hill Apartments on Lawrence Avenue East. That location staying open until 8.15. Same story at Sacred Heart Catholic School, again, until 8.15. Uh, St. Thomas Aquinas on Glenholm Avenue, that's going to be open until 8.20. And the Britton House on Mount Pleasant Road, that location will be open to voters until 9 this evening. You're watching Toronto's breaking news, CP24. Our special coverage of Toronto's new mayor continues right after the break. Stay with us. This Friday, unlock the mystery of the greatest adventure ever. Turn left, turn left. Jones and the Dial of Destiny. All right, it's today. Nothing brings the pack together like a trip to Great Wolf Lodge. He passes the puck, line to the goal, he shoots, he scores! <laughs> oh, wait. The rest waving it off. No goal! Let's go to the replay here. Yep, that's a Johnsonville moment. Renovate your home with as little as $500 per month. That's right. Want to renovate your kitchen, bathroom, take walls out and reconfigure your entire home, build additions or even a custom home? We do it all with 0% financing. Kitchen and Bath, your trusted name for all home renovations. Winner of all the prestigious awards. Best of the best of home stars two years in a row. Top Choice Award and Contractor of the Year Award. Contact us for a free in-house consultation at kitchenandbath.ca. At Hyundai, this is what leadership looks like. It's the power of choice, the possibilities of imagination, and commitment to driving us all forward. Hyundai is leading the charge towards an electric future because we're not just making history, we're making WAH. At California Closets, we see room for opportunity around every corner. Together, we'll discover hidden potential 
in unexpected places. Professional design and installation. That's practical magic. Request a free design consultation. Well, it is election night and voters are deciding who will be Toronto's next mayor. Keep in mind, a record 102 candidates registered to run in this election, which of course was triggered by that surprise resignation of John Tory in February. Polls close at 8 o'clock, so less than half an hour to go now, except at four locations in the city, which have been extended for what officials are calling earlier interruptions. More than 129,000 people took advantage of advanced voting over six days. That is up nearly 12% from the last election. From 299 Queen Street West, this is Toronto's breaking news, CP24. Good evening, I'm Nick Dixon. And I'm Lena Latifat. Welcome to our special coverage of Toronto's new mayor. Voting will be extended at four polling locations throughout the city. That means the release of the results will be delayed by about 15 to 20 minutes. Yeah, all eyes on this situation. Here's the latest. These locations are West Hill Apartments on Lawrence Avenue East. That location will stay open until 8.15 this evening. This also includes delays at Sacred Heart Catholic School, staying open until 8.15. St. Thomas Aquinas on Glen Home Avenue until 8.20 this evening. And the Britton House on Mount Pleasant Road. That location will remain open until 9 p.m. Toronto elections saying each location is being extended due to unique circumstances which include a fire alarm interruption and medical emergency. So with that let's go live to CP24's Mark Liverman. He is at a polling station at the East York Civic Center on Coxwell Avenue. No issues to report there Mark. Yeah, so far so good here, Lena. No issues to report, it sounds like, at least at this location, uh, they will be closing on time, which is less than half an hour from right now. Had a chance to speak to a number of different voters uh, throughout the afternoon. A lot of them just talking about how important it is uh, to get out there and vote. If you haven't voted already, again, still half an hour to go. East York uh, Civic Center here. I spoke to a poll worker uh, here as well who says typically for a local election, they'll see anywhere between uh, 300 and 400 150 uh, come to this location on election day he said uh, we're on track to seeing that right now as well about an hour an hour and a half ago he said there were already about 300 people who had made their way between uh, 10 a.m. and uh, 6 p.m. or roughly 6 p.m. Uh, to vote here at this location I went inside earlier as well uh, smooth sailing inside there's about six ballot boxes in there people kind of just make their way up uh, no lineup to speak of haven't seen any lineups here as well throughout the uh, afternoon and evening. Uh, so, yeah, smooth sailing at this location so far. Back to you. That's good. Okay, Mark Liverman live in East York tonight. Mark, thank you. Now, CP24's Beatrice Vaisman is live for us this evening at Olivia Chow headquarters. That stage is lit up there, Beatrice. Uh, what is the story on Olivia Chow? Where is she watching the results tonight? She's actually already in house here tonight, Nick. We saw her about half an hour ago walking around, getting a feel for the room, going up on the stage where she hopes best case scenario for her is that she'll be delivering a victory speech tonight. Uh, she met with some of the volunteers here in the building as well, and this is where she'll be watching the results. Uh, though, unfortunately, they're not allowing any cameras in that room to watch along with her. Uh, when it comes to who's going to be introducing her tonight uh, onto the stage, I'm told it's family members and depending on what time the results actually come in. Uh, her campaign telling me it might be her granddaughter who actually introduces Olivia Chow uh, up onto the stage. The, there's a couple chairs here, not very many actually, but a dozen, Nick and Lena, uh, in terms of how many supporters are going to have a seat right next to the stage. I imagine that's going to be reserved for family. Uh, we saw her son, Mike Layton, out and about with his family campaigning in the final hours today, trying to get as many voters out to the polls as possible. And the volunteers have been doing that as well all day long this morning Olivia Chow started out in Scarborough meeting with her volunteers went over to Scarborough Town Center to talk to some voters before heading downtown to Kensington Market and Davenport uh, to meet with yet more voters of course she wants to cover as much ground as possible to convince any undecided voters that she's the best person to lead the city you might notice the campaign slogan lit up behind me on the stage together we can Olivia Chow's been running a progressive campaign one that she hopes has resonated with Toronto voters
some of which she hopes are going to want some change at City Hall. Back to you. Thank you, Beatrice. Our Steve Ryan, he is live at Mark Saunders HQ tonight. Steve, what are you hearing from the Saunders camp? Well, Lena, Nick, I just spoke with the Mark Saunders, and uh, he is very optimistic um, that the voters will, in fact, vote him in as the next mayor of the uh, city of Toronto. Uh, he said that when he was out campaigning uh, throughout this last, especially this last few weeks, uh, that voters were saying to him and, and his team that they were concerned about the law and order in the city. And he, of course, was the uh, former police chief. He spent some time in homicide as well, 37-year policing career. So he feels that he is the best candidate to take on the task of dealing with the law and order and other issues throughout the city. And he remains confident that the voters will vote him in as the next mayor of the city of Toronto. Let's head up back to the desk. Okay, Steve Ryan live at Saunders HQ. Steve, thanks for that. Saunders saying he was the only option to stop Chow, but yeah. I think this next candidate probably has something to say about that. Eden DeBeba is at Anna Bailau HQ this evening. She, of course, is the former deputy mayor. She was endorsed by 10 city councillors and also the former mayor, John Tory, and the deputy mayor, Eden, Jennifer McKelvey. That's right. It's an impressively long list of a lot of star-studded names. But the big question is, was it enough? I'm joined by Deb Hutton, who is the campaign strategist. And I'm sure this a lot of these endorsements, you played a role in them. Tell me a little bit about what the endorsements meant for Bailao's campaign, especially Tories in that last hour. Well, I mean, most of those endorsements come strictly from Anna's relationship and her track record on council. People who worked with her, who knew what she was like to work with and said, hey, I'd like to work with you in a new capacity as our new mayor. I know you've been chatting with Anna a lot today, just an hour ago even. Tell me a little bit about her emotions going into tonight. Well, it's all been by text. She was my first text in the morning, and I doubt I was her first because uh, I know she's up early and even late last night. But she's in such great spirits. She has sent out messages to our volunteers throughout the day, five hours to go, two hours to go, keep working, and she's working right alongside all of us. So it's been an exciting day. I have to imagine there's been some reflection on the campaign. How do you feel as the campaign strategist it's gone? Uh, well, I think it's gone amazingly, and I think you saw that in the momentum that Anna has achieved in the last couple of weeks. I will say, though, it feels like a long time ago that this started. And it all comes to a conclusion in just over an hour's time. Thank you so much, Deb, for joining us this afternoon. I'm going to send it back to you both at the desk. A lot of excitement here. Anna Bailao herself expected to arrive within the next 15 minutes or so before the polls close. All right, Eden, thanks so much. We're going to take you live to Scott Hurst. He's covering Anthony Fury's campaign tonight. And Mr. Fury is having dinner with his family, you say, Scott. Yeah, we're told the candidate will be here shortly after the polls close, and this is a campaign that really came from a candidate who is not really well known at all in the political circles, at least, to rising in the polls. And for more information on that, I'm, bo I'm joined by the volunteer director, George Ann Baker, uh, Burke, excuse me, George Ann Burke. Thanks so much for your time. I appreciate it. Talk to us about this campaign specifically, where the candidate himself was unknown in the political world, had not run for office before. How do you run a campaign and get him noticed when this is someone that is going up against people that have years, if not decades, of political experience? So one of the great advantages with Anthony is that he is very um, accustomed to being in the media, talking to the media, being out in front of people. He's very comfortable with people. Um, we were lucky enough to get some decent coverage. I mean, I think people are kind of curious about him, and we leveraged it to the degree that we could to uh, try to make him be seen. But in addition to that, we had a very um, well-organized, well-run digital campaign. Um, we had a very organized campaign group of volunteers, hundreds of volunteers. I was like dumbfounded at the response that people were getting, but people were responding to what he said. They were responding to the issues that he brought to the table. He was talking about the things that people care about because he's actually a person who lives in the city raising his family with his wife and he knows what it's like to live um, in, in the situation that Toronto is in at this time. So I think he hit a chord with people and once that started to happen in an almost viral way, mm -hmm. it took off for us. Talk about, uh, I appreciate that. We're going to have to send it back to our desk right now. George Ann Burke, uh, volunteer director with the Fury Campaign. Thanks so much for your time Thank today. You.
Nick and Lena, we'll send it back for you for now. Uh, we're, we're, as we're told, uh, the candidate uh, will be here shortly after the polls close, as, uh, although he's having dinner right now with his family. No doubt keeping close eye on the polls when they close. We'll send it back to you. Scott, thanks. As you can see, we have a live shot right now inside Olivia Chow HQ this evening. CTV Toronto's Natalie Johnson is at Chow headquarters for us. Natalie, we understand the candidate may be sort of mingling around the hall right now? Uh, absolutely. She was here just a moment ago. She just left with supporters, but she was taking a look at the setup. You can see behind me here, the stage is set for what they are hoping will be a victory speech. They had the prompter up just a moment ago with the first few lines of the speech with which she will address supporters later on this evening. They're really hoping for a political comeback for Olivia Chow here this evening. It has been nine years since she ran for this job last. Of course, losing to John Tory, who set this whole by-election in motion. Also at that time running against Doug Ford, who if she wins the mayor's chair tonight, she will have to work with moving forward as they look to address the gaping budget hole that City Hall is facing. So right now, uh, some supporters are starting to file in. I think these might be some of Olivia Chow's grandchildren arriving. We know that the family are in the building. Uh, they are hoping that the results come in very soon after that 815 poll closure. Uh, this, this time around, they're hoping it will be quick and it will be a decisive. Oh, we're seeing Mike Layton is coming in behind us here. Mike Layton, the former city councillor, the son of Jack Layton who was, of course, married to Olivia Chow. Let's see if he wants to have a quick chat with us. Mike, do you have a moment to talk to us about how you and your family are feeling? Pardon me? Do you have a moment to chat with us about sure. how you and your family are feeling? Sure. Well, you know what? It's, uh, it, it's a great night. I think there's an energy uh, about this election, about the possibility of us uh, seeing a change, a new direction in the city. And you can feel that. We, we, in the last couple of weeks, uh, the last week at the Olivia Chow rally, uh, there was a really big sense of hope in the air. Uh, and then coming off of Pride Weekend, where everyone's celebrating the city, I think everyone, like, there's a little bit of that feeling out there. I think people are ready for a bit of a new direction. And certainly, uh, like the family, we're, we're behind Olivia. She's been a strong rock for us in the family. And I mean, maybe she can provide the same for the city in a time that a lot of people are struggling and, and looking for that sort of ray of hope. Now, all of your years at City Hall as a councillor were under a Conservative mayor. How do you think the city might change if Olivia is to win tonight? Well, it's no surprise. Year after year, there were several of us that were warning of the financial cliff that we were creating for ourselves, uh, that we weren't ready to, to manage a crisis because of the financial uh, the financial state of the city. And lo and behold, that proved to be true. That, and now we're facing that crisis. And so it's, I, I think it's important for us to send someone uh, to City Hall that's not afraid to, to come forward with bold ideas for how we may actually change the city to serve those least, for, least fortunate, but also uh, to bring a what, what is, I think, uh, a very mature attitude towards our, our budget, to say we need to change the way that our city finances are running in this city, or else we can't, not, not only can we not provide for the people that are struggling the most, but we're not going to be able to sustain what we have. And, and we've been teetering on that brink for years, kind of borrowing from the previous year, depending on other levels of government and then banking on their money coming, and then finally it stopped coming. So we've got to start to change that, and we need a strong advocate for Toronto in Ottawa at Queen's Park, uh, and I think Olivia can bring that. All right, thank you so much, Mike Layton, former city councillor, and of course the son of Jack Layton, uh, who was married to Olivia Chow for many years. You can see the uh, room around me here is starting to fill up. We've got a little dance party going on in front of the stage, Olivia Chow's grandchildren. We'll come back to you uh, this in a little bit. We'll send it back to you in the studio oh, for now. And they look so excited. That's Natalie adorable. Johnson, thanks so much for this. Less than 20 minutes to go before polls in Toronto close, by the way, most of them at least. Now, we should mention City Councilor Josh Matlow. He was one of the first to announce he was considering a run for mayor shortly after John Tory resigned. That's right. TP24's Bakari Savage is live at Matlow HQ tonight. Not sure if the atmosphere compares to what it's like at Chow's, though, Bakari. Uh, good evening, Nick and Lena. So we are at Firkin on Bay Street. Doors open here for volunteers and supporters to start coming in here around 7 o'clock. That's about 43 minutes ago. They're slowly coming in, but that gives us time to speak with Catherine Jansen. She's the campaign manager for Josh Matlow. So we have to talk about this. Josh Matlow, city councillor to mayor. You decided, hey, I'm going to work on this campaign. Why? Josh... Josh often gets called a fighter, and people think of that as being a bad thing. 
but I think it's actually one of the most special things about him because he fights for things that he knows are right and that he cares about. So he fights for his family, he fights for his community, and he fights for the facts. He's really keen on getting things right and making decisions that make sense. What have these past few months been like for you, and what have you learned about Josh Matlow, not only you know the politician, but the man? He's a good person. He does the right thing when nobody's looking, and he really cares about finding out what the problem is so that he can figure out what the solution is. And he works really well with people. He surrounds himself. He, he knows he doesn't have all the answers. That's really refreshing in a politician. So he surrounds himself with people who do, whether they are experts in homelessness, experts in, you know, addiction, experts in, in housing. He surrounds himself with people ha who have the answers. Well, speaking of having the answers, I do have a question for you that I'd like for you to try your best to answer. You know, taking a look at the polls and seeing everything and, and you know, being able to stay in there, talk about that decision and what those conversations have been like, especially, you know, as a campaign manager. Josh knew he was in this to win it from the get-go because he believes that he has something to offer. He believes that his plan, as I do, is the most complete, fully costed, fully funded plan of any candidate out there, including the dog. And he believes wholeheartedly in what he's trying to do for the city, and um, he's going to carry it all the way through to the end. He's fighting for what's right for the city, and he really will stand up for what Torontonians want, stand up against Doug Ford, and um, just keep pushing to make this city. He knows that a better Toronto is possible. And tomorrow there's going to be rest, but let's talk about next week. Well, you know what? He's the city councillor for Ward 12, and so... Regardless of what happens tonight, he will wake up tomorrow morning and he will be fighting for what is right for his community and for his family and working really hard to improve our lives. That's just who he is and that's what he's all about. Catherine Jansen, campaign manager for Josh Matlow. We met at the very beginning. I thank you for your time and always responding to my texts and emails. My pleasure. Thank you very much. And with that, Josh Matlow is with his family not too far away from here. They're having an intimate watch party. But we will be continuing our coverage live all evening. Nick, Lena, back to you. All right, Josh Matlow watching the results with his family tonight. Thank you, Bakari. We're going to take you live to Mitzi Hunter's headquarters now. Her team is gathering here at dawn on Danforth. The mayoral candidate resigned as MPP at Queen's Park to run in the by-election. The stakes are really high for Mitzi Hunter this evening. All right, time now to check back in with our Lindsay Biscay. She's live at the Power Board this evening. Really fascinating look at the maps and the numbers behind the votes tonight. Lindsay. Yeah, and we want to take you now to the advanced voter turnout. It was interesting and a little better than the last municipal election. You can see 129, more than 129,000 people decided to vote in advanced polls this year. That's up 11.9% from last municipal election in 2022. So that's good news. Obviously, we'll have to wait and see what voter turnout overall is today. And now we want to take you to this. This is the horse race uh, in the forum poll over the last seven weeks. So you can see uh, starting on May 12th, these polls started coming out for forum and Olivia Chow really just ahead of the pack majority of the way. May 26th is when you can see Anthony Fury starting to join uh, the pack at the top there. And then things continue throughout. Uh, this is where the endorsements started, the big ones actually. June 21st is when John Tory endorsed Anna Bailao, and then June 22nd is when Premier Doug Ford endorsed Mark Saunders. You can see didn't really move the needle yet uh, for these two, and really all of these candidates clustered together. Olivia Chow never really lost that lead, despite a few ups and downs at the top there. So pretty interesting. We'll have obviously a lot more tonight, but for now, Nick and Lena, we'll send it back to you. Okay, thanks so much, Lindsay. Uh, Lindsay. Yeah. All right, let's bring our panels back in and sort of keep the conversation going right here. And I want to turn to Jamal Myers first and foremost right now, because Jamal, you are, of everybody here, the only person actually sitting on city council at this point here and I wonder if you can sort of take us through the past you know four and a half five months ever since the shock resignation of John Tory what it's been like on council and how it's I know there's been a deputy mayor but no like official mayor here how much has that affected what's going on at city hall you know, it's actually been quite refreshing. Uh, <laughs> I'll be honest. I, like I wasn't that. expecting um, that answer. You know, people are voting how they want to vote. No one's telling them how to vote. Uh, and just seeing, like, what makes people tick. Seeing the councillors work on issues 
together themselves without having to take that direction from you know the mayor's office. And I'm sure the mayor's office is still playing an important role, but it's really the councillors that have been leading the city throughout. And I think it's like you know. Something that we often overlook is that you know city council is built on the system of 25 city councillors and the mayor. The mayor is important, but the mayor is not everything. You know we know our communities better than the mayor. We spend our time in our communities every day. We spend our time talking to constituents, and it's really been nice seeing that you know cross collaboration between you know councillors of different areas, councillors of different ideologies working together on the issues that are coming before us. And I think it's been actually quite refreshing for a lot of councillors, especially the new councillors. That's so interesting. This is why we, you know, this is why we wanted to run for city council. We wanted to work with people to get things done. And we really didn't want anyone telling us what to do. <laughs> <laughs> interesting. Adrian, let me uh, pick, have you pick up on that. What do you make of Jamal's comments about this being a refreshing experience for the fresh blood at City Hall? Well, it is an interesting dynamic because the mayor's, the office of the mayor does drive a lot of an agenda. And yes, you're constantly looking for, do I have enough votes to get this through? And sometimes, it, you know, you require some compromise. But as this new mayor is elected tonight, it will be the first mayor that has these quote unquote new mayor powers. And that is going to change the dynamic on the floor of council. Because if whomever it is, um, is not feeling that they are getting the support in and around the council table, they can, they can use those parent powers. I don't care who, they all said I'm not going to use them. I'm going to look for the <laughs> consensus. That is, they're going to use it if they have to. Mm. And so I, I find that, you know, maybe maybe Jamal oh. is onto something. And, and no there's parent. a live shot of candidate Anna Bailao. She is watching the results come in with her family this evening. All smiles there, Anna Bailao, a high profile candidate. She has managed to secure a number of really important endorsements from a number of, of city councillors. And then of course there was the John Tory endorsement that made headlines? Exactly. Can I just say? Go ahead, Adam. Yeah. Go so ahead, Adam. As, as Jamal identified, you know the councillors are going about working on the issues that are important to their to their wards, and as you say, there hasn't been a mayor there driving the agenda, but there also hasn't been somebody there getting Ottawa and Queens Park to deal with the what billion two yeah. budget whole? Mm -hmm. That's five months of inactivity around that kind of leadership and only the mayor can get the attention of the premier and the prime minister and only the mayor can deliver the resources the council needs so they can actually solve some of the problems in their ward. That five lost months is big because it means that they're halfway through the year. Finding a billion dollars in half a year is a lot harder than finding it in a full year and it means that the new mayor walks in with the cupboards bare with an, an ambitious set of campaign promises and very little resources to, 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 to deliver on those promises. It's like your car is stuck in the mechanics. Yeah. You, you, you've got to pay to get the, out of the mechanics and get the engine fixed, but you still have no money left over for gas. And they have no idea where that money's going to come for gas. And so while things are nice at City Hall right now, <laughs> Things are about to hit the fan, and, and the new mayor has a real mountain to climb fiscally just to get through this year, let alone set the stage for next year. Kristen, uh, Adam said things are about to hit the fan, and this candidate, this, this mayor, this new mayor is going to have to also hit the ground running. Yes, and that's absolutely right. Uh, whoever wins the election tonight has a, is, has a tremendous amount of work to do. Not only do you have to bring council together behind your vision and, of course, the platform that you've actually committed to the voters of Toronto, but you also need to get the other orders of government uh, to the table. Uh, so, But the one good thing is that that mayor will, have, uh, will be coming to the table with a mandate. They'll be coming to the table with a lot of new political currency. And as, uh, as I've learned, uh, after running through three municipal elections, that any new mayor uh, usually gets a lot of uh, good graces. So that means they usually get to the table with the Premier as well as the Prime Minister uh, with uh, with their platform and say these are the issues that we ran on, this is the issue that I sp specifically spoke about and now I'm here to solve the problems whether it's housing or transit. Uh, that new mayor is going to walk into that office with a lot of people wishing them well. And Jennifer, is that then going to be job number one? I mean, you look at a billion dollar hole in the city's budget and really over the last two federal and provincial budgets, uh, respectively, not really a whole lot of money for Toronto. So whoever is in charge after tonight, that's got to be a huge mountain to climb is getting the house in order financially. Well, for sure, and it's one of the reasons why big cities often have some type of executive council that drives forward the citywide issues. So uh, there's, you know, the stuff that happens on a ward-to-ward -ward basis, and then there's stuff that happens citywide, and you need someone to take carriage of those big citywide issues. And I think, you know, most of us in the room know what they are. We have a housing crisis. You know, we're doing some great things at the policy level that came out of 
Mayor Tory's action plan, but it's just the very beginning of what we need to be doing. That's going to be on the mayor, and I think this campaign was very much about that. Lobbying other levels of government, ensuring that the interests of the City of Toronto continue to be maintained in provincial decision-making. That's on the mayor, and I think, you know, you'll probably hear a lot about Ontario Place mm -hmm. uh, if Olivia Chow becomes mayor. you hear a lot about Ontario Place and some of those other big decisions that have been coming down on high that seem to be in conflict with the interests of how people actually live in this city. And Scott, whoever wins tonight, they're going to be looking at a short mandate. Well, short. short I mean, it's three and a half years, so they've got plenty of uh, plenty of ice to skate on, plenty of room to make their mark. But I I'll be honest with you, uh, this whole discussion about the mismatch between what Toronto's asked to do and the resources available to it with which to do uh, those those tasks, I I I'm shocked that hasn't been a bigger issue in this campaign. I'm shocked that one of these leading candidates didn't step forward and say, look, it's not just about sending a, 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 a lovely well-written card to the federal government or the province. Yep. This is about saying, look, we've got, this is structurally screwed up. We have structural deficits. 110,000 people a year at minimum come to this city, right? When you look at how we fund Toronto in comparison with what Toronto's asked to do nationally, provincially, how we have to execute so many economic and social priorities, I'm mystified that one of these candidates didn't come at this harder and say we want a new deal, not asking for a new deal, demanding a new deal, saying there needs to be structural change in the way in which we finance. Right now, it's like balancing a mattress on a bottle of wine. It makes no sense the way we try to finance this city. That'll be an interesting thing to see, a bottle of ma a mattress and a bottle of wine. <laughs> I've yeah, done it. That's where it came yeah. from. I've uh, balanced just about everything on a bottle of wine. Okay, so let's spin things over to Adrian Batchel, though, right now, because there was a column in your paper today, Adrian, about Toronto having a spending problem versus a revenue problem here, but we know about the hole the city's in. What do you make of the idea here of, of Toronto being able to do this and the next mayor being able to, you know, get the, house, the financial house back in order? Well, I think that the part of the big concern for Torontonians is just how that $1.5 billion is going to get filled because if there is no ability to have the provincial and federal governments come to the table for a, a revised deal a new deal however you want to put it how is that new mayor going to fill that gap and the concern is that it's going to be through taxes mm -hmm. and very high taxes and we already have an affordability issue in this city that will exasperate it even further and as far as the spending goes, no one does want to talk about the spending side of the aisle. Perhaps there are some programs and things, too many things that the city is asked to do, perhaps we shouldn't be in that business anymore. And yes, that will require going to the province and uploading. I, I get all of those discussions have to happen, but ultimately we need to be looking at all sides of the ledger. And the other, side, the other concern with this is that um, we don't even talk about the capital infrastructure in this city, how that is perpetually underfunded. And look at what we deal with with the TTC. Look at what we deal I with the Toronto, Tor now. Toronto community housing. I mean, all of these things are, are realities. And whomever is successful tonight, I wish them the best. And Torontonians need you to work with everybody to fill but those holes, Jamal, including getting the funding. Okay. For Jamal, we're going to get back to our panel second? in just a yeah. moment. Yeah. Yeah. All right, for more on the extended voting hours at four locations in the city, let's check in with CTV's John Woodward. He is at the Britton House Retirement Home on Mount Pleasant Road. John, what do you have for us? Yeah, we asked the city about why the voting hours were delayed here. They didn't give us the most specific of answers, so we came here ourselves. It's actually up there on the second floor of the Britton House because it's only for residents of the building, not people down in the street. It was categorized, the building tells us, as a long-term care home, which normally would close in the late afternoon around 4.30. And that's what they did. They packed up and, uh, and left. However, as you can see in the sign behind me, the Britton House is not a long-term care home. It is a retirement center, and the city uh, should have its polling to the regular time at 8 o'clock. So they realized their error. They sent a standby crew of two to, to that uh, atrium upstairs, and that's where they are now uh, still, uh, still uh, getting votes from people. Um, the, we expect that uh, that's going to be open till 9 o'clock, but the polling workers tell us that um, there's only about 60 people on the rolls in this building. It's a very small polling station. And unless this is a real squeaker, that's not likely to affect the election result. That may be one reason why uh, we are expecting to get citywide election results before the polls close right here.
Back to you. Okay, CTV's John Woodward live outside the Britain House, and that is good perspective because yeah. we've been thinking ever since we heard that the Britain House may not be closing uh, its polls until 9 o'clock tonight that perhaps that may delay all the results, but John giving us a great explanation there. John, appreciate it. Well, here we are now, about a minute away from polls closing, mostly right across the city, right. and possibly then a few minutes, 15, 20 minutes away from finding out who is going to be Toronto's new mayor. Yeah, these results are going to come in fairly quickly. This is a live shot of the East York Civic Centre on Coxwell tonight. This is where people have been showing up to vote for Toronto's next mayor. Polls opened at 10 o'clock this morning. Most of them, all but four, are going to close in less than a minute here. And of course, we need to keep in mind what the voter turnout is going to look like. Here we are. It's been a summer day. It's been kind of a wet, wet and stormy day as well, whether yeah. that may have well, that impact dissuaded anybody. I mean, Mark Liverman has been at this polling station all afternoon. He said it's been relatively calm, not a whole lot of activity. So we'll see what that means. Also, we will get into it with the panel coming up, too, right. about the fact that the advance note was up significantly this year. We will talk about that, Nick. We should note, it, note as I mentioned, these results are going to come in fairly quickly because we are dealing with electronic ballots. But Toronto Election says there are voting delays at a couple of locations, so results have been delayed by about 20 minutes. But after months of campaigning, months of door knocking, it all comes down to this. Yeah, the candidates are now sitting here watching and waiting and wondering, is this going to be my night or is this going to be a different kind of a night? I'm sure a couple of them have uh, two different speeches written. Some of them perhaps have already seen the writing on the walls, but here we go. We are going to see the doors lock up here at the East York Civic Center. And that is going to signify there that a go. majority of the polls in Toronto are now are closed. With a handful of exceptions, it is 8 o'clock. The polls in Toronto are now closed, except those four locations. Toronto voters will have now decided who will be the city's next mayor. Candidates have crisscrossed the city, debated the issues, and pitched their priorities, all in hopes of securing Toronto's top job. From 299 Queen Street West, this is Toronto's breaking news, CP24. Good evening. I'm Nick Dixon. And I'm Lena Latifat. Welcome to our special coverage of Toronto's new mayor. We are going to check in with our Beatrice Faisman now. She is at Olivia Chow's headquarters and joins us live with the latest. Beatrice. Well, the room is quickly filling up. These signs, Olivia Chow for mayor being handed out to supporters in this room. Nick and Lena, I'm sitting in just about one of about a dozen chairs here, so not a lot of sitting room, but you don't need it. Look around. There is just dozens and dozens of people already here uh, inside the Great Hall for what they're hoping is going to be a victory party. Amongst them, John Danino, the president of ATU Canada. Why do you support Olivia Chow? Well, listen, Olivia's been a champion for public transit. Uh, Olivia's been a champion for the people. It's time to make a change in this city. And ATU Canada came out and endorsed her right from the get-go. She has all the values and priorities that we need for Torontonians, and that's why we're supporting Olivia. It wasn't a massive surprise. She was a member of the New Democrats on Parliament Hill. And New Democrats often, uh, you know, support and do a lot for unions. Why is she the best candidate to, I guess, continue to push the values of ATU Canada and the people here in this city? Well, look, you know, I mean, uh, Olivia is just a regular citizen who has Toronto in her heart. She has all the core values to make this city better, and she wants to work for the people. And that's the candidate that we have supported right from the get-go, and she's going to make a change in Toronto. Have you been watching the opinion polls as they've been kind of wavering? First couple of months, she was the leader by a long shot in these opinion polls. The last week, and then the leads kind of narrowed a little bit. How are you feeling tonight? How do you think it's going to go? Look, you know, the polls are only polls. What we need to do is get out the voter base, make Make sure they got out and vote today, and the results are going to show the efforts of what, of what this election is going to look like. And everyone in the room cheering, Lena, because they just put CP24 on the TV. But let me show you this big screen here. Olivia Chow for mayor, election night. That's the screen where it's going to have her speech that she's going to deliver to, report, uh, to supporters. Will it be a victory speech or will it be a concession speech? Obviously, everyone here in the room hoping it's going to be a victory speech. Back to you. All right, Beatrice, thanks so much. Let's bring in CTV Toronto's Natalie Johnson now. She is also at Olivia Chow's headquarters. I know it's loud where you are, Natalie, but you've been speaking with family. 
Absolutely. Everyone here is very excited for what the next 15, 20 minutes might bring. We know that Olivia Chow is in the building. She's watching the results pour in with her family members and members of her team. Let's take a look around the room. You can see now that there are a couple hundred people here. They are holding up Olivia Chow signs, milling about. There's a DJ playing in the corner, and of course, CP24 up on the big screen. You can really sense the hope in this room, and that has been a theme of the campaign. From the get-go, Olivia Chow came out of the uh, came out of the gate promising more affordability in this city, uh, promising to help the residents of the city who have fallen through the cracks of the system. Her campaign has been short on specifics, and that is what her critics have gone after her on, but it hasn't made a difference in the polls. And of course, the group here tonight is hoping that those polls have been right all along and that she is set to make a political comeback. Okay, that's Natalie Johnson live also at Chow headquarters tonight. Of course, the candidate who's taken sort of dead aim at Chow over the last several weeks is Mark Saunders. Our Steve Ryan is live at Saunders HQ this evening. Effectively, Steve, the polls are now closed. What are you hearing from the campaign? What's the mood like in that room? Well, we are at the Bistro on Avenue Road, which is uh, the uh, Saunders uh, headquarters for tonight as they watch the votes come in. And it is a packed uh, place, if, if, if I could say that, uh, Nick, when it comes to uh, supporters within the last half hour, it's gotten very, very busy here. Now, with me is Sharon. She is part of the uh, Saunders campaign. Uh, thank you for your time and uh, your thoughts on tonight. Well, you know, I think, as you can see, we've got a lot of volunteers who are coming in here. Uh, we've had people out all day long. And, of course, we were really hoping for um, a win for Mark tonight. But I think the biggest win for everyone in Toronto is going to be high voter turnout. We had a lot of candidates, 102 candidates on the ballot. Uh, Mark's been a really formidable candidate. He wanted to talk about safety. He wanted to talk about not increasing taxes. These are issues of affordability and safety that are a key topic, including congestion. So Mark has a, a vision for Toronto, and we're really hoping that he has the ability to fill it. But again, voter turnout, if advanced polls were any indication of what today was like, we're really hoping for a high voter turnout. I was talking with Mark earlier on. He was pretty optimistic, saying that law and order was a key part of the, the, his, not only his platform, but the concern uh, by the people that he spoke with throughout the city. What are, what are your thoughts on that? And you think that resonated with voters? Absolutely. When we knock on doors, People are afraid to take transit. People are afraid to walk down the street downtown. We just saw the other day someone was stabbed in the face in Allen Gardens. We are seeing these crimes day after day after day. And he comes from a police background, and safety is really important to him. And this is an issue where families don't feel safe sending their kids downtown or to school on buses. So I would say safety is definitely one of the key issues we've been hearing at the doors. I right, thank you for your time. The campaign and his supporters remain optimistic as they wait here for the results here at Bistro on Avenue Road. We'll set up that. All right, I'm sure they're watching very closely. Steve, thanks so much. We're going to take you live now to CP24's Eden DeBebe. She is at Anna Bailao's headquarters. What's happening where you are, Eden? Well, Lena, we know we've seen a lot of big endorsements come in for Anna Bailao in that ninth hour, one of them being Deputy Mayor Jennifer McKelvey, who just arrived tonight. How do you feel the room is looking? Oh, it's amazing. There's a lot of outpouring of love here for Anna Bailao tonight. She's a good person, a great candidate, and hopefully our next mayor. And it's a very intimate group upstairs where Anna Bailao is currently watching votes come in. Family, very only one friend, and now you as well going upstairs to join her. Why did you want to make sure you were there, or why did she want to make sure you were there? You know, I've seen Anna work at City Hall and do amazing things for housing, do amazing things for her community, and uh, no matter the outcome tonight, I know I'm hoping for a big win for her. I know she'll continue to do great things for Toronto, but I'm looking forward to just go upstairs, give her a quick hug, tell her I wish her well, and then I'll be down here watching the results with all of you. Jennifer, I'm going to let you go and do just that. Deputy Mayor Jennifer McKelvey, again, one of many high-profile endorsements we've seen. I want to give a quick pan of the room as well, uh, Nick and Lena, just to get you a better idea of just how packed this place is. People have steadily been trickling in. The energy here is almost a calm confidence. People seem to be quite confident that Anna Bailao is going to pull this one out of the bag. Again, polls have closed, so the final decision, the final results will come in soon enough, and I'm sure the energy will shift depending on what those results say. Sending it back to you both at the desk. Yeah, indeed. Okay, thanks so much, Eden. Appreciate that. Let's check in right, check in right now with Bakari Savage. He's live with the Josh Matlow supporters this evening. Uh, it seems a little quieter there. Uh, 
it was a little quieter, but uh, people have started to come in, volunteers, supporters like Lori Beezer, who's the founder of the Afro-Caribbean Farmers Market, and Nick and Lena. One of the reasons why I wanted to speak with Lori is because I interviewed Lori when Josh Matlow made the announcement that he was running for mayor all those months ago. And Lori, you gave a rousing introduction for him. So we have to talk about this. Where are things now? That was then when he made the announcement. This is election night. He's here, we're here, and I don't I don't I don't necessarily say want to say that it's fingers crossed, but we gave it all we had. We gave it all we got and we're here. We're here tonight. We're excited. And we're gonna see. And Lori, you know, part of our conversation that we were talking about is this. What about tomorrow? What about next week? Because that's something that, I mean, we, we have to talk about that. We gotta talk about that. Next week is next week, but tonight is tonight. If it isn't in our favor tonight, we're gonna get him ready. He's coming back. He's coming back in two years. Where's your heart? My heart is here. My heart has always been with Josh Matlow. My heart is here. And Lori, when you take a look around where we are right now, Firkin on Bay, Get people, on the volunteers, they have started to come out. Who do you see? What do you see? Explain it to me. I see old friends. I see new friends. Uh, I've seen, I see people that uh, have been on the campaign trail with us. So we're all here tonight supporting Josh. A and man talk, we love. And talk about that campaign trail. What do you, you want people who went out to vote? who did not go out to vote, but they're still watching. What do you want to say? If you haven't done it, vote for the only candidate that deserves this space. He's a community man. He understands community. He's there to empower. This is the real deal. It's but, Josh Matlow. But, Lori, this is a race. And yes. you know what? We thank you very much for your time. And with that, Nick and Lena, we will continue our coverage right here from Firkin on Bay. Nick, Lena, All back right. to you. Bakari Savage live with a Matlow supporter. Thank you, Bakari. Let's take you live now to CP24 Scott Hurst. He is at Anthony Fury's HQ. Scott. Lena, this is the Metropolitan Center on Finch Avenue East, and it's quite a big ballroom in here right now. We're in the front foyer. This is where the candidate will come in in just a little bit. I'm told he's at home having dinner with his family before he shows up. But come on in, we'll show you around. It's quite a big ballroom. Some dozen people are here right now, but they're expecting potentially a few hundred as this gets going. Take a look around the ballroom. They have a bunch of tables set up, chairs set up for people to sit down, have a meal. The podiums up here where he will be making his speech at some point later tonight regardless of the results so that is where he will get up there and speak to his supporters after this campaign that really came out of nowhere a candidate that's at least not known politically one of the very few candidates in the top contenders that doesn't have previous political experience but has really had a groundswell of support as this campaign has gone on and showed uh, you know really that he was part of the leading candidates throughout the last several weeks so a ground swell of support as you can hear the supporters here the few dozen that are here right now cheering as they see us on the screen all the screens are turned to cp24 the candidate will be here in just a little bit and we're told he will give a speech regardless of the results a bit later once he shows up and these people are excited they're really happy to be here they're happy to support this campaign as we said a campaign that kind of came out of nowhere a candidate that didn't have previous political experience and just look at the passion, look at the support that he has here tonight. Nick and Lena, we'll send it back to you for now. A little frenzy for Fury. Okay, Scott Hurst live at Fury HQ. You can hear the chants going there. We will hear from that candidate soon. In the meantime, CTV's Natalie Johnson. She's live at Chow HQ. She, oh, we're going to go Mitzi first. Mitzi Hunter's team gathering at dawn on Danforth. The mayoral candidate there, of course, resigned as an MPP to, at Queen's Park to run in the by-election. And let's check in with CTV Toronto's Natalie Johnson now. She is at Olivia Chow's headquarters standing by with a guest. Natalie. Hi, Lena. That's right. I'm joined by Councillor Ozma Malik, a progressive councillor who has officially endorsed Olivia Chow. She represents the same part of the city that Olivia Chow once did. Tell me a little bit about the mood on council right now among your colleagues with the likelihood that a progressive mayor will be taking over at City Hall, of course, if she wins tonight, after more than a decade under a conservative mayor. Yeah. 
Well, the Mudan Council has definitely uh, been been moving towards, you know, having some certainty around who's in the mayor's office, making sure that the work that we've been doing collectively to keep the city moving forward can actually have a, a really strong champion and move us in the same direction. Someone who's collaborative, who's going to be meeting the urgency of the challenges that we face around housing, around public services. But most of all, we're looking for a strong advocate to the provincial and the federal government to make sure that. Toronto gets its fair share and our priorities at the top are at the top of the agenda. What I can tell you is what I've been hearing on the ground and as city councillors and as people who are elected to represent our community, so that is so important. And what I've been hearing as I've been encouraging people to get out and vote is that they're excited about the type of leadership that Olivia is, is going to uh, bring, hopefully with their support. And that track record of improving the lives of Torontonians, of knowing how to work together with people across the political spectrum and getting results. And most of all, that she has the experience of living in the city that is actually resonating with so many people in every corner of Toronto. Someone who understands what life is like here and how to make it better. She gets the struggles and she also knows what the solutions are. And that's really exciting and that feels hopeful for the future of Toronto. Thank you so much, Councillor Malik. Now, there are a handful of councillors uh, currently at City Council have endorsed Olivia Chow. More of them, however, uh, have endorsed Anna Bailao. So it will be interesting to see how this plays out. If, in fact, Olivia Chow does take on the mayor's chair, she has said she will not use the strong mayor, chow, uh, strong mayor powers and veto council. We'll send it back inside to you. All right. CTV Toronto's Natalie Johnson reporting live. All right, everybody. We have some early results coming in. Take a look at this. Anna Bailao is in the lead. She's leading by about 3,800 votes. Still very early. Only about 600 polls reporting. But Olivia Chow, she is in second place right now. She has about 60,000 votes. Mark Saunders is in third place. As things stand, he has 14,000 Yeah, votes. so let's check the next wow. page here. These are interesting numbers to begin with. Again, these are early results here uh, moving on from this. So, so we see Bailao Chow Saunders. The next page, here we go. Anthony Fury right there. Uh, Anthony Fury at about 8,200 votes right now. Uh, again, this page is really significantly behind the front page there. Uh, Josh Matlow, 6,400. And Mitzi Hunter there uh, at about 4,500. Again, this is about 600 of the more than 1,400 polls uh, right across the city of Toronto. Again, these are early results. Uh, but interesting to see uh, the leader at this point. And just let's give you the last uh, couple of pages here. Chloe Brown sitting at about 4,500 votes right now. Chris Sakocha, also known as Chris Sky, he has about 2,100 votes. And Brad Bradford, he has about 1,700. But the big story here right now, Anna Bailao is in the lead. Olivia Chow in second place. There's only about 3,800 votes separating Anna Bailao from Olivia Chow. Scott, let's pick up on these early results. What do you make of these numbers? Well, they are super early. But 600 is not an insignificant number of polls. So, you know, I, I wouldn't just wave my hand at them. Again, the question really on my mind for the last handful of days is, has Anna Bailao's campaign generated my momentum in this closing week. And there's been a lot of talk that possibly it did. You know, on Saturday I was doing an interview with Lindsay and I was mansplaining to her that none of these uh, endorsements mean a darn thing. Well, looks like I'm the goofball. So, you know, we'll see over the course of the uh, evening whether these numbers hold up. I wouldn't bet the farm if I was in a bylaw just yet, but it's got to be encouraging for her. Uh, and Kristen, there's there's a clear demarcation between Bailao uh, and, and Chow, and then it really falls off uh, to Saunders as well here. What does that tell you about, at least in these early results here, what's been on Toronto voters' minds and where they think they're going here? Well, I mean, it tells me that uh, Doug Ford's endorsement didn't, didn't really sway a lot of voters, despite the fact that he spent a lot of political capital at a lot of uh, different uh, press announcements that he made as Premier. He held a, a significant, sizable barbecue where uh, uh, Mr. Saunders was the, the key guests where they did a lot of campaigning right on city property and I think that uh, you know there's probably going to be a lot of uh, reconciliation for them about you know why didn't the, the premier's you know very visible and, and prolific endorsement give them the push. Just want to highlight right. to our audience here about 12,000 vote lead now for bailout over Chow with about a thousand polls in here so this is really Adrian I saw your eyebrows go straight up as we saw <laughs> the new numbers come in. Mm -hmm. I, I clearly think there's an, a, a bump from an endorsement. You know, Doug Ford going with Mark Saunders, I think it was a little late, but they got all the headache and none of the none of the advantage. When we all sat down, when we sat down with all the candidates, you know, doing editorial board meetings and sit, sitting down and having conversations with them, 
You know, Anna Bailao has, has been around council since 2010. She was the, the so-called housing czar. She has built these relationships and she is getting things done. She had gotten things done in her ward that are real significant issues facing the city. So she is um, thoughtful about her platform, thoughtful about her policy and what she believes is to be the future uh, of Toronto. That has resonated with residents thus far. We still have a significant part of the city's vote to come in, but certainly to echo what Scott has said, these should be encouraging numbers for, for her. Jennifer, I want you to pick up on that. The John Tory endorsement, is that why Anna Bailao's numbers are so strong right now? Well, I think everyone in this room is surprised by what we're seeing right now. I can't help but think, wow, what if his endorsement had come in a few weeks earlier? There was a bit more <laughs> runway with that endorsement yeah. because, yeah. you know, obviously we, we heard very early on that he continued to be the preferred candidate when his name was thrown into polls. Uh, but there was a lot of mixed feelings when the endorsement came out. But this vote's being split a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. So for those who were undecided, who trusted John Tory, who had voted for him just in November, hearing that he was aligning himself with Anna was probably really important information. I think that's what we're learning, learning this evening. And, you know, we might be surprised this evening, uh, but also it does raise that question. If Olivia does manage to come back, it's hard to say right now uh, whether that endorsement coming earlier would have been a real deal breaker. Yeah. Maybe it came at just the right moment. Um, I mean, maybe. you know, maybe it came just timing is everything in politics. Maybe it yeah. came when people were dialing into the debate and deciding how they were going to cast their vote. Yeah. So hard to call. So, but a couple other things. It, you need to know where the outstanding polls are. Say, we don't That's know critical. where these are heavily weighted towards the downtown. That has a very different ending to yeah. the story. Absolutely. If they're up in the suburbs, Annabelle has got reason to be very optimistic right now. The other thing that I find fascinating is Chloe Brown's numbers. Yeah. 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 The media yeah. in the city kept her off of every single yes, podium and right. she's now in fifth sixth place yeah. Yeah. But with an amazing sh showing and that is a grassroots campaign that has taken votes from Olivia because it's from the same side of the political spectrum yeah. the fact that she didn't get onto the podium is is shameful the media should have paid a lot more attention to her yeah that's fascinating for sure Jamal if you are Olivia Chow are you sweating a little bit at this point I mean, I guess it really depends on where these numbers are coming from. Uh, if this is a lot of downtowns already reported their numbers, yeah, I'd be sweating. Uh, if this is mostly in the suburbs where, you know, Anna had a lot of organizational support, especially from a lot of the Liberal MPs, you know, maybe I'd be more calm and relaxed, but yeah. Okay, it's surprising. getting a little bit tighter. Tight, yeah, I was going to yeah, say tightening a little bit yeah. in, in these, uh, you know, new numbers that we're seeing now here. Again, this is one, just over 1,000 of 1,400 polls coming in. Bylaw's lead now about 6,600 right now. Uh, we don't know, uh, Adrian, no. do we, no. where the votes are coming from? So no, we, we really need to make that yeah. clear. We don't have a sense yet, and, and it's very instructive for our viewers to, to know that. Um, but this was supposed to be a blowout, yeah. right? I mean, like, let's be honest. According to the polls. We weren't supposed to be yeah. sitting here continuing to analyze the amount of the, the numbers. But this was supposed to be over. So I think it just goes to show you Torontonians, ultimately, you know, they're, they're very thoughtful about who they're voting for. They recognize that this is a, this is a change election, to be sure. But we're not just prepared to give our vote to somebody just because they have been away for a while. We want some stability. We want you know, the comfort of knowing that Toronto is going to be on the right track, even if we move away from um, having it been John Tory. Anna Bailao provides some of that stability in a way, but she still offers a different perspective um, that can help move move okay, Toronto I, forward. I talked to Tom Allison yesterday. After scary. I did a piece on CP24 and said, look, at the, the, the endorsements I thought came too late to really shift things over a couple of days. And he said, he said Adam, we, we, we've hit 700,000 homes. I said, that's great. Do you have a team to pull that vote? What we, right. We've talked about the NDP structure around Olivia's campaign, and there is an NDP structure there. But Anna tapped into a number of federal MP liberal ridings. And the liberal machine, having been part of it, has a very strong pull. You've seen it in the by-elections. They have a very strong ability to pull a liberal list out of a riding. And since that capacity is there, mm -hmm. they may have tapped into something that we missed by just looking at the at the polling numbers because in this race with the low turnout getting your vote to the polls is nine is, is, is the battle and if, and the telephone campaigns that the liberals can run is 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 unmatched i think by the other parties and, and you're and seeing yeah, that, that, that I think, so tough. Yeah, don't underestimate the organic dynamic as well i do think you know if we and again this is early still so let's not you know let's We're not dunk this basketball right now, but you know i i think 
there has been, uh, over the last couple of days, I've been surprised the number of people have said to me, look, I'm actually going to vote strategically for Anna because these polls at least have shown some momentum. If anybody can stop Chow, she might be that person. And I think one thing we can tell from these uh, numbers, All right, uh, we, absolutely, is we that want to Saunders take a closer is look way at this. underperforming. Yeah. Like, this is a two-horse race. Saunders is not anywhere in view. And we want to take a closer look at the numbers now because we do have more results here. There's about 9,400 votes separating Anna Bailao from Olivia Chow, about 1,100 polls currently reporting. And, you know, as Scott's just pointing out, really, Mark Saunders is just so distantly yeah. third. You know, I mean, 130,000 odd votes behind Olivia Chow there and about 100, uh, you know, 40 odd that, behind that's eight, So that's clearly, this is a two horse that's race. That's 80% of the vote in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, when you look that's at the polls. not an insignificant right. poll count. Yeah. There's only, there's 20% there's of the polls left to count. If they can show us, if there is a ward by ward breakdown to see which, which wards yeah, have what's voted and which what's haven't, left. Yeah. we would be able to call the election almost immediately. Right. All right. Because if it's, if they're, if the, <laughs> no, seriously, if the votes are all outstanding in the suburbs, Olivia's pull in the suburbs is not as strong as downtown. Yeah. If, the, if the polls that are missing are in the downtown core, it's a different, it's a different ending different to the story. But until you know where they're coming from, it's, it's hard to guess, but 80% of the polls reporting, and that lead is not shrinking. That tells a story. That, that these That's early results are simply fascinating. Uh, we're going to pick up on that. Let's go live to our Lindsay Biscaya. She's live by the power board with a closer look. What is happening, Lindsay? Yeah, well, first of all, no worries on the mansplaining the other day, because it's clear some of those endorsements might be working for Anna Bailao, obviously 10 city councillors, John Tory as well. And once we take a look at that map, you'll see mostly blue, which is Anna Bailao's color for us tonight. So 16 of these wards out of 25 uh, are showing the most support for Anna Bailao at this moment. Scarborough Asian Court, Scarborough North showing support for Olivia Chow. She seems to be doing well there, which is uh, not really expected maybe. The downtown court is expected for Olivia Chow to be coming out on top with the most votes. But really look at this. Anna Bailao, 171,000 votes. Again, 79% of the polls reporting still early. Things could change for sure, but this just gives you a good picture of where those votes are coming in and who uh, who is getting the most votes where? Nick, Lena, back to you. All right. Okay, it is really interesting to see this. And, and as Adrian Batcher was just saying to us, you know, we did not expect to be sitting here analyzing this in this way. These are live shots right now uh, inside Olivia Chow headquarters. The saying, together we can, uh, coming apart perhaps a little bit at this point. They've got to be nervous over there. You'd have to think. Yeah, Beatrice Faisman live in there. Uh, Beatrice, with these numbers, these early results coming in, how has anything, if anything, shifted inside that room right now? Well, that's a good question. I'm seeing people on their phones checking the numbers. They want to see the vote counts. Uh, and certainly the people in this room are still hoping for an Olivia Chow win. Let's bring in Tom Parkin, an NDP commentator. You've been checking your phone. You've been seeing the votes come in. Anna Bailao right now ahead by some nine, eight, 9,000 votes. What do you make of what you're seeing? I have those, we still have got a lot of votes to come in in advance poll voting too. So I, I think what, what Olivia represented in this campaign, I'm hoping what will be victory, it was a, a vote for change, we'll a vote to do something different, you and, Tom. And, and, a, and a vote to uh, take, a, take a city hall in a direction away from the conservative decline we've had for a number of years, the same insiders running the... Beatrice, running. we're going to put you on hold for one second. We want to show our audience some new numbers because it's oh, wow. tightening in these early results. Again, uh, early, but also over 80% of the polls are in. The lead right now, 4,500, so it shifted dramatically again. It was about 9,000 just a couple of minutes ago. Yeah. Uh, Olivia Chow is now just about 4,500 votes behind Anna Bailao. Uh, so, again, really, this is a two-horse race at this point. And Mark Saunders, a distant third. Uh, he's sitting at about 39,000 votes. Let's take a closer look at this race now, if we can take a look at that. Anthony Fury, he is in fourth place tonight. 23,000 votes, about 23,000. Josh Matlow in fifth place. He has about 21,000 votes. And Chloe Brown, she is currently in sixth place. Chloe Brown has about 13 thousand votes. Yeah, Let's that take a closer look at how some of the Adam other candidates are doing. Yeah. yeah, so Mitzi Hunter here uh, in uh, seventh, according to the current lead right now, or current pages, uh, about 12,000 votes. Chris Akocha, Chris Skye, about 5,900. Uh, and Brad Bradford, uh, currently ninth in this race, 5,500 votes for Brad Bradford here. But again, this really is a race now about Olivia Chow yeah. and Anna Bailao. This is what we're looking at. Take a look at that. The lead now just over 5,000 for Anna Bailao. Back to Chow HQ, of course,
with Beatrice Hayes. And Beatrice, sorry we had to cut you off, but we wanted to get our viewers the latest numbers. No problem at all, Nick. Uh, certainly we want to get our viewers the latest. That's why we're here. Tom Park, an NDP commentator, also getting the latest. About a 5,000 uh, vote lead for Anna Bailao right now. How much do you think the John Tory endorsement had to do with this? Um, it's, it's hard to know because the thing, the thing that was really different about Olivia's campaign is that she wasn't running against somebody. She was running a positive campaign, and it really everybody else was running a negative campaign. And, uh, you know, Olivia presented a plan, a hope, a kind of character to change this, you know, be a change candidate. And I think she succeeded, and I'm hoping ultimately she'll succeed tonight. So um, was John Tory effective at telling people uh, how to not vote? You know, maybe. We'll see. We'll watch the results. But, uh, you know, what what is the mandate if it's just not to be Olivia Chow? Olivia Chow has, has a mandate in the way that she ran, ran her campaign. And we'll have to wait and see what happens. Tom, thanks so much. Thanks. We'll check in with you again later. Thank My you. Uh, so here we are in Chow HQ. It is packed shoulder to shoulder in here. Lots of people showing up to support uh, their candidate, Olivia Chow, here. Uh, they're certainly still hoping for a victory as we watch the vote count roll in here on CP24. Thank you. All right, Beatrice, thanks so much. We have another update on the race for mayor now. Anna Bailao still in the lead. She is sitting at about 190,000 votes. There's only about 4,900 votes separating her from Olivia Chow, but she is still in first place. I want to bring in Kristen Wong Tam. You've endorsed Olivia Chow. What are you feeling tonight? Did you think it was going to be this tight? Uh, no, I did not think it was going to be this close, largely because of the polls that we've all been reading over the past few months. Um, what I can say is that, you know, there was a part of me that was quite significantly worried about uh, those who would be, um, uh, who've been leveling attacks at Olivia nonstop. Like she's been clearly the front runner. She's been feeling the brunt of everyone's blows, uh, truthfully or not. I think that there are some candidates who ran some very uh, dishonorable campaigns, a lot of d misinformation and disinformation that was hurled at her. And I actually wondered um, tonight, and is, is coming to true, uh, is you know how much effect did that have? It was it going to sway people who were leaning towards Olivia, who wanted to see Olivia come in? But then there's just so much that's coming at her about uh, the. Red Scare, about her raising taxes by double digits, about, you know, the Trump falling into the wayside. Uh, and, and this was repeated by, you know, of course, Doug Ford on every single campaign stop. And it was uh, repeated again by most of the candidates. Jamal, let me ask you, as a sitting councillor, and we all know 10 of the members of council did endorse Anna Bailao. Of course, a few other candidates are actually running for mayor. So effectively, of the 25 member council, uh, there are a majority. But hold on a second. Oh. Take a look at this. Wow. Oh. Again, these numbers just wow. in. And look at that jump for Olivia Chow, 8,700 vote wow. lead now mm -hmm. in her favor over Anna Bailao. So that has shifted again, which then shifts the tone of my question to this, Jamal. Uh, <laughs> Olivia Chow back in the lead here with about sort of 13 councillors who didn't necessarily back her for one reason or another here. What could that mean? We don't know where this is going, but what could that mean to the next council? I mean, everyone, no matter who's the mayor, all councillors want a good working relationship with the mayor because to get things done, you need the mayor on side generally. Uh, what's interesting, though, about the endorsements is that Olivia Chow got five of the, new, of the seven new councillors. Right. Uh, so a lot of the energy on this new council has been with Olivia Chow, whereas you see people from the previous council who have more been backing Anna Bailao. So I think, you know, it'll be interesting to see whoever becomes mayor because there is this block of new councillors that, all, although we're not ideologically aligned, we do work together, we see things the same way, and we have a common experience. So it'll be interesting to see who actually pulls this off now. Okay. The real politic. The real politic is that Olivia Chow does not end this evening if she wins. She'll win on a squeaker. So she will yeah. not have a commanding popular vote with which she can say to council, I have a mandate that's absolutely crystal clear. Secondly, she doesn't command a majority of votes on council. It's going to make the job, the diplomatic, the outreach job of being mayor that much more challenging, that much more important. That means that task number one when she speaks tonight, if she does win, is to reach out to everybody and everyone because she is going to have to really do a lot of coalition building. And, which, and as we keep the watching work? these boards, well, go ahead, Kristen, you want uh, to I was going to say, which she will absolutely do that work. I think it's also important for us to recognize that Olivia had eight or nine uh, council uh, endorsements uh, 
you know, so it's not like she was that far behind uh, from uh, from Anna Bailao. I think the other thing that uh, that's important for us to note is that you know Olivia has been uh, oftentimes discounted as the underdog. She has oftentimes told that she couldn't do it. And you know, one thing that we saw from her throughout the campaign, as you know, as Jennifer has noted, is that she was authentic. She brought her full self to the campaign, and I think that you'll continue to see that when she, if she lands in the mayor's office, she's going to be working harder than anyone else. The other thing is that uh, back in the 2000, just just a few months ago, the 2022 election that brought John Tory back to power for his third term, there were only 31 candidates. This time you have 102 candidates. The votes are split in all sorts of different ways. Mm -hmm. All right, just want to point out that we have new numbers. Olivia Chow leading by about 9,000 votes as it stands. So it appears yeah. that the advanced polls are starting to kick in. That's yeah. that's the, the sudden jump. Would Is that what's that happening? Like yeah. that, that's my oh. guess. I don't have evidence to support that. But but what, what the advanced polls were over the last month when Olivia had a very strong lead in the polls. If she locked that lead in um, before this weekend where things seemed to obviously shift into sort of an anybody with Olivia kind of a vote. You can see that with the down card having very small numbers right now. Mm -hmm. They obviously sort of piled on to Balao's campaign. But Olivia appears to have locked in a lead in the advance polls, and that's why you saw that sudden jump. Mm. You've now got about 10% returning. Again, where those polls are will matter, but but it's it's yeah. that's what I think. And, and we, we are swing. certainly trying to establish exactly where yeah. those numbers are coming in from, whether the advance are being counted, because of that, of course, is yeah. so significant to what we're seeing play out in front of us right now. I want to give you live pictures right now from Bailao HQ this evening. Of course, Anna Bailao had been uh, leading uh, for the last several minutes here, but you can now see uh, Olivia, or pardon me, this is Bailao. Pardon me, this is in fact Bailao That's Anna Bailao headquarters. Let's take you live to Olivia Chow headquarters now. Let's see what they're doing over there. Yeah, a lot of supporters there anxiously waiting for these final results to come in. Uh, Jennifer Keys, Matt, if Olivia Chow wins tonight, is this going to be a really soft mandate? Well, not at all. The mayor's the mayor. When you've got the title, you've got the title. I think you do the work. And the good news is that I think we have two leading ca candidates right now who are both coalition builders. They both reach across the aisle. Uh, I think we saw yesterday and over the weekend at Pride candidates who were, you know, kind of jockeying to get their picture taken. Olivia Chow uh, essentially signaling that they wanted to work with her, that they would work with her. And of course, she put her arm around them and smiled and gave them a big hug. Uh, I think there's a real all for one, one for all mentality at City Hall. I think Jamal spoke to that a little bit, that the, the, the fun thing about City Hall is that because people aren't tied to parties, when there's an issue where they have a shared interest, people can coalesce around that issue and vote together. And it happens all the time. Adam's seen it, Kristen's seen it, where people cross, you know, reach across the aisle and they work together to get things done. And I think the good news is that, you know, the two leading candidates, ironically, are the, the least divisive candidates. There were other candidates, probably including Mark Saunders, who ran incredibly negative and divisive campaigns, and the city of Toronto is having none of it. I think that's what we're seeing right now, that people who want to work across a political spectrum are leading. And okay. again, the, the numbers have changed almost a 14,000 vote mm -hmm. lead now for Olivia Chow over Anna Bilo. And Jennifer, you know, let's not take you out of the equation. You had a front row seat at City Hall in a, in a sort of previous iteration of your career here. You've seen how things work down there. What do you make of the different sort of endorsements that went around during this campaign from the sitting councillors here? And how could that make a difference to the, the next term? Well, I thought Jamal's point about the new councillors endorsing Olivia, I, that hadn't quite clicked with me, but I yeah. think that's, mm. that's pretty powerful because the dynamic over the past six months has been very different than it was previously. Mm -hmm. The new councillors have come in, they're very activist, they're very forward-looking, they're pro-housing, they've shed some of the baggage that we saw, some of the hesitancy that we saw about just getting in there, getting their hands dirty and making decisions. And I think those changes are going to continue to be the energy into this council under whoever the new mayor is. All right, and a live look again there of Olivia Chow's headquarters. Some people seem to be celebrating there. No official results yet, of course, but her supporters seem to be excited. Adrian Batra, if you are Mark Saunders, yeah. how are you feeling? Not great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not even one little bit. <laughs> look, I, 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 Mark Saunders uh, did campaign on issues that does re does resonate with a lot of Torontonians. But I think that there there was a sense that there was, um, you know, there was a compassion, maybe something was missing. I, I think he didn't have the success in really going after Olivia Chow, the, the perceived frontrunner the entire time, um, with, with great success, like, say, perhaps Anna Bailao had. 
um, you know, Ms. Chow has managed to go through nearly almost this entire election, including the CP24 debate, without really getting down to the nitty gritty about us answering very specific questions. Um, and, and, and whether you think that's fair or unfair or not, I think Anna Bailao was really the one that tried um, most successfully to get some answers out of her in terms of what the mayoralty under her would, would look like. But that said, these numbers spell no overwhelming mandate, regardless of, of which one of these um, women win tonight. Right. Um, and let's not discount, it's both women, mm -hmm. both immigrant women. And, and I think that's very indicative of what Toronto looks like today. So, so that's a positive takeaway from this. We're going to check with you in just a minute, uh, Adrian. But we have some new numbers coming in tonight. So Olivia Chow maintaining her lead. She is now leading by almost 13,000 uh, votes there. And a bylaw still in second place. Let's check in with our Beatrice Fazeman. She is standing by at Olivia Chow HQ with the latest reaction. How are they feeling over there, B? Well, I think the visuals from Olivia Chow headquarters speak for themselves, and uh, Lena and Nick. People here are excited. The energy is extremely high. They are dancing. They are chanting Olivia Chow's name. Uh, and it's been this way for the last few minutes uh, since the latest uh, results started rolling in. Uh, and she pulled ahead by uh, several thousand votes. And so every time the numbers change, you hear chanting, the music is going, and this room is just absolutely packed. Not only are there uh, city councillors like Osma Malik, who talked to our Natalie Johnson earlier today, I've seen several new Democrats, a former MPP, Faisal Hassan is here, and or, uh, mayoral candidate who dropped out, actually, Gil Petalosa, to support Olivia Chow. He is also here, right here in the crowd. Mr. Gil Petalosa, we're live on CP24. This is amazing. This is the, the real Toronto. I think for the first time in many years, we're going to have a very different Toronto. Positive, positive. I think Olivia represents something totally different from the mayors of the last 25 years. Why did you drop out of the race to support Olivia? Because I think it was not about me. It's about Toronto. I thought that if I run and she runs, maybe we lose. She's winning only by 10,000. Last time, I got 100,000 votes. Maybe if I had run and I had gotten 30, 40,000, maybe she would have lost. So I'm so glad that I, I, I stepped out. I said, it's not about me, it's about Toronto. And she's going to win. She's going to be elected. And we are going to have a very different Toronto where equity and sustainability is going to be on everything Toronto does. Olivia Chow's run a progressive campaign. What are you liking that, that she's been saying when it comes to leading this city towards a more progressive route, a different route uh, than certainly the last administration here in the city? Yeah, I like that. She wants to do everything that is free to make it great. The parks, the libraries, the sidewalks to improve public transit. She wants to focus on the most vulnerable, everyone that is poor or has disabilities, or the small children or the elderly. I think we should evaluate citizens by how do we treat our most vulnerable citizens? No, how do we treat the wealthy? And she's going to focus on that and make a great city for everyone. Soon. Yeah, a lot of cheering guys in the there. Beatrice Faisman reporting live from Anna, uh, Olivia Chow headquarters. Take a look at these latest numbers. Now, Olivia Chow still in the lead. She is leading by about 17,700 votes. Yeah, so the lead is expanding now for Olivia Chow. We should also highlight the fact that where Beatrice is and where some of our reporters are, the numbers are coming in on a bit of a delay there. So you're hearing those cheers about 15 to 20 seconds behind when we're showing you these numbers uh, live here. So that's kind of an interesting contrast about when you're hearing the cheers. Cheers. Uh, let's also contrast the room that Beatrice is in with where our Eden Debeba is. She is live at Bailo HQ this evening. Uh, Eden, 10 minutes ago, Anna Bailo was comfortably ahead. Now she's behind by about 15, 17,000 votes. 
And if you could have seen the change in energy in the room every time the numbers were updated, Nick, it was a roller coaster of emotion here. The first initial numbers, of course, showing Viola with a big lead. The roars deafening. The crowd very excited. Now I'm sure you can see and feel it for yourself. It's a little more of a somber note, though people are still definitely hopeful, just like at Child's Camp, checking their phones constantly for updates, looking up at the screens. Of course, we've got those live updates from CB24 going as well. Chatting with people, they still seem hopeful. Again, this is far from over. We know that some polling stations will close later. Some people hopeful that that might change the tide. And the gap, though it is growing, still is fairly narrow. So you can see a lot of the conversations in this room right now are a hopeful one that we're not done yet. The race isn't over. Bai Lao still in that room alone with her family and friends. And again, she is set to speak regardless of what the outcome is once that final result, that final call is in. I'll send it back to you both at the desk. Eden DeBeva live at Bilo HQ. Eden, thank you. So let's look at these boards again and give you a better sense of where we are with the results just yet. 1,300 plus polls in of just over 1,400. So we're getting down to it here. And you can see Olivia Chow is gaining 17,000 plus vote lead over Anna Bilo. And again, this really is effectively yeah. a two horse race. Mark Saunders, a distant third. Adam, what is running through your mind as you look at these numbers? Well, it's, uh, I think you get into the, into the space where you could probably start to think about calling the election. Mm -hmm. um, and I, there's I, a live I, I look of candidate Anthony Fury walking in at his headquarters tonight, meeting with supporters, some very happy supporters there. He's really surprised a lot of people. You he know, really at the beginning did. of yeah. this race, he, not he, many people knew his name. You Andrew. talk about, you know, a candidate that was left out of the debates up until the CP24 debate. Um, you know, or again, organic, grassroots, really volunteer-driven and motivated by uh, s s some things that people really wanted to talk about during, during this race that other candidates perhaps didn't. So... I don't think this is the last we're going to see, but from Anthony Fury in, in the municipal politics arena. Mm -hmm. um, so he, they, they should be very happy with, uh, with that. But uh, if, you, if you look at where these votes are splitting, you know, that would have vexed the Saunders campaign, to be sure. Um, no question about that. But regardless, um, you know, they, they should enjoy this moment. Um, and, you know, just, just looking at some of the, the numbers uh, of the eligible voters, you know, Olivia Chow was looking at 12 percent right now. Wow. Um, that, and yeah. and wow. it's going to be very hard to even get beyond 15. So we'll all be doing this again in 2026, but very low voter turnout um, tonight. And we should point out Anthony Fury is in fourth place right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Adam, you were sort of mid-thought as, as Anthony Fury yeah, walked he, in. I mean, I, I can't see how Balau captures it right now. I mean, we're looking at the side scrolls, and, and virtually every ward is fully reported. They're just sort of small... Mm -hmm polling miss sort of absences ward to ward to ward. It, it's, it's hard to see where, where a surge would come from unless there's an advanced poll out there that we don't know about. But it, my, my sense is, is that you've had the downtown vote very heavily and very pro Chow. You've had the suburbs vote very lightly but pro Balao. And, and, and that's the race that, uh, that's been delivered to us. That being said, she does not have a strong mandate that's to right. speak for the whole city. Right. She has a split mandate, and, and, and other orders of government are going to look at that and say, who are you speaking for? Are you speaking for the downtowners, which is Doug Ford's constant, constant mantra about why he can ignore Toronto. It's just a bunch of yappy downtowners. Mm -hmm. We've all lived in that experience. But she, she also has to go to Ottawa now. And if she can't get the money from Doug, she's got to get the money from Trudeau. And she's got an opposition that sits across from her, which wears the orange ties and the orange and the orange T-shirts. They all say, give the money to the provinces. You've talked to Jenny Kwan. You've talked to, 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 to Peter Julian. Jagmeet Singh is a BC candidate. They will tell you day in and day out, especially on housing, that the money needs to flow through the province because there's a BC government in, 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 that's NDP and there's about to be one it looks like in Manitoba. You are not going to get the federal government suddenly funding cities directly with, with, with an accord partner who thinks that provincial rights matter. And so she has a very difficult conversation up in Ottawa. She has an even more difficult mm. conversation in Queen's Park and all of Ottawa's money through the federal housing and, and transit accords flow through Doug Ford's offices. That's going to be a tricky conversation for her without a strong man. And Olivia Chow now leading by over 23,000 votes. That's the latest. A weak mandate for Olivia Chow, Scott. Is that going to hurt her? I, I, well, I do I think was... it will. I, I think, I, look, 
I think we're going to find that this is a very low voter turnout overall. So she'll have gotten a low percentage, uh, underperformed in relative expectations terms against what uh, we thought she was going to do. And it's going to be a narrow victory. So uh, a, a small number of a small number. So it, it does not mean that she's not the mayor. It doesn't mean that she's reduced in any respect. But what it means is that she has a whack of pressure on her. She is going to have to. She wants to make any of the advocacy cases that Adam is just making and that I believe she needs to and must. She's going to have to gain a ton of support from around council. She's going to have to demonstrate that she can reach across the divide and that she can get conservative uh, leaning uh, members of council on board. Um, because this is, uh, uh, this is not the mandate that she was hoping for or expected. It's, uh, and, and it's how, a weak mandate. How weak does this make her look in front of Doug Ford, Kristen? Well, I think the important thing is that Doug Ford's candidate didn't get very far. And But one thing that I would offer you, uh, for everyone to consider, is that you know throughout the debate, what we heard the leading issues that Torontonians wanted city council and the mayor to tackle was housing, was transit, was community safety, about investments in public services, making sure that they were strong, that they were going to be effective. That means that Olivia has that mandate. Every single uh, candidate all agreed that those were the issues for, for the mayor to tackle, and that's what she will do. If you're ready to call the election, that's what she's going to talk about. You know what she should do tomorrow? She should run, not walk to Anna Bilo and say, let's work in partnership. We're the only two people yeah, who gained Anna big numbers. Anna doesn't let's have a lot of experience that. with that. But Ms. Chow said throughout the course of the campaign, no strong mayor powers to me. I bet she's going to think very differently after what result is what we expect it to be tonight in terms of trying to get some of those many things that she, want, well, she has have, committed to Toronto. We have to remember that beyond, beyond the um, strong mayor powers, mayors already had the power in this city to appoint committee chairs. Mm. And those are very coveted positions. They're linked to being on the mayor's executive. Uh, the mayor can designate key items and bring them through the executive mm -hmm. without even using the strong mayor powers. They could already do that. And in fact, if you look back, for example, uh, at David Miller after the City of Toronto Act, you know, people like to talk about how he never lost a vote. He never lost a vote because he controlled the vote. Mm -hmm. He controlled the vote by designating items to come through his executive. And when they came through his executive, he only brought them forward if he knew he was going to win. Those are the kinds of things that any mayor can do, regardless of whether they use the strong mayor of powers now. And on taxes in particular, you had to put a lot of water in the wine to get that through. Land transfer. But he got it through. I think the, you know, at the end of the day, the vote is the vote. Let's not relitigate the past right now, though. Let's stay in the present because we're less than 100 polls from closing here tonight. So let's go back to our Lindsay Biscaya again at the Power Board, giving a sense of the stories behind the numbers here. We're going to be fascinated to take a look, Lindsay, at how this is breaking. Yeah, and it really is actually fascinating to watch, Nick and Lena, because we're watching Olivia Chow take the lead in so many more wards now. She's up by 14 wards, uh, which means Anna Bailao down to 13. So the latest, Willowdale, uh, Don Valley East is actually the latest one that Olivia Chow is now taking the lead in. Also Scarborough Center, Scarborough Southwest. So some areas that maybe we didn't expect Olivia Chow to do as well in. Uh, Bailao does have uh, a lot of endorsements in some of these wards, but now it's 1411 Chow uh, for these wards. And of course, the downtown still Chow leading there. Um, and again, 93% of polls reporting. So we will still have to wait and see. But at this point, uh, it looks as though Olivia Chow coming out strong leading in most of these wards so it's just fascinating to see the transition here and we'll keep watching this for you but for now back to you all right Lindsay Biscaya thanks so much for this let's bring in CTV Toronto's Natalie Johnson now she is standing by at Olivia Chow's headquarters Natalie Lena, I'm joined by Aaron Morrison, who's a longtime NDP strategist who has been following this campaign very closely. Aaron, this race is way closer than anyone expected. What are you hearing? What do you make of these numbers? Yeah, interesting night. It looks like this campaign really came down to a status quo candidate with Anna Bailao and a change candidate with Olivia Chow. For now, it looks like change is ahead, and this room's pretty excited. Was the campaign expecting to have declared victory by now? We're now looking at it's 8.50. I think this is a campaign that set out to win, uh, but election days are a big deal, and in an election like this, voter turnout really matters. So I think every campaign was prepared for every outcome. How much of an advantage did Olivia have with the ground game and the get-out-to-vote effort today? Uh, Olivia has a seasoned team. Her team has been working on campaigns, largely NDP. 
PPP campaigns, but also other progressive campaigns at all three levels of government uh, for many years, some of them. So big advantage on the ground game, lots of expertise in that war room. And lastly, what are you expecting? Where does this go from here? Uh, I, it looks like we're going to have Olivia Chow as the next mayor of Toronto. And and uh, she's got a big job ahead of her, a billion dollars in pandemic-related debt to clear up. I know she wants to invite a lot of new voices to the table. Uh, and uh, exciting days ahead. All right, we're standing by to see what the declaration might be. A lot of Olivia Chow supporters in this room watching with bated breath. A few minutes uh, so much for this and just a reminder we're still waiting on official results we'll let you know when that happens live now to cp24 is eden debebe she is still at anna bailao's headquarters where it's a totally different mood there eden that's exactly the positive music is playing but you can see behind me uh, everyone Every single person in this room is rapidly fixed to the screens, watching the numbers pour in. Of course, that gap between Olivia Chow and Abailao is growing wider, but everyone here really is waiting for that final call. You can see no one's kind of walking away. No one's left the room. Everyone very still hopeful that anything could happen. Again, the last voting station does not close until 9 p.m., so people really are waiting for every single vote to be tallied here. Their spirits are still quite hopeful here. Again, but not that party atmosphere we were seeing just 20 minutes ago when the initial results were showing Baila with a substantial lead. You can see rousing cheers are starting, claps as they see themselves on the screen. Uh, Lena and uh, Nick, it's, it's almost beautiful to watch. People are really, really hoping that things will change over. But again, that gap is widening. We are expecting Anna to take the stage at some point tonight as soon as that vote is called. Whether it's a concession speech or a victory one, we'll be told in these next final minutes. Sending it back to you both at the desk. All right, Eden, thanks so much. Let's check back with our political panels now. Uh, Kristen Wong Tam, Olivia Chow is considered a downtown politician. She seems to be doing better in other parts of the city tonight as well. What do you make of that? Uh, I, it's, I'm actually not overly surprised. There was a lot of internal polling that was done by uh, Olivia's campaign team, and they knew that they actually had strength in the suburbs. I think that what we're seeing is that coming uh, home uh, vote. Uh, so, uh, so certainly that's very powerful. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk tonight about you know whether or not she has a mandate that she's only exclusively a downtown uh, politician yeah. and clearly what we've seen on the board is that that's not the case olivia has support across the city i know that uh, she has felt those endorsements coming from major uh, ethnocultural groups and community associations uh, and so that's all coming to to home and it's actually showing us uh, what that power looks like on the board Scott, I'm curious, you used to work for the Prime Minister Paul Martin in his office uh, years ago. When you take a look at the mayor of Toronto, biggest city in the country, sort of engine of Ontario, like we sometimes say the engine of the country, when a mayor has the kind of mandate that Olivia Chow will have, how does the Prime Minister's office view a mayor like that? Well, I think if there's an overwhelming mandate, then you say to yourself, wow, that's something I can't ignore. And on top of this, and Adam will know this better than I, mm -hmm. it means that that caucus of Liberal MPs, if, that, if it's a Liberal Prime Minister, will be coming from Toronto, will be saying, hey, right, we've got a player here in Toronto who swings a big bat. We've got to pay attention. If that mayor begins to say, you know what, we need, we're getting a raw deal, we need a new deal, then Ottawa has to listen. I'm not saying that can't happen here, but if it's going to happen, it's going to be because Olivia Chow puts together a coalition she doesn't walk in the door today with it. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, I see you nodding a lot. Well, yeah, I think that's a really important point. It's about the coalition building. The interesting part is if you look at all of the candidates are aligned on the need for a new deal for the city of Toronto. There isn't a single candidate who has a different position about that. And I think there's been some tinkering about, you know, messing with spending, saving a little bit of money here and there. But in general, there's been a broad consensus throughout this campaign that something has to change. It has to be more sustainable for the city. So an alignment, a coalition could be really powerful. We are still waiting for official results, but we do have new numbers to share with you. Take a look at this. Olivia Chow maintaining her lead. She is up by almost 35,000 votes now. So Adam, let's talk about the, fact, the Liberal government here, because what Scott just said and what Jennifer just said, I found really fascinating because there is not a coalition government in place in Ottawa, but there's a supply and confidence agreement, which of course is being bolstered by Jagmeet Singh and the New Democrats, which of course Olivia Chow would be sort of more aligned with. How do you think that factors in? 
it, it, it'll be interesting to see what, what Jagmeet does with this mandate and how he prosecutes the argument and what arguments he puts in front of the, the Liberal government as they go into the fall, right now composing a new fall economic statement based mm -hmm. on last year's budget. What I find interesting, and, 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 and Kristen alluded to this, was this, there's a corridor of votes in Scarborough uh, that she picked up on, yeah. which, which broke the narrative and is probably one of the reasons we saw that sudden surge and, 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 and surprising comeback. That group of Scarborough writer, uh, writings are all represented by Liberals up in Ottawa. They are very interesting. The Scarborough politicians talk about one thing and one thing only, and that's transit. Mm -hmm. And what the, what the Scarborough Liberal Caucus will be saying to their colleagues in Ottawa, because I was there and I heard, once I heard it 1,000 times, was we need transit to save the Liberal Party in Scarborough. And so mm -hmm. if she's going to strike a deal, it'll be around Scarborough transit, in particular around replacing the transit line that just went down. A large part of the way, reason it went down was because Tory and previous mayors did not pay attention to it properly, did not pay attention to Scarborough transit issues as much as they probably could have. That's where the conversation's going to be. But the issue in this city that affects most people is housing and on that front it's a very different conversation up in Ottawa and a very different electorate that just d delivered Olivia mandate out in the, out the suburbs. I, I want to pick up on the Scarborough piece Jamal uh, that's where you're from you represent a ward in Scarborough. That she won. That she won. Uh, <laughs> she right? owes you. The, endor <laughs> the endorsement. We'll no. Right. Right. We'll collect. Yeah. Yeah. What do you Chair. think Olivia Chow picking up votes in Scarborough tonight means for her? You know, I'm not surprised. There was definitely an enthusiasm in Scarborough for Olivia Chow. I took her to Woodside Square Mall, and, you know, it was like a celebrity. Uh, you know, my area has a big Chinese population, and there was so much excitement for Olivia Chow. People were stopping to take pictures with her. And I thought to myself, you know, what other mayoralty candidate could I take in this suburban mall that would get this type of reaction? None. So that's how I knew that this was the right candidate for our ward and our community to help meet our needs. And I just want to add something, you know, Olivia Chow just made history. She's the first woman of color. She's the first woman to be elected mayor of Toronto. She speaks with an accent. You know, so many Torontonians see themselves represented in Olivia Chow. This is historic. That, that's really important to pick up on. And Kristen, I'll come to you for this. She's also the first racialized mayor in Toronto's history. Yes, and I think that, that there are... Well, she would be if, if she if yes, she would tonight. Yes, as soon as she to, again, again, she to wait will for be. those <laughs> official results. <laughs> certainly, certainly I know that, you know, within the, the community that I belong to, the Chinese-Canadian community, the, the taste for change is, is quite palatable. We recognize that she represents something very... Okay, Kristen, very stand by. Forgive me. We okay, have breaking ahead, news now. CP24 is making the call. And CP24 declares an Olivia Chow win. Olivia Chow will be the new mayor of Toronto. These are live pictures inside Chow headquarters there, where, of course, in about 20 seconds, that crowd is going to hear what we have just said because they're on a bit of a delay. But again, the CP24 decision desk has decided, based on the numbers, that Olivia Chow is going to be the next mayor of Toronto. Yeah, this is a pretty big deal for Olivia Chow's team. It's official. She is heading back to City Hall. This time as mayor of this city, you'll remember she ran for mayor in 2015. She didn't win that election, but she did win this one. So this is a political comeback, a major political comeback for Olivia Chow tonight. And of course, in 2014, she finished third behind John Tory and Doug Ford here. But let's go live to our Beatrice Aizman in that room now. And you are going to hear a cheer erupt because, again, like I said, they're on a bit of a delay there. But Beatrice, it must be getting loud because Olivia Chow's lead has expanded. And now we've declared that she's going to be mayor question about it. It's loud. The TV here is on delay, so you'll hear the crowd erupt in just a few minutes. But I want to bring in Martin Stiles, the leader of the Ontario NDP. CP24 just declaring that Olivia Chow was going to City Hall as the next mayor of Toronto. Your reaction, Martin? You know Olivia well. Well, I'm thrilled. I mean, I'm so happy. I'm, I'm so happy because Olivia is a change maker. She is a true leader, and she led her campaign, you know, with such a positive, hopeful message.
think it just shows how much people trust her to get work done, to get things done. You know, all her opponents threw everything at her. They said, you know, she won't be able to work with anybody. They said all that stuff. You know, at the end of the day, she has proven to people in this city that she can get things done, and they trusted her with that. And I think we're in for some very exciting changes in our city. You know Olivia as a person. A lot of us know her as a politician. What is she like as a person? She's amazing. She's very friendly. You know, she's interested in your life. She wants to hear your stories. She brings people together. That's one of the best things about Olivia is she'll bring everybody together. She listens and uh, and she's mentored so many leaders in our city. So, you know, she's it's not about Olivia. It's about what the movement that she builds. And that's why I think so many people came together to help her out this time. You know what it's like to go up against Doug Ford. You do it daily at Queen's Park. How does Olivia, who's been a lifelong new Democrat, now go to Queen's Park and ask for money and ask for services and ask for things from Doug Ford? Well, you know, the thing about Olivia is she is a, about building. Uh, and, and she's built that kind of cooperation before at the federal, provincial, municipal levels. She's built change, like the child care agreement we have right now. We wouldn't have that without Olivia bringing everybody together everybody and I I know her and I know that she'll be able to uh, bring Doug Ford on board but look at the end of the day he has to show some willingness here too you know it's really important that we work together all levels of government all parties to do good things for the people of this city of Toronto and Ontario so I believe she's got that kind of leadership that warmth that ability that leadership ability to get that done and and now we're gonna see it happen she is a true change maker person in this room is chanting and dancing and singing, happy that their candidate of choice is going to be the next mayor of Toronto. All right. A great night for Olivia Chow. Not a great night for Anna Bailao. Let's go live to CP24's Eden DeBebe. Anna Bailao is speaking now. We all know this was a long and unexpected campaign, and I would also like to congratulate the other candidates, many of whom who I consider friends. So thank you and congratulations to Mark Saunders, Mitzi Hunter, Brad Bradford, Josh Matlow, Chloe Brown, Anthony Fury, and to all the 102 candidates, including Molly the dog. <laughs> bold, you know, everybody was brave and bold to put their name on the ballot. Campaigns are never easy, but nothing worth doing is ever easy. Isn't that right? That's right. So no one knows more, no one knows that more than the thousands of volunteers in every campaign, which brings me to our amazing and incredible team. So what can I say, and quoting our very own Ferd, Best ever! You know, Team Bailao and our bumblebees and Zesty Yellow, yes, Zesty Yellow is the color forever and to stay. Thank you, thank you to all the bumblebees from the bottom of my heart. For my entire life, I will be grateful for every minute you put into this campaign. And thank you, it's just been incredible. We visited a record setting 700,000 doors. That is right, 700,000 doors. Just, just this week alone, in one week, We've been to 150,000 doors. This team have been out there. And we made over 2 million calls, never getting this courage, never getting this courage by any poll, never getting this courage by every comment, because we knew, we believed in our message, we believed that our team 
could get it the, out there, the message of building housing, of fixing service, and of making life more affordable. We took it to Scarborough, we took it to North York, we took it to Etobicoke, and we took it to downtown. And people listened with the amount of votes that we got tonight. They heard our message. You, you poured your hard work, your aspirations, your grit, and your optimism in your campaign. So thank you for every call, every post, especially my sister. I heard she was pretty good. I, I was not allowed to be out. <laughs> to be on social media, so I just hear rumors here and there. So. so for every conversation that you had with your neighbors, with your friends, thank you. And friends that you dragged along to E-Day to be knocking on doors, because I ran with so many of you and met some of your family members, thank you. Thank you for every single step that you walked, reaching voters at their doorsteps. Thank you every event that you helped organize. Thank you for your, the message that you shared uh, in our campaign message. Thank you for every dollar donated. Thank you for every dollar raised. We ran an incredible campaign, and I am so grateful to each and every one of you. Can I do that? Yeah. Okay, we listen again as Anna Bailao gives her uh, sort of thank you speech to her we volunteers. Quite a campaign, 700,000 doors knocked on. Right now, though, we want to take you to the live to Mark Saunders. Uh, he's arrived to speak to his uh, supporters and volunteers. Let's listen to Saunders' remarks now. First off, let me just say thank you so much for everyone for being here. And you know what, uh, friends, family, I'm going to let us get back to our party and to have some fun. First, I want to thank every single candidate that took part in this election. Putting yourselves on the line means that you love the city just as much as we love the city. And we want what's best for the city of Toronto because this is the best city in the world. And it is composed of amazing people. And I want to say thank you to all of you folks out there, everybody here, for all that you've done. I sincerely mean it. It has been a journey from the ground up. But I want to say, Congratulations to Olivia Chow. She fought a tough fight, and at the end of the day, she came out victorious. And you know what? We have to do everything we can to make this city an amazing city, an incredible city that it is, but we have so much further to do. So we have to support Olivia Chow in that position of mayor, because there's a lot of work that we all have to do. And I want to say to my team right now, it takes a village to raise a candidate. And trust me, everybody here did just that. So to everyone on the organization field teams, to our tour team, to our data team, to our social media and digital teams, to our policy team, our communications team, and to our fundraising team, well done. And last but not least, to my family, my lovely wife Stacy, who put me on this journey, and my immediate family that were involved in it, my brothers, my sisters, everybody. You know, this is the start of moving forward in the city of Toronto. And it's important that each and every one of us take part in that. If you voted today, I want to say thank you for voting, because that's key and critical. You put your stamp on what you wanted the city to be and the direction we need, in which it needs to go, and I fully am grateful for that. The next three years, we all have to work together to make us safe, healthy, and strong and vibrant. I spoke on public safety, I spoke on affordability, and I spoke on traffic congestion and a whole bunch of other things, and I'm willing to help to see what needs to be done to move that forward. But as we grow as the City of Toronto and as we have 500,000 more newcomers coming in within the next several years, we all have to get it right. So on behalf of the City of Toronto, I want to say thank you for all the support that you provided to me, knocking on doors, talking to you, and hearing what you wanted to make Toronto become Toronto. We'll see what tomorrow brings. But right now, we all have to be positive to move forward so that we can continue to have Toronto to be the legacy city and the greatest city in the world. Thank you so much for everything.
the latest from Mark Saunders. He was, of course, consider, considered the Premier's favorite candidate. Thank you. Doug Ford endorsing Mark Saunders last week, but in the end, it wasn't enough. Let's go live to Josh Matlow headquarters now, where he is speaking with supporters. One that finally focuses on not just reacting to safety, but addressing the root causes. One that actually understands that people cannot make the rent, cannot buy a home, and need affordable homes in this city. A Toronto that delivers services, everything from snow clearing to road repair to finally supporting our most vulnerable in a way that we know that if we want to fix this city, yes, we're going to have to pay for it. And I am so proud of each one of you. I want to begin by thanking my remarkable, talented, dedicated, and skilled, knowledgeable, and committed team, Team Matlow, who brought us so far in this campaign. I am, I am in awe of you. I am in absolute awe of you. To the hundreds of volunteers, to each of you, from Scarborough to Etobicoke, from North York to the Lakeshore, the hundreds of Torontonians that came through because they both believed in me, but more importantly, believed in our shared priorities and values for the city. I love you, and I will always be grateful to each of you. I love you. You did this because you love our city, and you know that the campaign that we were part of was one that we can be proud of. You know, the first thing that I said to our team from day one, win or lose, we're going to be proud of what we do and how we do it, and damn right we did that. We set a new standard for what politics should be like. The ideas, the policies. We didn't just talk about the problems, we offered solutions, and that's what we all debated, and that's what I know many of those ideas are going to find their way through success through City Council now with our new mayor. We ran an ethical campaign. We ran an honest campaign. We ran a positive campaign. We didn't run against people, we ran for our city. And we're not done yet. We're not done yet because with your support, I wake up tomorrow morning being a representative at City Council. Okay, so we'll be listening as Josh Matlow gives his uh, acceptance speech to the result here. Uh, clearly, uh, you know, in some cases, thanking Leva Chow, but also coming out quite fired up. Let's go now to Mark Saunders. We just heard from him speaking in general terms. Steve Ryan has him live right now. Steve. Yeah. No, it's too early to dissect and start analyzing what did work and what didn't work. But listen, put my uh, foot in the campaign, ran forward, did the best that I could. And again, the voters have, have decided which way the city of Toronto needs to go and I'm excited about that I live here my family's here and uh, I'm looking forward to see what the future brings for our city so Mark we're live on CP24 during your speech there you acknowledged your family you thanked your wife you're you've been a chief you've worked in, in, in public in the, in the public before she's 
clearly tired by this. Can you talk about the impact of uh, the family life going through a campaign like this? No, it's tough on all of the candidates when it comes to family and family involvement. But you know what? Uh, family is always supported if you're doing the right thing for the right reasons. And I think, uh, uh, again, uh, we come in weather hardened for these kind of things. And, uh, and so, yeah, uh, collectively we got in and uh, collectively we're going to sit back, regroup, have a bit of a vacation and figure out what tomorrow looks like. And as far as law and order goes, do you still think that's a priority here for the city of Toronto? No, absolutely. Uh, whoever is the mayor has to make sure that transit is something that is looked after. The fact that ridership is only at 70%, the fact that I was knocking on doors and people have concerns about riding the transit, people have concerns about the way Young and Dundas is and other areas of the city and city government has not listened to them. I think it's important that that's something that needs to be acknowledged and that all voices are heard to come up with the right solutions to keep our city as safe as possibly can. And so. I know you were asked this, but I'll ask, I'll ask you one more, one more time. What, what's next for you? I know it's been a busy time for you with this campaign. What's next for Mark Summers? Well, I, I don't know what's next right now. It's uh, back to family. Uh, haven't seen my wife in a while. My dog loves me at the end of the day, but uh, I have to reaffirm that love with my dog, and we'll see what the future brings. But you know what? I want to thank everybody here for covering it. It was tough for you guys as well, too. Uh, but uh, we've gotten to the finish line now, and tomorrow, the 27th, new city of Toronto, new council, new mayor and it's going to be exciting to see how this all plays out so can, can i ask you this mark before one last question before sure. i go thank you and everybody gets to be the chief of police and you get to see the city from a certain perspective as the chief of police do you see it from another lens campaigning as a, a mayoral candidate yeah no what i what i saw throughout this campaign is that toronto is a city of immigrants uh we've all come with the same journey my parents came here for better education for their kids for better opportunity and and hopefully to either have a business a family place to stay and uh i've learned that that's even stronger now than ever before uh, outside of the policing lens and uh, so everybody comes here for hope and we'll see exactly what's going to happen over the next couple of years appreciate your time thank, thank you very thank much, you very much. Okay. let's set it back to the desk all right steve thanks so much candidate brad bradford is speaking to his supporters now let's listen in live i just want to say i've had a hell of a time on this campaign trail with all of you we've had a hell of a time This experience over the past three months has been the biggest privilege, the biggest honor of my life to have that opportunity to go across all 640 square kilometers of this city, to hear from young families who are growing up here in the city, to hear from new Canadians who are betting on Toronto to build a business, to raise a family, to find a better life to hear from seniors who have given so much to Toronto over the years and want to stay and want to live here in this city. That journey has been so eye-opening and remarkable. And I have never been more inspired, more encouraged, and more bullish on the city of Toronto than I am right now, right here today. Okay, I've been listening as Brad Bradford, who finished eighth tonight. Thanks, his supporters. Let's go to Anthony Fury right now. Fury HQ, he's addressing his uh, supporters. experience that I have had these past few months. You know, they said at the beginning that we couldn't do it. They said we'd never take off. They said that nothing would amount to this, and they said that a campaign couldn't be fought standing on principle. But guess what? We proved them wrong. Never let them tell you that you can't stand up for what you believe in. And this has been a truly amazing experience for me but when I say we, oh boy, was it a we. So many supporters. I couldn't have done it without all of you. This is something that we did together. The tens of thousands of people who voted for our shared vision. The thousands of people who, who 
dug into their wallets and made a contribution, the hundreds of people all across this city who volunteered and put so much time and energy and passion into this campaign. Thank you. We're the little campaign that could. They said we couldn't do it, and we made a difference. When you put forward policies that are true to you, that you're passionate about, that you're committed about, people join you, you work together, and you want to build a better city, and that's what we did. I'm truly honored to have had the vote of tens of thousands of Torontonians, to have had the contributions of, of thousands of residents, to have had hundreds of volunteers joining me. So thank you so much for that. It's an amazing city. Now, I'm not going to start naming individual names because, boy, I'm proud to say that there are a lot of individual names who did so many amazing things on this campaign trail. You know who you are, and I thank you so much. I thank my amazing campaign staff who got behind me and backed me and believed in me when nobody else would, and we made a difference. That is the latest from Anthony Fury, considered a political outsider, and tonight he finished fourth. Let's go live to Mitzi Hunter now. She's speaking to supporters. Let's Everyone. listen in. Everywhere in this city. And we're not finished. We're not done. And it's going to take all our efforts together and I look forward to working with the new council under a new mayor because it is going to take all of our efforts to move the city forward. And, to, and we're ready to do that. We are ready to do that. So let's continue to move forward. Let's continue to believe in our city and to believe in each other. Because we need to do that in order for our city to progress. So I want to say thank you once again to my entire team. And I can't start calling you by name because that would not be fair. But there are two people that I must acknowledge because they made me better. Do you know when you have those people in your life? They're ride or die, and they're with you, no matter what, and they tell you the truth. So I just want to say a huge thank you to Andrew Bevan. He's not here. He's with his son. This is graduation. And the team of people that came with him, you know who you are, because you know you were relentless about that plan. 
to fix the six. And I do believe it was the best plan. So I want to say... I want to thank them so much. And I also really want to say thank you to Charmaine Emerson, who just delivered on those KPIs every day. Can you feel it? <laughs> and I just want to thank each and every one of you, each and every one of you, all of you, for your time, your passion, your commitment, your support, and more importantly, for the belief in our city and your belief in me. I can't thank you enough. I can't thank you enough. Okay, we're listening to Mitzi Hunter, who's finished sixth tonight, uh, thanking all of her supporters. Uh, right now, it's back to Bilal HQ. Eden Debebe is in that scrum with her right now. Let's listen so to these remarks. Joining this campaign because they've worked with me. They know that I'm all about rolling my sleeves. That I'm all about getting things. And, and I gotta ask her live now on CP24, what is next for you? People were cheering. They were saying three more years, three more years. Are they gonna get what they want? You know what? I'm not thinking about three more years from now. It's a long time. What I'm thinking right now is. Just just to hug all these people. They've worked incredibly hard on this campaign. We ran a, an incredible campaign. We brought people from across the city, across the political spectrum, from across sectors, from labor to business. Um, I really want to thank them because I know they all worked so hard and they're proud of the campaign that we ran. And you made a beeline. As soon as you came off that stage, the first thing you wanted to do was hug your friends, your family, your support. Really, your priority is still the people. It's still the people. That's what I love. That's why I do this. That's why I wanted to run because, you know, that sense of opportunity that I felt when I came at 15, that gave me that stability to say, you're going to be okay. It was an incredible feeling. I just want to that feeling in this city again. And seeing the numbers, how does that make you feel reassured that your campaign was needed, that your voice was heard, and people felt that their voices were heard potentially in your campaign? Absolutely. You know, there's an affordability crisis out there. There's a housing crisis out there. People uh, found that I recognized that, that I had a plan to fix services, key services in our city to build housing. My track record on building housing, on working with the other orders of government was really resonant. People. people wanted to make sure that they had somebody that had that experience that was going to bring uh, the relationship with the other orders of government, but stand up for our city, stand up and champion the, the issues that our city really needs to be championed. When you were on the campaign trail, was there any one moment that stood out to you? Like I said, the events and everything around the city, those are the, 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 the best ones. When I'm at the doorsteps, when I'm in backyards having conversations about issues in the city, I can spend the whole afternoon in there and the whole days in there. Anna, as a, as a daughter of immigrants, this is a Okay, a lot of conversations place. happening, including our Mark Liverman uh, live right now with our eighth place finisher this evening, Brad Bradford. Mark. Yeah, joined by Brad Bradford here. Uh, Brad, first of all, obviously not the results uh, you were hoping for. Uh, your reaction to tonight's result, first of all. It's the will of Toronto. It's the will of the people. So happy to accept that. You know, everyone who puts their name on the ballot steps up to serve the city because they love the city. 102 candidates. There was only going to be one winner. And so I'd like to congratulate Olivia Chow. And I am super proud of our campaign team, all of the volunteers, those conversations that I got to have with thousands of Torontonians. It's been the honor of a lifetime for me. Now, with Olivia Chow winning as mayor and, and in terms of city council, uh, will you work with her? How is this going to look moving forward in terms of working with Olivia Chow now? I always work with everybody. I work with my council colleagues. I work with the province. I work with the federal government because that's what Torontonians expect. For the past three months, Olivia and I have been political opponents, but tomorrow we will be colleagues and there will be opportunities to collaborate. And I suspect there will also be opportunities where we have a different view of opinion as well. 
And Brad, the other thing, obviously everybody's probably wondering at this point, uh, for all these candidates, but in terms of you, are you planning on running again uh, down the line for mayor in the future? I, I know it's pretty early. Yeah, I can tell you I'm planning on having another beer tonight. Uh, that's, that's not where my head's at. Honestly, tonight is about thanking all of the friends and family, volunteers, supporters for their involvement and their engagement. And Torontonians across the city who took the time to welcome me into their house or their small business or chat with me at a transit stop. I'm honestly so grateful. It's, it's been the honor of a lifetime. I'll never forget this, and I really appreciate it, Toronto. So we'll have to wait and see, though, in terms of the mayor, in terms of running again. That'll be a decision down the line, beer first. We, we got a lot of work to do between now and 2026. Um, you know, unprecedented financial challenges, gridlock that's ground the city to a halt, and affordable housing crisis. I want to build more housing so more people can live here. I want to make sure that Toronto is a great place for families, new Canadians, and seniors. My mission has never been more crystal clear. I'm going back to work tomorrow to work for all Torontonians. Bradford, thank you so much. Appreciate it. We'll be checking in with you, I'm sure, at City Hall down the line. Appreciate it. Uh, again, you heard there uh, from Brad Bradford. Uh, asked him if he's going to be uh, running for mayor again in 2026. Uh, he says, uh, focus tonight, having a beer. Don't worry about that down the line, guys. Yeah, it's, it's just too early. All right, Mark Liverman live with Brad Bradford this evening. Bradford, we should note, finished eighth. Let's go live now to CTV's Queen's Park Bureau Chief, Siobhan Morris. And Siobhan, the Premier is free acting tonight. Remember, it was less than a week ago, Lena, that we heard the Premier talk about uh, an Olivia Chow mayoralty being an unmitigated disaster. But tonight, a more collaborative tone from the Premier. Here's what he had to say. I want to congratulate Olivia Chow on tonight's election win and on becoming the next mayor of Toronto. Uh, throughout Olivia's life, she's proven her desire and dedication to serving the city that many of us call home. While we're not always going to agree on everything, what we can agree on is our shared commitment to making Toronto a place where businesses, families, and workers can thrive. As Ontario and Toronto continue to grow, it's never been more important to get on with building homes and public transit, especially where they can be built together to create communities where people can live, work, and enjoy time with their friends and family. Our government is working hard to make sure Ontario, including its most populous city, has a strong economy by creating the environment for businesses to invest and create good-paying jobs while keeping costs down for hardworking families. I hope that we continue continue to have a willing partner in the city of Toronto as we deliver on our plan to build Ontario. So those words from the Premier tonight, hoping to build a relationship with Olivia Chow, even though he had some pretty harsh words for her on the campaign. I reached out to the Premier's office to see when they might have their first sit down, the Premier and the new Mayor, Mayor-elect Olivia Chow, and it's a little too soon, I think, to set when that meeting might be, but certainly a lot to talk about, especially about those priorities of building housing in particular, affordable and accessible housing housing and those big transit projects to keep the city moving. Lena. All right, Siobhan, thanks so much for this. Siobhan, thank you for that. Yeah, let's talk about what uh, Doug Ford has said in his statement. Let's turn things over to uh, Scott Reed right now. You're the communications uh, expert on the panel here. What do you make of the tone Doug Ford struck tonight in that statement uh, regarding Olivia Chow? For those who thought that, you know, after the weekend he was going to greet her with, can't wait to, you know, th strap on the boxing gloves, let's go. That was never going to occur. Okay. Um, you know, Doug Ford, there are two kinds of populists. He is a populist politician. There's the angry populist and there's the happy populist. He has found a lot of success being the happy populist, the one who can work with others, the one who says, hey, buddy, hey, fellas, let's all work together. That's where his natural propensity is to go. That's where he's been successful politically. That's what you read in that statement. Where it makes sense for him to work with Olivia Chow, to get things done, to not alienate voters in Toronto, he's going to do that. That's in his self-interest. And self-interest prevails above all else in <laughs> politics. It sure does. Adrian, yeah. uh, Toronto needs a new deal, and Olivia Chow has to get Toronto this new deal, and she would have to work with the Premier. Is this going to be a tumultuous relationship? I don't know. Um, I'm going to go back to when Jack Layton passed away. Rob Ford was mayor. Mm. And at that time, there was a, a really nice relationship that forged between the Fords and, and Olivia Chow at the time. I mean, I was at City Hall at the time as well. Um, yeah. There's always going to be disagreements on policy and how you get to a certain policy decision or, or an how you achieve something. But we're... Premier Ford and Mayor-elect Chow are going to have to work on it. And, and to, Scott, to, to pick up on what Scott said, 
it is in not only just the province of Ontario's uh, interest, but the city of Toronto's interest, therefore in the PC party of Ontario's interest to ensure a healthy Toronto getting that housing built and Chow needs to work with them. And just want to point out to our viewers right now, a little bit of activity happening at uh, Olivia Chow HQ, or uh, Mike Layton speaking right now. Of course, let's listen live here as we wait for Olivia. I would also like to acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13, signed with the Mississaugas of the Credit, and the Williams Treaty signed with multiple Mississaugas and Chippewa bands. I'd like to finally say that this land is also subject with the dish with one spoon wampum. And for me, that means that we all have a bond with the land and with each other. And that what we take, we must also return. Thanks, Mike. I'm Sarah Layton, and on behalf of all of our family, and on behalf of all of our family, I'm so excited and proud to have the honor of welcoming my stepmother, the next mayor of Toronto, Olivia Chu! Okay, watching Olivia Chow come in as she's been declared, of course, the next mayor of Toronto, her decision desk, and of course, she just heard it from her stepdaughter, Sarah Layton, getting that crowd riled up. As we now know, Olivia Chow will be the next mayor of Toronto. Look at that throng of supporters just trying to high-five or give her a hug or say a positive word or two. Yeah, she is just surrounded by cameras, supporters, a lot of smiling faces there at Olivia, as Olivia Chow makes her way to that stage. Just waiting to hear from her now. We should know, Olivia Chow making some history tonight. She is the first racialized mayor in Toronto, the first female mayor since 1997. Let's watch. Thumbs up, high fives, handshakes, all kinds of support for Olivia. She's trying to get up on that oh, stage yeah. right now, but her supporters are so thrilled and just want to touch her and experience that moment with her that she's just struggling to get up there right Look now. Look at all those Olivia Chow signs there. Her family waiting for her on stage. She's just trying to make her way through that crowd. So many supporters. Got to wonder what's going to be a part of her speech tonight. And of course, you've got to wonder what her night was like as well when you consider uh, where we were about half an hour, 40 minutes ago when Anna Bylaw was between four to 9,000 votes ahead. Uh, Adam Vaughn is giving us the roller coaster sign of emotions <laughs> on a night like this. You can imagine that was what it was like for Mayor-elect now, Olivia Chow. She's going to address the crowd any second now once she can kind of get to the microphone on that packed stage. There she of course, is. it's Shaking a great hands. Hall of Taking some pictures with supporters already. Handing out some hugs there. Just waiting to hear from Mayor-elect Olivia Chow. Yeah, some hugs for her grandchildren there as well. There's Mike Layton giving her a big hug. He's been a big supporter. He was canvassing with her throughout this campaign, knocking on doors, really rallying people behind her. And it's paid off. It's a comeback story. It you know, is. 2014, this was a different story. Here we are now in 2023. She's been out of politics for almost a decade. So, yeah, this is totally a political comeback story. All right, let's listen in because you know we're going to hear from her soon. So as the supporters' cheers maybe die down, if that happens, we know one way or another we're going to hear from the next mayor of Toronto momentarily. I just have to say I love the shot of the kids. They're having the best time. They tonight. are, yes. <laughs> everyone <laughs> wow what a night 
if you ever doubted what's possible together, if you, if you ever questioned your faith in a better future, and what we can do with each other, for each other, tonight is your answer. Thank you to the people of Toronto for the trust you've placed in me and the mandate for change as your new mayor. And whether you voted for me or not, we're united in our love for this great city. I pledge to you, I will delegate myself to work tirelessly in building a city that's more caring, affordable, and safe, where everyone belongs. <laughs> Toronto, my home. I immigrated here when I was 13, to this place of hope where my family found an affordable apartment in St. Jamestown. My father had mental illness and could not work, but my mother was able to pay the rent and put food on the table. With one single income as a hotel maid, Toronto was a place where I could later afford my own apartment after university. And that's where my mother came to live with me and rebuild her life after my dad hurt her very badly. Me on the mattress, on the floor, mom on the bed. She could heal because she had a home. Toronto was a place where someone like me could afford to grow up become a school trustee, a city councillor, and a member of parliament. It's where I served the city with passion and love, where I worked hard to champion the well-being of children. And while I've been knocked down a few times over the years, yeah, just like you, I always got back up. <laughs> because the people of this city, all of you, are worth the fight. I know things are tough these days. It's harder to get by. And Harder to get around, takes longer, but don't give up. Toronto is a place of hope, a place of second chances, right? A city where an immigrant kid from St. Jamestown can be standing in front of you as your new mayor. Toronto's future because we all shared one thing, hope. Yeah. The hope that comes from finding an affordable place to live. Yeah. Hope that our kids can grow up in a city of opportunity. The hope of a city that's strengthened by compassion, not weakened by inequality. A place where if we chip in a little more, we can improve public services and make our city. Yeah. 
Yeah, improve public service and make our city more livable. Yeah. That's hope. That shared belief in what's possible is what will sustain us in the months ahead. Building more affordable housing. Yeah. yeah. Making TDC safer, faster, <laughs> and more reliable, huh? <laughs> Keeping Ontario Place public. <laughs> where where the, my grandkids and I can watch the sunset and skip storms. <laughs> Building a city that cares. That's what we're all about, right? But the work of changing a city left behind by a decade of neglect is not going to be easy. Okay? The work of change is always hard. We will face some roadblocks along the way, but I know we can make it happen by committing ourselves to each other and to the city we love. Yeah. Our work to build a city where everyone belongs starts right now. Yeah. Now, speaking of working together, I said to Premier Ford, who graciously called me tonight, and, and his, and his um, minister, Steve Clark, called me and he said, we look forward to working together. Yes. We look forward to finding common ground, right? Because I know we both believe in this people of this city. The, and yes, we both believe in, we love the city. The people have sent a message today. They want to get things done. Yeah. yeah. Like building affordable housing and improving TTC. <laughs> well, Mr. Premier, we're ready. Let's work together to get it done. And to the Prime Minister, I look forward to working with your government. A healthy and a livable Toronto is essential to a strong Toronto. And Canada, a strong Canada. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Now, this, can this campaign had so many talented candidates, and I spoke to them. Anna Bailao, Mark Saunders, Josh Matlow. Yeah, I, I, I phoned them, they phoned me, and we pledged to work together. Okay? And of course, Mitzi Hunter, Anthony Fury, Brad Bradford, and Chloe Brown. Yes. And my friend, Gil Penalosa, who worked with me for the I, I want to thank you for all, the sh of the, for all of you to sharing your ideas and your passion. We all share a deep love for this city. And, and I'm driven by a common belief that everyone should have affordable place to live. So to all the candidates, each one of you, and to Toronto City Council, to the public service, business and labor, yeah, civil society, community leaders, yeah, and the people of this great city, I invite you to join me and let's work together to make the promise of an affordable home a reality for everyone. And 
to follow a saying that the Somali mothers have taught me. If, if we come together, we can mend a crack in the sky. Yes, indeed. We can mend cracks in this city. To my family, Sarah and Hugh, Mike and Brett and Sally, I love you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for standing beside me all these years. And to my beautiful grandkids, Beatrice, Solace, Phoebe and Chloe. Yeah. I hope your grandma Ollie makes you proud. <laughs> And to the best campaign team in the country. <laughs> All of you. All of you. <laughs> yeah. You made this campaign a home for everyone. Yes. Yes. And they led with heart, passion, and hard work every single day. Thank you so, so very, very much. And to the thousands of volunteers. And there were... And just today, there were 2,500 volunteers out in the street today. Throughout the campaign, you knocked on half a million doors. You made calls. Yeah, and you paint the city purple with t-shirts and signs. <laughs> you gave me strength after long days of door knocking, public events, debates, and there were a lot of debates, yeah? <laughs> we joined together to rebuild the promise of our city. Reorganize block by block. Yes, your love, your compassion, your commitment and your stories filled me with the energy to fight for you every day. Your stories are the inspiration of this campaign. People like the fierce and now famous Dahlia, yeah? Is she here today? <laughs> Who struggle between paying rent and having great food to eat at the end of the month. Her story resonated with so many people across this city. Or Joseph, who can't retire even though he was exhausted and bone tired because his rent is just too high. Or Sarah, a childcare worker who was trapped in an abusive relationship like so many women in our city, in our country, like my mother, because she couldn't afford a place for her and her kids. It was tough. They are why we must continue to work for change. Yes. So, are you ready to go and get to work? Yeah, we're ready. Yes. Together, we will open up City Hall. Join me in the work ahead. Yeah. Join me with each other for each other because I need you to keep speaking out with your ideas, keep helping out, keep caring for each other, because what we've won today is an opportunity. Eh? A starting point in our journey towards a more affordable, safe, and caring city.
So you're sure now you're ready, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Together, we can create a better city. Thank you so much. That is the latest from Toronto's new mayor, Olivia Chow. A live look from Chow HQ this evening. She just spoke with supporters, talked about her immigrant family, how Toronto has shaped her story, says Toronto is a place of hope, of second chances. Talking about making Toronto more affordable, more safe, and more livable. She also says she received a call from the Premier congratulating her and said the Premier talked about working together, finding common ground. Kristen, you endorsed Ms. Chow. What kind of mayor do you think she'll be? I think Olivia is going to be a high-energy mayor. I think she's going to be collaborative. Uh, she will be able to work across the aisles. Uh, one, of the, one of the secret skills that Olivia has, which I guess is no longer very secret because we've, we've learned this throughout the campaign, uh, is that she's able to work with all sorts of people, and she's actually done that, whether it's delivering uh, you know, a, a good child care program from, uh, from Ottawa so that you know, all of us who have young kids can actually benefit from that. And Olivia will consistently do that every single time. She's always looking for a way to get things Things done. Uh, she doesn't take no for an answer. She's uh, she's one to who will go back and, and to build the support. And you know, when when the premier says that he will work with Olivia, I, I will take him at face value right now. There's been times where the premier has done things to Toronto without Toronto's permission, and of course, oftentimes even without the consultation of council. I think that Olivia will have to bring council together. And like every new mayor coming in with a mandate, and there is a mandate here, and Doug Ford pretty much acknowledged that in his statement, is that. Uh, She'll be bringing council with her, and if she brings council with her, she'll bring the residents of Toronto to that table every time she negotiates, whether it's with the Premier or uh, with the Prime Minister. So let's talk to the councillor on our panel tonight. And we sort of <laughs> jumped the gun a little bit. You talked about working with Olivia Chow before it was official. Now it's official. What's your reaction, Jamal? You're going to be working with the mayor you endorse. I mean, I'm excited. I think it's, you know, time this city finally took a different direction. And we finally started really addressing some of the problems that we face. And what's really impressive about this is that she won apparently five out of six Scarborough ridings. Mm -hmm. So she's put together a very interesting coalition between Toronto and Scarborough. Yeah. And she has Don Valley North, it looks like. Yeah. That's unprecedented. We've never seen that type of mix. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, what type of policy results from that because her win was very much, it wasn't just from the downtown, it was also from the suburbs, particularly Scarborough. So she's made some big promises in Scarborough, particularly around transit. So I'm excited to get to work for her on behalf of the people of Scarborough North. Adam, you know Olivia Chow quite well. You ran against her in the Spadina Fort York race in 2015. What kind of mayor do you think she's going to be for this city? Well, first of all, it, it's Olivia's night and she deserves congratulations. Congratulations and, and frankly the support of the whole city because if she can succeed, the city does better and I think we all want that won't want to see that. I think I think Jamal's analysis of, of this partnership between Scarborough and Toronto is fascinating. Mm. It's not a, it's not a political partnership that we've seen before. It'll be interesting to see what comes of that. What she shares and, and, and Kristen raised this issue, what she shares with Doug Ford is she is a deal maker. Uh, it's, it's her greatest strength, it's her greatest weakness, and just as with Doug, it's his greatest strength and greatest weakness, because not every deal is good and some deals are better than others. But I think she has the capacity to, to, to um, quite frankly, leave campaign commitments on the campaign trail and do what needs to be done to solve the issues that are present at City Hall. And I think you'll see that pragmatism about her. I also share, uh, you know, we, we all come from families that represent the diversity of the city. And I think it's a great day uh, to recognize um, how, how diverse the field was and, and, and the diversity and, and the values that Olivia embraces with that. That should give Torontonians something to rally around if they can't rally around the politic. Um, but at the end of the day, um, she is going to win or lose her, 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 her battles at City Council uh, entirely based on how well she can negotiate with the senior levels of government. The, the, the financial situation at the city is, it's been 25 years in the making. Uh, it is in terrible shape. There's no sugarcoating that. And, and, and the city has depleted its reserves, which means it has no capital dollars in the, in the budget. She's going to have to restructure not just how the city works, but how the city finances its operations. 
And she will not do that if she picks fights with Ottawa in Queen's Park. She'll only do that if she negotiates a truce. And that remains to be seen whether she can do that. We're watching live at Chow HQ right now. That's Olivia Chow leaving the room tonight. From what we understand from her team, we are not going to get a scrum like we saw from the other contenders tonight. Uh, what we heard from her, we, they say that they want the speech to stand. Uh, Olivia Chow will be appearing on CP24 Breakfast tomorrow morning at about 20 after 7. So you can uh, look for that interview She's live. She's going to go home and get some sleep now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But <laughs> exactly. If, if you know Olivia Chow, she is resilient yes. and she works hard. She does not stop working hard. It's re she's one of the few retired politicians that just never retires. Okay. She just and came out of retirement for sure. Well, <laughs> yeah. 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 She has in been a, a give her nine credit. years in the making. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she's waited nine long years. Her supporters have waited lo nine long years for this to happen. So it's not, it's important for her to have that have this moment. But you know, compromise and collaboration are really going to be the order of the day once she does take office um, in mid-July. And, you know, she she has the weight of the city shoulders, you know, the weight of the city on her shoulders. It's a big job. This is a budget that is bigger than most provinces collectively. There is, Toronto is the home to hundreds of thousands of um, new Canadians every year. And, and I know we sound redundant when we talk about the, the financing and, and the new deals and what has to be done. Um, but that is so critical for all of the future success. All of the platform ideas she had all hinge on whether or not there is an ability to work with Premier Ford and, and Prime Minister mm -hmm. uh, Trudeau. I, I think it's helpful that, Justin, uh, that Jagmeet Singh has basically been propping up the Liberal government and that, that should give a little bit of leeway, who knows, but that, that said, um, you know, it, it's a, we all love a, a political comeback. This is extraordinary, but I don't think people really appreciate just how bad the financial circumstances are at, at the city. And, and I hope Ms. Chow is, is up to the task. We, let's see what sort of an executive she puts through. Let's see what sort of uh, people she surrounds herself by. And uh, time will tell. Yeah, True some up. massive challenges awaiting the mayor-elect. Jennifer, I see you wanting to get in here, so your thoughts. Well, I've noticed that uh, Christia Freeland, the finance minister, has um, already put out a message saying that she's looking forward to working very closely with Olivia Chow. Uh, I think that speaks to your point. Um, you know, there was some speculation earlier in the evening uh, whether you know, players from other parties were going to collaborate, and I think it speaks to the importance of the city of Toronto to the rest of the country. No one wants to see Toronto fail. Toronto needs some fundamental restructuring with respect to how we are financed. The federal government knows that. The province knows that. And the good news is, is that the key players, meaning the Minister of Finance and also the Premier, have made it very clear immediately this evening that their intention is to work collaboratively with our new mayor-elect, Olivia Chow. And I think that was one of the key messages in her speech as well. She was very, very, um, she extended the net very wide with respect to who she wants to work with moving forward. Right, okay, well, we'll see. We, she, she talked a lot in that speech there about, you know, hope and plans and yeah. second chances and all that about the city of Toronto. So we'll see that. So let's go back now to the room where that speech was just delivered. Beatrice Vaisman at Chow headquarters this evening. She really had the crowd on their feet there, Beatrice. The excitement, the exuberance in that room. It was off the charts. It's been electric in this room all night long here at the Great Hall, Nick and Lita. I mean, the energy's been high even when the votes were coming in. And Anna Baila was initially about 10,000 votes ahead. Well, look where we are now. Olivia Chow, the new mayor of the city, delivering a positive speech on stage just a few minutes ago, followed by some purple confetti that rained down from the sky. I want to bring City Councilor Usma Malik. I just heard one of the supporters say, you did a lot of heavy lifting. Olivia Chow. How do you feel now that she's the next mayor of Toronto? You know, the people of right across Toronto did some heavy lifting. The folks, uh, you know, saw Olivia's leadership, her record of actually improving the lives of Torontonians, her story touched them deeply. She's known what it's meant to struggle, but also to represent communities, to, to actually deliver solutions when it comes to transit, affordable housing, community services, and that's what we're seeing here. And that's exciting, and that's beautiful, and I'm excited about that collaboration, being able to work with people across the political spectrum to actually make sure that we 
meet the challenges of our city with the urgency and the smarts that they require. What do you think that first council meeting is going to be like? Because there were 10 city councilors who supported Anna Bailao. They didn't get their candidate of choice at City Hall. Yeah, absolutely. Well, 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 we'll make sure that, you know, that we're able to kind of bring that collaborative spirit that has defined Olivia's career to City Hall. I think there's going to be a lot of different conversations. But what I know from being at City Hall, that having certainty in the mayor's office is really important. It's so important in terms of being able to advocate to the provincial and federal governments for Toronto to get our fair share. And there's alignment right across the political spectrum on council to fight as hard as we can to make sure we're putting the city on the best track, the fairest track, and a city that actually cares. This is a historic moment. You became the first woman to wear a hijab to be elected to City Hall. Tonight we have the first racialized woman who's now the mayor of this city. What does that mean to you? Every single time we break barriers, that's amazing, right? This is a history-making win, and for me, what it says to me is that more Torontonians can see themselves in the leadership of this city, that more young people, more people from marginalized backgrounds, more people from every part of the city can see a place for themselves at City Hall. We heard that from Olivia in her speech, that City Hall is going to be open to all of us, and that's really important because what we've seen is that people are feeling very distant from the decision-making at City Hall, and we want to make sure that they're at the heart of it. There's going to have to be a lot of collaboration, not only at City Hall, but between the mayor and the premier. I guess, what's the guidance? What would you say to Olivia Chia? Not that she needs guidance, but what would you advise her when it comes to dealing with the premier and, and taking pitches from City Hall to the premier's office? I think the most exciting thing about Olivia in the role of mayor of this city, the biggest city in Canada, our engine, is that she has a track record of actually delivering results and working across party lines to do that when it comes to the best interests of Toronto. And I'd say draw on that experience, work with council colleagues, engage our communities, be the organizer and the leader that we know you are, and uh, lead with those values that connected with many Torontonians and brought us to the win tonight. The mayor has one vote on council. Olivia has already said she's not going to use the strong mayor powers. How does she get the support amongst broader council? Because you need the support to get your agenda passed. So Olivia was a city councillor before, and until most recently, that is how city council works. You had to negotiate, collaborate, and work with your colleagues to get the best outcomes, and Olivia's going to draw on that experience, and it's going to take hard work. There's no superhero here to come in, sweep in, in and fix Toronto, but what she does have, which is an incredible power, is to be able to bring people together to find the best solutions, to negotiate good outcomes, and to make sure that people in our communities are part of that process. And it's going to take all of us to fix the deep hole that the last 12 years of leadership in this city have put us in. Councillor Malik, thank you for your time. Thank you. There is now a dance party here on the floor of the Great Hall, the venue where Olivia Chow's supporters have been gathered tonight. And what an interesting position we're in now here in the city of Toronto. A mayor who doesn't have official party uh, affiliation, but a candidate, a new mayor who has been an, a new Democrat her entire life. We've got a progressive conservative premier and a liberal prime minister here in this country. Three different party affiliations across municipal, provincial, and federal politics, but jubilation here at Olivia Chow headquarters. Nick and Lee. All right, Beatrice Baseman with some Olivia Chow supporters. A lot of excitement yeah. in that room, a lot of dancing too. Let's bring in CTV Toronto's Natalie Johnson now. She is also at Olivia Chow headquarters. You know what, just an update now. We are hearing from Toronto's former mayor, John Tory. It's important to note, he of course endorsed Anna Bailao. He did not endorse Olivia Chow. He has now released a statement. It says, my sincere congratulations to Olivia Chow on her election as mayor of Toronto. She brings a great deal of experience in the public life of our city and our country. And I know that 
that will serve her well as mayor. We are so fortunate to live in Toronto, it goes on to say, and I know Ms. Chow will work with council and with the other governments to make our city even better. She loves the city, as I do, and I will do anything I can to help her in the days and months ahead. While it is the biggest possible privilege to hold this job, it is also complex and challenging, and we should all be hoping for her success. I also extend my congratulations and thanks to all of the candidates who had the courage to contest this election. In particular, I want to acknowledge Anna Bailau, who worked with me so capably as deputy mayor and presented a vision for the city that clearly spoke to many Torontonians. So that is a statement from the former mayor who of course triggered all this, John Tory. All right, and we have some more numbers for you. You see a check mark beside Olivia Chow. Uh, just a reminder here, Olivia Chow will be Toronto's next mayor. And she has an almost 34,000 vote lead ahead of Anna Bailau. Almost all polls in the city reporting. Anna Bailau sitting at about 235 100,000 votes here. Mark Saunders, a distant third tonight. Yeah, really, this was this became evident in the first set of boards. We saw that this was going to be a race between uh, Chow and Bailo, and that's how it turned out. Yeah. Anthony Fury, who really, as he said, you know, kind of came out of nowhere, and he said there were a lot of naysayers about his campaign. He has finished fourth with just a few polls left to go. It doesn't appear that Josh Matlow will overtake him. So Fury, Matlow, very close, four, yeah, five. Uh, and then it falls down. Uh, Mitzi Hunter, about, you know, uh, 11 or, sorry, 14,000 or so votes behind. Yeah, Mitzi Matlow Hunter there. finished fourth. Uh, rather sixth uh, tonight. Chloe Brown uh, sitting at about almost 19,000 votes. Brad Bradford sitting at just shy of 10,000 votes. And Chris Sakocha, also known as Chris Sky, sitting at about 8,000 votes tonight. Okay, so that is the top nine there. But again, the top one, of course, was uh, Olivia Chow, who's going to be the next mayor of Toronto. Really, in that seesaw battle that we saw throughout the night here, the numbers shifting back and forth Very tense as the moments. polls came in. Yeah, Olivia Chow uh, eventually did come out on top. We're going to check in now with our Lindsay Biscaya. She is live at the Power Board for a closer look at how all of this went down. Lindsay. Yeah, and Lena and Nick, you were just talking about Olivia Chow, obviously the new uh, mayor-elect for Toronto. But we want to take a look at where she did well uh, and and by how much, as you can see by the map here, she was leading by uh, almost 3,400, uh, 34,000 rather, votes above Anna Bailau. So you can see the map here. Uh, she did quite well in majority of the wards, 37%, Anna Bailau 32, and Mark Saunders at a distant 9% there. So let's start in the downtown um, because you can see Olivia Chow doing very well here. It was expected that she would, coming up with 47% of these wards compared to Anna Bailau trailing with 27%. Uh, and then if we go over to the Scarboroughs, you can see uh, Olivia Chow doing quite, quite well here as well. You know, these are diverse communities, so it was really anyone's game here. Uh, and Olivia Chow spent a lot of time here talking about transit. Maybe that had something to do with it. 36%, although Anna Bailau here taking Scarborough Rouge Park. Of course, she did have that endorsement uh, from Deputy Mayor or Jennifer McKelvey. If we go over to the Etobicoke area, so this is where Mark Saunders had some endorsements from Doug Ford, from uh, Etobicoke Centre Councillor uh, Stephen Holliday. But Anna Bailau coming out as the winner here, taking the Etobicoke area, 39% compared with Olivia Chow at 27% and Mark Saunders a distant third despite that endorsement. And if we go up north into the, this area of Toronto, you can see in North York, uh, Olivia Chow also taking this area, although, or sorry, Anna Bailau taking this area, although Anna Chow taking uh, uh, one of these wards out of the others, but uh, Anna Bailau really leading this one with 40% of the wards. So quite a breakdown here. You can see Olivia Chow really uh, garnering a lot of support in these wards, although look how um, broken down it is. There's, there's a lot of differences here. So, you know, regardless, Olivia Chow may have her work cut out for her uh, as she takes the mayor's seat. Nick, Lena, back Indeed. To you. Okay, Lindsay, appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, let's turn live now. Speaking of Anna Bailau, Eden DeBebe live at Bailau HQ again. Uh, really, Anna Bailau, uh, she said she gave it her best, but just came up short tonight. That's exactly right, and you can see the campaign has made quick work of clearing out the celebration area, or at least what people hoped would be a celebration. Now it almost seems more of a strategization area where people are talking about their plan for the next three years. That's right, already thinking about the next potential campaign. Anna Bailau herself, when asked, didn't say anything about that, though she did say she was happy to hear people chanting and asking for her to come back and run once again. Now that speech, that concept 
session speech, she started off by thanking supporters, talking about all the hard work that went into the campaign, admitted results weren't what they were hoping for, but that, that they were still positive. This gap between Chow and Bailao, not as big as many pollsters made it out to be. And of course, the gap between Bailao and who came in third, Saunders, was a very, very big difference. So this is a win. A lot of people talking about how excited they were to see this come through, come to fruition. Uh, she sincerely congratulated Olivia Chow, of course, all candidates who won. She even did a concession speech in Portuguese, of course, her native tongue. A lot of Portuguese supporters out here tonight. So I can see Anna still here now, still chatting with every single person in the room. Something she told me that she did want to do to make sure that she thanked them for all the hard work they put into her campaign. There were even some tears in the crowd, not only on the floor, but from Anna Bailao herself while giving that concession speech. She told me the tears flowed when she thought of her parents, them immigrating to Canada, the dream they had for her to be as good as she could be. And of course, that's her with her family right now, her mother there, her herself chatting with people, again, making her way through every single person in the room, Nick and Lena. So a very emotional time here, but hopeful and potentially looking ahead to the next campaign. All right, Eden, thanks so much for this. Let's go live now to CP24, Steve Ryan. He is standing by at Mark Saunders HQ with the latest. Steve, you had a chance to speak to Mr. Saunders. I did, Lena, and uh, Mark said that uh, he was happy with his campaign. He hasn't ruled out future endeavors when it comes to uh, politics, but he said he and his family are going to take a well-deserved vacation. So they set up shop here tonight at Bistro on Avenue, which is a well-established uh, pub, if you will, on Avenue Road. Uh, they were here at about 6 o'clock, and uh, Mark met with the media, and he said that he, at the time, was very optimistic. He said that when they were campaigning door-to-door, -door, the people that he spoke with spoke about their concern with regards to law and order, and he felt that he was the best candidate to tackle uh, that problem. Well, clearly, uh, he finished third in the uh, voting, and many uh, on his campaign, a couple of his campaign managers actually spoke with me afterwards, and they said that John Tory's endorsement of, uh, endorsement rather, of Anna Bailao, they believe that that took votes away from Mark. They're not saying that he would have won as a result, but they do say that the gap between where Mark finished and where Anna Bailao finished was as a result of uh, Tory's endorsement. Regardless, uh, Mark uh, congratulated Olivia Chow, and uh, he said that the city needs to work with her now because she is the elected mayor. And as I said, he's going to take a, a well-deserved vacation, and he has not ruled out uh, public office in the future. Send it back to you. Okay, Steve Ryan on Avenue Road. Thank you, Steve. Okay, let's talk more about Anthony Fury right now. Anthony Fury getting a warm welcome from his supporters at the Metropolitan Centre this evening. Of course, he came up short in his bid for the mayor's office. The former Toronto Sun columnist had campaigned on promises to hire hundreds of police officers and to crack down on encampments. Ultimately, he finished fourth, and Fury says he's happy with how he performed. I feel fantastic because, as you saw in that room there, so many supporters, so many people who were, are part of this, coming forth in a, a heavily contested race with, uh, whatever, 10 major candidates out there really working with big campaigns. And, you know, they, they said I couldn't do it. They said I couldn't break through, and we did, and it feels great. There's a, there's a lot of heavy hitters there, and it's great to be one of them there. And uh, we just really gave it our heart and soul. We were the little campaign that could, and it was great to have a grassroots movement where we took ideas that we're, we're from the heart, we were passionate about, and, and we were in it for the right reasons. We are going to take a quick break now, but stay right there. You're watching Toronto's Breaking News CP24. Our special coverage of Toronto's new mayor continues right after this. You should be having more fun. The best stories are right here. And now, pay $30 less with a great total six-month plan. You better buckle up. I have a secret. The groundbreaking series everyone's talking about. I want to be the biggest touring act ever. And the moments you can't get enough of. What happened last night? All in one place. Stream now. Pay $30 less with a Crave Total 6-Month Plan versus a monthly subscription. 
Shopping for a new Jeep or Ram truck? With the GTA's biggest selection, your best buy is right here at Downsview Chrysler. We have the Jeep you want and the Ram trucks you need, all priced to sell today. Whether for work, play, or both, at Downsview, we have a Jeep and Ram for everyone and for all budgets. No gimmicks, games, or hidden fees. Just the right truck for the right price. Get more, pay less at Downsview Chrysler. The big one! Visit us in person or shop online at downsviewchrysler.ca. We're turning up the heat with Super Draw Saturdays. Every Saturday in July, there's a Lotto 649 Super Draw with 20 guaranteed prizes of $10,000 plus two jackpots. The classic jackpot of $5 million and the growing golf ball jackpot. So get your tickets for Super Draw Saturdays because with so many guaranteed prizes, somebody's going to win. It could be you. You don't move on because you're ready to. You move on because you've outgrown who you used to be. I'm on the precipice of doing something either really stupid or totally liberating. Come work for me. But my kids need me even more these days. I realized you never know what tomorrow will bring. Sitting here with you is like 10 years just. And whether you voted for me or not, we're united in our love yes. for this great city. Yes. I pledge to you, I will delegate myself to work tirelessly in building a city that's more caring, affordable, and safe, where everyone belongs. Back live on our election special here, Toronto's new mayor, and we're going to talk to our political panel about what's gone on tonight. Olivia Chow, she was a front runner going in. She has come out as the next mayor of Toronto. Jamal, I want to ask you, Olivia Chow, now mayor, again, you are the sitting councillor on our panel here. Have you heard from any of your fellow councillors? I see you've been working your phone quite yeah. a bit this evening here. What are they saying? What are you hearing from the other councillors about this? I mean, I haven't spoken to them yet. Uh, we have a group chat, so I'm sure it's going to be quite interesting. <laughs> I bet. Uh, the seven new councillors, we have our own group chat, so I'm sure it's going to be quite interesting in terms of the conversations going forward, in terms of a lot of the vision and energy that we want to bring to the city. And now we actually have a mayor committed to you know, building that city that we all ran for. Uh, so this is really, really exciting. And, okay. you know, it's so exciting, again, seeing Scarborough included in the conversation in a way that she can... We've lost your mic, okay, we just Jamal. lost your mic, on. Jamal. We're so we're going to get back to you yeah. as soon as we can. Adam, uh, Olivia Chow is a progressive politician. Yep. So... Torontonians voted to elect a progressive mayor tonight. Yeah, that hasn't happened in more than a decade. Yeah, I, th I think as, as we were watching the sort of the, the ebb and flow of the results coming in, uh, when you look at now the numbers are sort of locked in, it's a 30%, 37% the popular vote. That's higher than I expected earlier in the evening. I, we thought they were both she and Bilal were around the low 30s, so a bit of a stronger mandate. Give her credit for that. And the turnout was, was, was higher than I think most people expected. Um, and that, too, gives her a bit more of a bargaining position when she goes up to out on Queen's Park. The other challenge she will have is, is also getting to council. There are nine progressives on council. She now becomes the 10th. Mm -hmm. uh, there are nine right-wingers on council who she will have a fight with day in and day out. And there's about seven, eight in the middle that, that, that she's going to have to bring four or five over on every issue time and time again. What's interesting about that is that this is the first time I've had a mayor's race where the opposition is on council mm -hmm. and the mayor's race. It's the first time a losing candidate is on council with the winning candidate. So Brad Bradford, Josh Matlow, those two candidates in particular, how they behave, how they embrace a Chow mayoralty will tell a, a, a story as to how successful she is getting her mandate through council. It'll be an interesting couple of weeks at city council as she reshuffles the committee chairs, reshuffles who's in charge of budget, who takes over major agencies. Doug Ford has delivered her a very strong hand in hand picking who she wants she doesn't get those votes through council, mm -hmm. so she will have the ability to sort of say to somebody who might be in the right-wing candidate or the center sort of block of votes, I'll make you the chair of the TTC, but I need your votes on a tax increase. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of politicians who will take the, 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 the job and surrender the vote on the tax uh, in order to, to further their own political career. So how council plays out now over the next few days is going to be interesting.
And when it comes to Bradford and Matlow in particular, and Kristen, I'll go to you as a former counselor here, you know, their vote count really wasn't that impressive tonight. I mean, you know, pretty low. So they're going to have... They don't have to necessarily play by child's rules, but they really have to respect the votes that she received compared to what they earned. Yes, and I'm sure that both of them are, are probably feeling, you know, some level of disappointment, especially Brad Bradford. Uh, I know both the uh, the gentlemen extremely well, uh, have a very strong working relationship with Josh in the past. Um, and I think that, you know, one thing that we can see is uh, that genuineness, uh, fondness that both uh, Olivia and, uh, and Josh had for each other during the campaign trail, that will probably continue uh, as they move back to city council. And, you know, Olivia uh, and, and Josh actually had quite a bit uh, of, of their platform overlap whether it's sort of defending Ontario Place, making sure that uh, housing and transit was invested in. So I think you're going to see a lot of commonality coming out of that. I, I remember that in, in 2010 when, when Rob Ford won, uh, there was all sorts of conversation about there's, there's no way that you know, some outlier like him could actually control city council. And for over, over two years, and, and uh, you'll remember uh, that for over two years, he controlled it fairly well. People went to where the mayor was. And, and those appointments are very, uh, important and and, uh, uh, and and very effective incentives for, for council members and I think that we need to know that it, we need to recognize that Olivia will know how to play that game very well she's done it in the past uh, having worked under a conservative mayor like Mel Lastman but she's also after 40 years of public experience of public life she knows how to bring people together and I've seen her do that time and time again yes yeah, she certainly has that experience Scott on the campaign trail the candidates really went after Olivia Chow on the property tax question and she would never answer but yeah. she's gonna have to figure out what that number looks like now she is but she's got a little bit of time on that and you know I would think that she's going to want to pursue some other priorities first, as Adam points out. She's going to be able to put her own budget chief into place. I mean, look, it, from my perspective, what comes next is really interesting. And for her, I'd want to create some momentum. You know, we were looking at that map Lindsay uh, put up a few minutes ago. I'd put that map to work. These guys are talking, Adam and Jamal, talking about Scarborough, right? Find an issue, create momentum, build a coalition around that council table, draw Scarborough in. Go to Ottawa, go to the province, go to Queen's Park with an ask that doesn't just bring councils, but then also gets all of those liberal MPs in Scarborough who are now scared as hell looking at NDP voters in their backyard and wondering, uh-oh, is that going to spell my Waterloo in the next federal election? So, you know, from my perspective, if I was her, I would try to leverage that, get those liberal MPs, their self-interest working in her favor as mayor, get an ask into the feds, get an ask into Queen's Park, make some momentum for yourself, and then you build on that, demonstrate, as Chris says, that, you know, yeah, actually she can build a coalition, she can build an agenda, and she can pour, move it through. That's where I would want to go. But she's got to pick her staff, she's got to pick her committee chairs. I just have one quick question. She's got to figure out what her team looks like. She's got to think about her chief of staff, her deputy mayor. Who could she be considering, Jennifer? Well, for sure, the first place she's going to go is to her campaign team. Um, those are the players that, uh, we haven't really talked about that, about the kind of campaign that she ran, uh, because a lot of people were very surprised when Olivia was always leading in the polls. But she did have a campaign that was distinguished in as much as it was a campaign that wasn't based on attacking other candidates. It was a campaign that very much drew on who she is as a person, rather than very, being very deep and rich on politics. Policy, although she had that too, it was quite different from the other campaigns. So, you know, she's going to look right in her backyard. She's got a kitchen cabinet she's been working with mm -hmm. for the past three months that has given her some pretty good advice. Uh, there's a very high level of high level of trust, so I think we should expect to see some of those players coming forward uh, and playing a really significant role at City Hall. But look, this is a complete changing of the guard mm -hmm. at City Hall in a really significant way. And I think Scott's point is a very important one. There's getting the infrastructure in place, setting herself up to deliver on the mandate and the promises that she has made around affordable housing, around transit. That is job number one getting those chairs, mm -hmm. and also taking a look at the bureaucracy and what needs to be fixed within the bureaucracy yeah, as well. Olivia, Olivia Chow saying in her uh, you know, victory speech tonight, she wants to work together, work with everyone, so we'll see how that goes. Quick break right now on Toronto's new mayor. That is going to be Olivia Chow. More reaction and analysis coming up on our special coverage. Friday. 
Be the first Hang on. to witness. I've been looking for this all my life. The fireworks. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Sorry about the fans. What? The AC isn't working. What? It's not working. I agree. This isn't working. Exactly. I look to the future, and I see what's to come. Glimpses of green grass, soft and smooth. Towering trees flowing to and from. In the finer details, uniquely my own, I take comfort knowing this is home. Treasure Hill. New communities coming soon. Your doctor says you can't work, and I believe them, and so should your long-term disability insurer. My name is Aaron Waxman, and if your disability claim has been denied for any reason, call me at 416-661-4878 or pound LTD on your cell phone. And before you call, you should always remember that there are no bad questions. 416-661-4878 or pound LTD. Come on, Snow, let's go. The Monitoring Center is a full-service leading provider of high-quality, low-cost home and business security alarm monitoring. With rates starting at $9.99 a month, we can monitor 99% of existing alarm systems. Switch your current alarm to TMC or have us professionally install a new one for you. Experience personalized customer service. Get two months of free monitoring today at themonitoringcenter.com or call 1-866-247-4999. Follow breaking election news in Toronto tonight. Olivia Chow is the new mayor of Toronto. Chow beat Anna Bailao by 34,000 votes. CB24's Beatrice Fazeman is at Chow's headquarters and joins us live with the latest reaction. Dance party still going on there. and jubilation here at Olivia Chow headquarters. It was packed like sardines. You couldn't move shoulder to shoulder. People chanting, people singing, people dancing. It's still going as a dance party right now, Lena and Nick. But Chow today delivering a message of hope and bringing with her change to City Hall. Here's a bit of what she told the dozens of supporters back in the room. Wow, what a night. <laughs> If you ever doubted what's possible together, if you, if you ever questioned your faith in a better future, and what we can do with each other, for each other, tonight is your answer. Thank you to the people of Toronto for the trust you've placed in me and the mandate for change as your new mayor. And let's talk about the new mayor right now with City Councilor Alejandro Brava. How are you feeling? I'm feeling very happy because I think that tonight is a triumph of hope for the city being what it has to become. And I think that all there were many negative messages thrown at Olivia. She stayed above it. And the reality is that every candidate in this election ran against the record of the previous mayor. And in the end, what they chose was Olivia's vision for the future of the city. Everyone is united in this city around the urgency of getting affordable housing, around the crisis of homelessness, around transit. So I feel ready to get to work. Pretty much all of the new councillors, yourself, Councillor Morley, Councillor Malik, Councillor Meyer, all supported Olivia Chow. Why? What kind of a message do you think that sends essentially to the old administration, to the councillors that have been there for a long time? Well, we came in uh, and, and won elections where uh, the previous mayor had endorsed our opponents. And then when we started, almost immediately we found out that he wanted to have these minority powers where he was going to rule without 
without the majority, and that is the absolute uh, definition of democracy. It's majority rule. So that was that was a problem. And then we saw someone who was saying it's not good enough, and we know that she has the experience. Many of us have worked with her for decades. We've seen her fight for things and build coalitions. She's going to be amazing at dealing with the provincial and federal government, and I know that she's going to work with the interest of Toronto first. There were 10 city councillors who supported Anna Bailao, the former deputy mayor. How does she now get those 10 councillors on board? Because it takes a lot of collaboration at City Hall to get an agenda passed. I think quite easily because everyone is so clear on what's broken in the city right now. Uh, she's got a big mandate. She's coming in with the love and support of the public. Uh, the election is done and now she's our mayor and I think that other councillors will work with her and they will see that the Olivia Chow that built coalitions on city council before, on school board before, is somebody that we can work with and we can trust. We can trust in her vision, in her word and in her leadership. And the deputy mayor committing to an easy transition of power. Councillor Bravo, thank you for your time. Thank you so much. So the dance party is still going. I still can't hear myself speak all these hours later, but uh, certainly a, an air of change in the air. The slogan behind me changing from together we can to together we will. And so that's the message presented by Olivia Chow here to her supporters at Chow HQ tonight. Back to you guys. Yeah, a new era in Toronto politics. Beatrice Basement reporting live from Chow HQ. Thanks so much, Beatrice. Okay, take a look at this. This is really interesting. Voter turnout this by-election, we've just got the numbers, was 39%. Just to give you some perspective, that's higher than October's municipal election. Back then, voter turnout was sitting at 29%. So that is significant. All right, and John Tory, the former mayor, also releasing a statement this evening after it became clear that Olivia Chow was going to be the city's next mayor. His statement begins, My sincere congratulations to Olivia Chow on her election as mayor of Toronto. She brings a great deal of experience in the public life of our city and our country, and I know that will serve her well as mayor. We are so fortunate to live in Toronto, and I know Ms. Chow will work with council and with the other governments to make our city even better. That statement goes on to say she still loves the city as I do, and I will do anything I can to help her in the days and months ahead. While it is the biggest possible privilege to hold this job, it's also complex and challenging, and we should all be hoping for her success. Let's take a look at some of the latest numbers tonight. So Olivia Chow, of course, elected as Toronto's mayor. She is finishing pretty much with almost 269,000 votes. There is a 34,000 vote difference between Olivia Chow and Anna Bailao. She finished second tonight. Mark Saunders, a distant third. Indeed, and yeah, that's a really seven polls still to come in. So these aren't final numbers, but they're as good as it goes. Uh, Anthony Fury finishing fourth here this evening, just ahead of Josh Matlow. You can see the difference there of about 320 votes right there. So Fury fourth, Josh Matlow going back to council. He finished fifth tonight. And Mitzi Hunter, who left her job, resigned as an MPP at Queen's Park to run for mayor of Toronto. She finishes this evening in six in the overall vote count. All right, Chloe Brown finishing seventh tonight. Brad Bradford coming in eighth. And Chris Sakocha, that's a name a lot of people recognize, known as Chris Guy, controversial candidate. He finishes third tonight. Ninth. Ninth tonight. Yeah. And uh, let's round things out with the final page here. Anthony Peruzza, who will also be going back to council. He had just over 3,000 votes this evening. Uh, Jago Gong uh, finishing with just under 3,000. That's and, Edward Gong. Yeah, and Lyle Sanders uh, who we hadn't spoken about really, uh, finishes with 2,700. So that rounds out the top 12 in terms of this campaign this evening. Live now to CB24's Eden DeBebe. She is still at Anna Bailao's headquarters working on the latest reaction. I see there's still a number of supporters there, Eden. That's exactly right, Lena. Surprisingly enough, the signs have been cleared out, but the music is still playing and hope is still alive here. Of course, Anna Bailao was not able to win this candidacy, but the race was a lot tighter than a lot of pollsters were expecting, which is a lot of happy energy here, at least explains why people were so excited. Now, when it comes to Anna Bailao's concession speech, it was short and sweet, really focused on thanking all of her supporters, her family and friends, and of course, the other candidates that did in 
endorse her, or at least other members of parliament. We saw local councillors, 10, the most out of any candidate, come behind her as well. So it was a lot of thank yous there. And she herself admitted in that concession speech that though the results weren't what they were hoping for, she's still very pleased with the outcome. Take a listen. And it's up to each one of us to be good neighbours, to come together and help build our city each and every day. The results of tonight are not what we were hoping for. I know, I know. <laughs> but, but after speaking... <laughs> After speaking with tens of thousands of residents in every corner of Toronto, I'm so optimistic about the future of our city. And I want to sincerely, sincerely congratulate Olivia Chow on her win tonight. Congratulations, Olivia. Now, Anna Bailao did just leave the building moments ago, but not before taking the time from her session speech to right now thank every single person in the room, talk to them, shake their hand, give them a hug. Talk, there were tears in the crowd, Anna Bailao herself tearing up a few times. So clearly a very emotional night for everyone involved. Yeah, indeed. Eden DeBeba live at Vilo HQ. And that is the thing, of course, about elections. There can really only be one winner. Uh, let's go to the third place HQ right now. Steve Ryan standing by at Saunders headquarters. Uh, Mark Saunders really finishing a distant third. But the campaign, Steve, really sort of trying to put a bit of a spin on that tonight. Yeah, they did, Nick. And before we get to that, um, Mark's been very gracious with his time, so I'm going to get right to him. Uh, Mark, thank you again for your time, and your, first your thoughts on tonight. No, listen, it was a tough battle, 102 people that uh, wanted to give their footprint and what Toronto should look like, and at the end, there was one winner, and it was Olivia Chow, so congratulations to her. But I had a team here, so many people that volunteered, put their blood, sweat, and tears into this campaign, and uh, believed in the vision. But right now, it's about what's going to happen for tomorrow, Toronto tomorrow, and I want to make sure that uh, we all pitch in and figure out what, where to move our city. Now, Nick was just asking me, and I realize you're, it's like reading tea leaves, but I spoke with your campaign, and they were talking about John Tory's endorsement of Anna Bilal. And do you think that may have had some effect as to where you, not looking for excuses, but do you think that may realistically have had some effect on where you where you finished in, the, in this race? No, listen, uh, we had two very... Uh, powerful people that had uh, endorsements in this campaign and and it had effect for sure uh, but the issue is right now about it's over and right now uh, where's Toronto going to be moving and what do we need to do to help make Toronto strong and vibrant and uh, a place where people want to come and uh, be safe and enjoy uh, Toronto. Now, last I, I spoke with you about this earlier as a police chief not many people had that position you get to see the city in one lens as a mayoral candidate, do you see the city from a different lens? Yeah, as, as newcomers, you know, talking to people and knocking on doors, uh, not having that police lens on, it, it's a city of immigrants. People that come here because they want better education for their kids, they want a place to stay, they want to get a job, and they want to, you know, have a, a decent job and, and move things forward. And so a city of immigrants is what Toronto is when we talk about a, a world within a city. And uh, there are a lot of things that need to be done understanding and respecting that Toronto is so unique in that framework. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. I'll send it back to the desk. All right, Steve Ryan, live with Mark Saunders tonight. Thank you, Steve. And Anthony Fury got a warm welcome from his supporters at the Metropolitan Centre this evening, despite coming up short in his bid for the mayor's office. The former Toronto Sun columnist had campaigned on promises to hire hundreds of police officers and crack down on encampments. Fury says he's happy with how he performed. And let's head back to the power board right now. Lindsay Biscay has been live giving us the details behind the numbers. The map of Toronto tonight changed a lot, Lindsay. It really did. And uh, I'm going to take a deeper dive into a portion of this map, which actually really did change a lot. And that's the Scarborough area. So you can see Olivia Chow did come out on top here with 36% uh, of that. But uh, Anna Bailao taking uh, Scarborough Rouge Park there. If we do an even deeper dive, Scarborough Centre, Olivia Chow coming out with 7,970 votes, a 908 lead over Anna Bailao. Uh, if we look at Scarborough Agent Court, Olivia Chow coming out with a more than 2,000 vote lead over Anna Bailao in this ward. And then if we go down into Scarborough Southwest, Anna Bailao, or, or Chow rather, coming out with a more than 1,000 vote lead over Anna Bailao here as well. 
Let's take a look at who lives here, though. Going into these groups that we talked about earlier, New Canadian Mosaic takes up a real big chunk of this map. You can see them here. Big City Burbs taking up a second uh, portion and the Metro Boomers with the third. But if we take a look at New Canadian Mosaic, this is the middle to lower income immigrant households making just over $100,000 a year in average household income. Uh, and so, you know, this is a very diverse ward. Most of Scarborough is, so it's not entirely a surprise that uh, Olivia Chow came out on top. Transit, though, in Scarborough, a real big issue. For a lot of people living here, it's hard to get into the downtown core from Scarborough. You can see a lot of people drive in Scarborough, and especially in Scarborough Southwest. However, a lot of people use public transit, 21.5%. That's above the average for Toronto in terms of public transit users. And uh, we know as well that Olivia Chow spent a lot of time in Scarborough campaigning, talking about the SRT and the plans in November, also the Eglinton LR, uh, East LRT. So a lot of different uh, uh, topics here when it comes to transit. But again, Olivia Chow coming out on top in Scarborough. Nick, Lena, back to you. Some really interesting results. Lindsay Biscay alive at the Power Board. Thank you, Lindsay. We're going to take another quick break. This is Toronto's breaking news, CP24. Our special coverage continues after this. You don't move on because you're ready to. You move on because you've outgrown who you used to be. I'm on the precipice of doing something either really stupid or totally liberating. Come work for me. But my kids need me even more these days. I realized we never know what tomorrow will bring. Sitting here with you is like 10 years just... The new $50 Mega Instant Ticket has huge top prizes of $5 million. That's huge! Yeah! A game so big, Ooh. it's giant. If you're looking to get into the trades, your search is over. Join with confidence, graduate with the skills to pay the bills. Boxing Week is back at Leon's and it's on now. Save up to 50% on select furniture. Save up to 50% on select mattresses. And save up to an extra $300 on select appliance packages. Boxing Week prices are on now. All right, it's today. Nothing brings the pack together like a trip to Great Wolf Lodge. our special coverage that was Josh Matlow thanking his supporters at the Firkin on Bay this evening after Olivia Chow's victory was announced no doubt an emotional evening there the Ward 12 city councillor says he's proud of the campaign and the team <laughs> That's Brad Bradford this evening arriving in his election night headquarters at Local 1794 on the Danforth. Bradford remains the city councillor for Beaches East York. He was first elected in 2018 and he actually welcomed his second daughter during the campaign, Bronwyn. Brad that. Bradford, yeah. spent centuries evolving with the world. That's the nature of being the economy, observing investors choose assets to balance risk and reward. With one element securing portfolios time after time, gold. Agile and liquid, a proven protector. An ever-evolving enabler of bold decisions. An asset more relevant than ever before. Gold, your strategic advantage. Heavy hitter, the original, the award winner, the non-conformist, the weekend warrior. There's an award-winning Ram truck just for you. 
with a full line of trucks for immediate delivery during month of Ram. Get 15% off MSRP and Ram Classic for up to 11,000 in discounts. Plus, get 4.99% financing. You're too depressed to work. You know it, and your doctor knows it. And still, your long-term disability insurer denies your claim. My name is Aaron Waxman, and I've spent my career helping disabled people just like you. Call me at 416-661-4878 or pound LTD on your cell phone. And before you call, you should always remember that there are no bad questions. 416-661-4878 or pound LTD. Back live with our election coverage special, Toronto's new mayor. That new mayor, of course, is going to be Olivia Chow. But it's interesting as we sit in the studio, Lena, and listen to our sort of pundits and panelists sort yeah. of talking about what's going on and the implications here. Adam Vaughn and Scott Reed are having a really interesting conversation about the potential federal implications, both of them know that level very well, of a Chow government mayoralty. Uh, Adam, I'll start with you. What do you think this could mean for politicians watching from Ottawa tonight? Well, it puts Scarborough in play. Scarborough is clearly um, a, a jurisdiction that's capable of choosing different parties and different elections different each, each time. I mean, Rob Ford built his mayoralty campaign out of Scarborough. Um, you know, the, the, the Trudeau Liberals hold every seat in, in Scarborough. Uh, and now the NDP has got a beachhead in Scarborough. And so how Ottawa responds to Scarborough is going to have a huge impact uh, on, on what kind of policies and what kind of success Olivia Chow has as mayor. But what's interesting is that the minute you start floating the NDP vote in Scarborough, as Jack Layton did in one election, you end up with a Conservative Prime Minister. Mm. When Toronto doesn't go red, it goes blue. And, and when the NDP vote in the suburbs goes up, the red vote goes down and the blue vote, vote prevails. And so the happiest politician in, in, in Canada tonight mm -hmm. might be Pierre Pauly of watching tonight's he, results. Second maybe to Olivia Chow. It, 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 <laughs> second to <laughs> Olivia Chow, fair enough. But in terms of the, on the national scene, mm -hmm. because what it shows is a resurgent NDP in Toronto means a lower Liberal vote typically. Mm -hmm. And that spells trouble for the Trudeau Liberals if they can't get it right, which may be why Trudeau and Chow can strike a deal. Scott? Well, there's uh, one very simple response if you're in the Prime Minister's office. And um, if you look at where Trudeau's uh, strength has been, it's been working with the NDP, think about the federal parliament, and then eating their lunch electorally. Yeah. Look at these by-elections yeah. that happened last week, right? Those NDP voters went liberal in those ridings. Yep. Now, uh, if I'm the Prime Minister, I see Chow coming in. She's going to be thinking about Scarborough. I'm going to have those Scarborough MPs in my caucus, scared witless, I'm going to cut a deal. I'm going to do something. I'm going to try to demonstrate that I can work with her so that I can make the argument in the next federal election that, hey, NDP voters, Chow supporters, those who voted with her, you can vote with me with comfort. You don't need to jump all the way to Jagmeet Singh, right? You can stay with me, and that allows him so, to fight off the Pierre Polyev. Here's the challenge in Scarborough. The issue is transit. Yes, it is. And, yeah. and, and Mr. Said. the federal provincial governments have just put a lot of money on the table for transit in Toronto. And the Ontario line, as an example, it was a $10 billion project. It's already at $20 billion. Mm -hmm. And Doug Ford wants $5 billion from, from Ottawa to, to, to cover the cost overruns. That doesn't leave a lot of room for Ottawa to spend money on transit in Scarborough. So some decisions are going to have to be made. Doug Ford is going to be at the table because he controls how that money gets spent in, in Ontario. And so there's a very interesting Scarborough conversation about what does Scarborough actually want out of transit, usually subway, subway, subways. Thank you, Rob Ford. What can they afford? Not subway, subway, subways, and that's mm. a challenge. But you it's, could go bigger. It's, it is a really difficult challenge. That, that's All so right. interesting. I want to pick up on another interesting storyline. I want to bring in Adrian for this one. Voter turnout. We were watching that really closely. We thought it was going to be really low, especially because this is a by-election. Turns out it is sitting at 39%. That's a significant increase from last year, Adrian. Are you surprised? A little bit, but I think that you know we saw a good, healthy, uh, advanced poll. Um, look, this was a change election. No incumbent. And a lot of names on the ballot that... You know, it could have gone really any way at, at one point. So I think that that's a positive thing that we have still some healthy democracy in, in, in this city. Look, last election, 2022, I, every, it was a foregone conclusion. You know, there was some suggestion that, you know, against former Mayor John Tory, there wasn't a lot of competition against him, even though Gil Panalosa had a, a healthy second place. I, I think that this time around, you know, there, there was 
th they love the Olivia Chow comeback story. That was interesting. She's had a lot of years to you know, recover from was to be charitable, a disastrous 2014 campaign. Um, and that name recognition was helpful. There was a message that she had uh, that Torontonians wanted to hear, at least a good a portion of wanted to hear, to bring her over to success. But we still have a lot of work to do. I mean, we shouldn't be jumping up and down with 37% or 38%. Like, right. that's still pretty damn low. Yeah, less than um, 50, yeah. And, and, you know, moving forward in the next prevent municipal election, it will change a bit. But there were no council races buttressing it. There were no other races, you know, to focus on. It was just this. So by that measure, okay. Not bad. Yeah. Well, okay. except for in 2018, uh, the, you know, the voter turnout for the, the keys Tory race was about 40%. So when you actually have two credible candidates can go head-to-head, -head, uh, Torontonians do turn, tune in. In, 2000, in 2022, what we just saw, that you know, the 10% drop from just a few, uh, almost a year ago, uh, tells us that, you know, that, uh, that race was not electric. It was, did not galvanize people's interest. They, they thought that John Tory was a shoe-in, mm -hmm. that, you know, Gil Penalosa, dear friend, but he wasn't going to do it. Um, but, you know, given the chance that people have real choices, they will turn out, and that's what we saw today. Uh, Jennifer, you also worked very closely with John Tory when you, when you were at City Hall. We haven't really even broken down what he said in his statement tonight about Olivia Chow and offering his up if it's necessary and talking about the challenges of the job. What did you make of the fact that we've heard from John Tory tonight, not verbally, but in a statement? Well, I think he had no choice but to say something tonight because uh, I think he was reluctantly pulled into this campaign. It was very clear that Anna needed his participation and needed some help and very clearly she got a boost from his help so I think he once he was in he was in he mm -hmm. you know he's no longer on the sidelines he's he's in the ring so he absolutely had to say something and I think we saw a very generous statement as anyone would expect from him I like it that he really emphasized how difficult the job is and that everyone's going to need to rally around the mayor. I think that is the right messaging as well, particularly given that on so many issues at City Hall, you need collaboration to advance an outcome. So I think it was a perfectly fine statement. I think he probably uh, was wishing tonight that he hadn't jumped into the ring a week ago, just like I'm pretty sure that uh, Premier Ford was sort of wishing he hadn't jumped really? into the you, ring you as well. You think they regret that? I think it didn't, you know. I, I mean, I don't know before, but I wouldn't if I was John sure, Tory. Tonight's a flex didn't. for John Tory, isn't it? I mean, let's to give the guy his due, you know, three days ago, Anna Baila was supposed to get doubled in this race and end up in third place. And tonight, uh, she made this thing a, uh, a heartbeater. So, so then what does that say about Doug Ford, Adrian, that his favorite candidate didn't do well tonight? Well, that's the challenge with any endorsement, right? When Premier Ford said, oh, I'm staying out of it, but then we put out a story that there's a lawn sign on his front, you know, which caused some consternation. Then he's in it. But that happened, you know, four days ago or five days ago. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, I know that they had their big Ford Fest on Friday night. But what they need, if, if there was a legit endorsement and help for, for Saunders, for example, that comes with lists. It comes with resources. It comes with volunteers. That's what that comes with. So... Either you're all in or you're all out. Okay. You know, well, and well, we saw where that I was ended. Gonna say robocalls. He did robocalls. <laughs> right. He did. We're right up against the clock, though. Speaking of all out, we'll be back with more of our election special and analysis right after this break. Toronto has a new mayor, Olivia Chow. Stay with us. This Friday. I've seen things. I've been tortured with voodoo. Shot nine times. But I've been looking for this all my life. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Tickets on sale now. Susan, beautiful dream. Thanks. But the next Lotto Max jackpot's an estimated $30 million. Oh. As your dream coach, I think you can dream bigger. All right. Let's turn the country home into a villa with a vineyard. <laughs> okay, keep going. Uh, ooh. One more thing. Hey, where should I put this big wheel of cheese? Girl can dream. Next Lotto Max jackpot is an estimated $30 million. I look to the future and I see what's to come. Glimpses of green grass, soft and smooth. Towering trees blowing to and from. In the finer details, Uniquely my own, I take comfort knowing 
This is home. Treasure Hill. New communities coming soon. Dad, we got this. We got this. Let me check out the town. We got this. We got this. Life is for living. We got this. Let's partner for all of it. Edward Jones. Hello, I'm Russell Oliver, and I am the cash man. Bring me your used jewelry, and I will give you cash. Oh, staying with us we continue to follow breaking news olivia chow is the new mayor of toronto making history as this city's first racialized mayor we begin our coverage with our beatrice Faisman tonight she has been keeping a very close eye at olivia chow's headquarters tonight beatrice all night long since 624 declared that Olivia Chow was going to be the new mayor of the city. I gotta say, a lot of young people in this room as well who felt empowered, who felt hope uh, with Olivia Chow's messaging. She delivered a, a speech about half an hour long on stage uh, talking about hope, talking about the opportunities uh, that she hopes to bring to Toronto, talking about the fact that she came here as an immigrant, 13 years old, Speaking of working together, I said to Premier Ford, who graciously called me tonight, and, and his, and his um, minister, Steve Clark, called me and he said, we look forward to working together. Yes. We look forward to finding common ground Right? Because I know we both believe in this people of this city. The, and yes, we both believe in, we love this city. The people have sent a message today. They want to get things done. Yeah. yeah. Like building affordable housing and improving TTC. <laughs> Well, Mr. Premier, we're ready. Let's work together to get it done. Chow also talking about opening the doors to City Hall to allow more conversation to happen with the residents. And so here we have the new mayor-elect of the City of Toronto, supported by Beatrice Faisman at uh, Olivia Chow headquarters tonight where the party continues. Premier Doug Ford, meantime, he said last week that an Olivia Chow victory would be, quote, an unmitigated disaster. 
Tonight, he released a statement congratulating her. It Here's says what that says. Throughout Olivia's life, she has proven her desire and dedication to serving the city that many of us call home. While we're not always going to agree on everything, what we can agree on is our shared commitment to making Toronto a place where business, families, and workers can thrive. As Ontario and Toronto continues to grow, it's never been more important to get on with building homes and public transit, especially where they can be built together to create communities where people can live, work, and enjoy time with their family and friends. He goes on to say, hope that we continue to have a willing partner in the city of Toronto as we deliver on our plan to build Ontario. Olivia Chow also saying tonight that she received a call from the Premier. John Tory released a statement as well this evening that reads, in part, my sincere congratulations to Olivia Chow on her election as mayor of Toronto. She brings a great deal of experience in the public life of our city and our country, and I know that will serve her well as mayor. We are so fortunate to live in Toronto, and I know Ms. Chow will work with council and with the other governments to make our city even better. Live now to CP24's Eden DeBebe. She is at Anna Bailao's headquarters. Eden. Well, Lena, it's been a very long night here. We do still have a small but mighty group of people, Bailao supporters, of course, here at the party. I want to call it a party because people are still very excited here. As Anna was giving her concession speech, there were many cheers, people chanting her name, people saying three more years, three more years, almost alluding to the fact that Bailao might just be running again in the next election. Something that she didn't confirm herself, speaking to us one-on-one -on -one after coming off that stage, but did say that she was very thankful for the support of not only the people who voted for her, but her volunteers, and of course, people who endorsed her. She had 10 city councillors endorsing her, the most out of any of the mayoral candidates. But again, conceding her loss, she did say she wanted to wish the best to Olivia Chow and looked ahead to what that run as mayor could look like for her. Take a listen. In our city's most challenges moments, Toronto has always had a way of coming together to find solutions. And now with Olivia Chow as our next mayor, it's time to come together, to be there for one another, and to support solutions that fix our services, that build housing, and make life more affordable to all the residents of Toronto. And you can hear this chance. You can see the people jumping up and down. There clearly is still a lot of energy here. And considering how close the race really was between Chow and Bailao, it's anyone's guess of what could happen in next year's time. For now, sending it back to you both at the desk. Mayoral candidate Mark Saunders finished a distant third this evening, and he spoke to his supporters who were gathered at Bistro on Avenue this evening. Congratulations to Olivia Chow. She fought a tough fight, and at the end of the day, she came out victorious. And you know what? We have to do everything we can to make this city an amazing city, an incredible city that it is, but we have so much further to do. So we have to support. Olivia Chow in that position of mayor because there's a lot of work that we all have to do. Now, voter turnout in this by-election was 39%. That is higher than in October's municipal election, which came in at 29%. So as we talk about voter turnout, let's talk about the overall total votes now. Yeah, Olivia, Olivia Chow there, uh, leading by... 34,000 votes. That meant that's how many votes were separating her from Anna Bailao, who placed second tonight. She finished second. It was very tight at the beginning of the evening. And look at Mark Saunders. He placed, finished a distant third. Anthony Fury uh, sort of came up and gained momentum in the last part of the campaign, finishing fourth here, just yeah. edging out uh, Josh Matlow, who will go back as a city councilor, of course, beating Matlow by a couple of hundred votes there. And Mitzi Hunter there finishing in sixth place with about just over 21,000 votes. And Chloe Brown, she did very well tonight. Uh, pol policy analyst, sort of considered an outsider at City Hall. She finished with about 19,000 votes. Brad Bradford finished with about 9,200 votes. And uh, on the final board here, Anthony Peruzza coming in with just over 3,000. Uh, Jiahua Guang uh, coming in with just under 3,000. And Lyle Sanders, just under 2,800 votes.
Let's check in with Lindsay Biscay right now. She's at the power board. It's been fascinating to yeah. watch the map of Toronto change, and certainly on the Scarborough side of the coin tonight, Lindsay, a real change. A real change in Scarborough, that's right. And now we're going to focus into the downtown core right here. Olivia Chow really managed to sweep this uh, with a number of, of, you'd say, wins in some of the wards. Uh, you can see, we'll take a look at Spadina, Fort York. In Ward 10, Olivia Chow coming out with more than eight thousand votes ahead of Anna Bailau. If we move over to Toronto Danforth, this is the late Jack Layton's federal ward. Olivia Chow won this one as well with more than 10,000 votes over Anna Bailau. And University Rosedale, uh, also a win for Olivia Chow here with more than 6,000 votes. But there's something all these wards have in common, and that is who lives here. Young in the City makes up a large portion of all three of these wards that we just touched on. You can see all the purple on the map here for University Rosedale. These are educated downtown young professionals. They make a good amount of money per year, uh, but there's a lot of renters in these wards and home values are high. So that's kind of the problem here that we've been reflecting on. As you can see, uh, for University Rosedale, 57% are renters. That's above average. 17% are intending to buy. Uh, that's well above average. Average is 14% for Toronto. So maybe Olivia Chow's message on affordability, on renting, helped her win this one. Either way, she did clinch those wards and is now going to be our new mayor. Nick, Lena, back to you. Lindsay, thanks so much. Stay with us as we continue to follow breaking news. Olivia Chow is Toronto's next mayor. We'll talk back with our panelists right after this here on Alexa Special, Toronto's new mayor. You should be having more fun. The best stories are right here. And now, pay $30 less with a Crave Total six-month plan. You better buckle up. Okay, I have a secret. The groundbreaking series everyone's talking about. I want to be the biggest touring act ever. And the moments you can't get enough of. What happened last night? All in one place. Stream now. Pay $30 less with a Crave Total six month plan versus a monthly subscription. Being a single parent, I don't have to commute, I don't have to pay for childcare. Being flexible online was the biggest thing for me. Basically, at this point, I'm sitting at home taking class in my jammies, but hey, I'm doing it. Hey, Vanessa. So this is where the party at, huh? <laughs> I'm just in the slots for a minute. Oh, I got my little blackjack heater going myself. That's my guy Steve right there. Would be nice to get a king, Steve. Come on, give Fox that king, Come Steve. On, Steve. Give me the king. King time, Steve. Give me king, Steve. Steve, we need a king, Steve. Give me the king, Steve. 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 <laughs> He got the king. I got it. Got the king. Right out of high school, jumping into such a rigorous program, it was terrifying. So my parents and I agreed that this was the best first step into building my career. The overwhelming support at this school, it, it really helps you get through it. Well, we've shown you a lot of numbers this evening, but here's a number we wanted to focus on, the turnout in this by-election. Voter turnout tonight was 39%. That is higher than October's, October's municipal election, which came in at 29%. Yeah, that's pretty significant. Let's check in with our political panels once again tonight. Uh, look, uh, nobody wants to talk about another election. We just had two. <laughs> but I'm going to go there, Scott. I'm going to go there because <laughs> okay. the reality is there is another one coming up in two and a half years. Who do you think will be back to run for mayor? Wow, that's a really interesting question question. Let me pull one name out. I don't know if she'll run again or not, but I think that she merits mention because she hasn't had any mention this evening. Chloe Brown, yeah. right, pulling in 18,000 votes without a scrap of support from any of the media platforms across the city. She wasn't in any debate. She didn't get any profile. She didn't get any uh, assistance or support. And um, that's an impressive number. Um, so, you know, she's going to feel reassured. Is she going to be a contender, or, you know, in two and a half, three years? I don't think so necessarily. Um, I, beyond that, I, I'm not certain. I mean, I, I think if you're Brad Bradford, are you thinking to yourself, I'm itching to repeat this? Probably not. Um, Josh Matlow, interesting, but I mean, this was a, this was a, a beating. And Mark Saunders, I would think that he's had his taste of politics mm -hmm. now after the provincial and municipal experience. Not, not really working. Let me give you an interesting yeah. number. Mm -hmm. In 2014, Olivia Chow ran and finished third, and she received 226,000 votes. She did 40,000 votes better tonight. 
interesting. This is not wow. a, a, a massive victory of epic biblical proportions. What this is is a, is a very defined candidate running a very defined race and getting a very defined mandate from that vote. But there are a lot of votes out there that ne didn't get cast tonight. Right. And in the next election, that's what she's up against. And so yeah. what I'd be watching at City Council is what does Brad, Brad Bradford do? What does Josh Matlow do as they return? What happens if Gary Crawford wins in the by-election and there's a by-election for a city council seat in a few months? There is a lot of things that she has to deal with at City Hall, and that vote plurality, as strong as it looks tonight, is not as strong as people might think it is. And Jennifer McKelvey, of course, backed by Lau, not yep. the incoming mayor, now uh, Olivia Chow. Kristen, I want to bring you back in the conversation. We yep. talked about Jamal's group chat earlier with the new council <laughs> on cabinet. We heard from Marit Stiles at, at uh, by Lau HQ, or pardon me, at Chow HQ with... Uh, yep. with uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, Beatrice earlier, boy, it's been four <laughs> it's and a half late. hours. We're tired a long night. Yeah. What have you heard from your NDP caucus at Queen's Park this evening? What's the reaction been to Chow becoming the mayor? Well, I won't, I won't deny it. Uh, my phone did blow up. I think that uh, <laughs> the New Democrats are very happy. Olivia has a lot of the values that we have with respect to investing in people, investing in public services, pe making sure that they stay, stay strong. Uh, those are all good things that, that, that the city like Toronto needs, especially when we're seeing the city crumbling at the edges. People talk about it not working as well as it could that requires investments that requires people building up as opposed to tearing down and so you know I am personally very happy I know that uh, members of our party are very happy some of them worked on Olivia Chow's campaign but it wasn't exclusively a new Democratic win uh, what we saw is that a lot of young people gravitated to Olivia's message uh, that was noted by Beatrice in her remarks as well uh, Olivia was talking about people being left behind in the uh, in the election and throughout the city and I think that that message of positivity of hope when people are feeling hopeless that's what people were gravitating to and I can't stress enough is that when you have 102 candidates mm -hmm. running in this election you're not gonna get this groundswell where you're gonna see one person split, you know just mm -hmm. peel away what we would have seen and I've seen it myself in my first run uh, first election uh, was um, was 15 candidates every got everybody got a sliver of the pie but what really matters here is that Olivia got got the biggest sliver of the pie, and you've now heard with the Prime Minister, the Premier, all saying that they're ready to work with her, and she's going to hit the ground running. Mm -hmm. Jamal, there's been so much talk about Chow Mentum, and a lot of people will say, look, it, it just comes down to name recognition, but Kristen was talking about uh, Olivia Chow's campaign engaging the youth vote. What, how do you think she did that? Uh, I think she just really ran a positive campaign that focused on the issues that people were dealing with. Transit, housing affordability, uh, investment in our social support, things that really resonated with young people. You know, a lot of young people don't really, hadn't for a long time seen themselves reflected at City Hall. City Hall was very old, it was mostly white, it was almost all property owners, everybody drove. That's not the city council that we have today. And now we have a mayor that's more reflective of that. And, you know, just to pick up on Christian's point, you know, the first two councillors to endorse Olivia Chow were myself and Councillor Morley. We're both card-carrying liberals. So she <laughs> did, she was able to sort of get that general, broad, progressive vote, and she pulled it, and she did well. Yeah. And so let's talk about council now, Jennifer. Uh, we've talked about so many of the issues that Toronto, is, and we, we're not going to rehash them now. What's job one? Is there a definable job one for Olivia Chow now? Whew, there's so many jobs. Right. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, How do you prioritize? There's a ton of jobs. Well, as I mentioned earlier, she has to get her team in place. She has to get the infrastructure around her to be able to deliver. At the end of the day, the mayor of a city of this size is actually a CEO and has a very public role as a CEO, but has uh, coalitions to build on council, has roles to assign people. And, you know, successful mayors are very good delegators. They figure out who they can trust. They figure out who can get the job done. And then they let, let people run with that work and get the work done. They absolutely have to do that. So she's going to be very busy figuring out who belongs in what role and that will include consulting with her council colleagues and you know if she's smart which you know we're getting the impression that she is she just ran a really smart campaign mm -hmm. um, if she's smart she's also going to reach across the aisle and she's going to bring in some people less let's not forget
that Mal Lossman made, uh, gave Jack Layton the cycling portfolio, and, and Jack Layton was the one who created our first cycling plan as a city. He reached right across the aisle. Uh, he engaged Olivia on the housing, sorry, on the child nutrition programs. She was empowered by a mayor on the other side of the political spectrum. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that she's bringing that energy into how she leads. She spoke that way this evening, and she also ran that kind of a campaign. It's really hard to suddenly, you know, link arms when you've really been pretty nasty yeah. over right. three months, and she did not run a nasty campaign. She ran a hopeful campaign that did really resonate, I think, with young people. I think that it was that hopefulness and those values of let's do what's in the best interest of the city. We're going to see very quickly whether she can build that team to get that job done. Very quickly, Adrian, there were 10 city councillors who did not endorse Olivia mm -hmm. Chow. Uh, how do you think they're feeling tonight? How does she build consensus on council? The expectations on Olivia Chow are very, very high. You're ne she's never going to be able to satisfy everybody. Those that, you know, the t over 200,000 plus people that voted for Anna Bailao, they wanted something very different than what Olivia Chow was offering. So, yes, it's nice that there was a positive campaign. I mean, you didn't see a lot of her, but that said, th there's, there's still a different perspective in this city that needs, that is being represented on council, like those 10 that you, you talk about. So, I, I mean, Ms. Chow is going to have endless debates at council now about the gardener, about luxury taxes. I don't think that that's what Toronto needs. So let's see what she does. Let her put her team into place. Let her put that executive into place. Um, you know, someone always says, show me your budget and I'll show you your priorities. That's what we need to, need to look at. And particularly with opening up those books, that filling of the billion and a half dollars, um, her first meeting with Mayor, uh, Premier Ford, her, her conversations with the federal government, those are all going to be f they're f focused like a laser on, on Ms. Chow. And the left, the progressive left that have put her in this position, have very high expect expectations that she is going to you know, move on their agenda too. So it's, it's an unenviable position to be in. Mm -hmm. Let's see what she does. Yeah, let's see what she does. Look, council panel, uh, you have been so insightful tonight. We want to thank all of you for spending your evening with us. It's been exciting, hasn't it? Uh, Adrian Bashra, <laughs> Adam Vaughn, Jamal Myers, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank and of you. course, on my side of the studio here, Kristen, Scott, Jennifer, thank you so much for your insights as well. Really great to have you on board tonight. Really helped drive our coverage forward. So thanks for the time and the expert opinion and a couple of laughs as well. Thank you all thank for being you. here too. And our coverage does continue right after this, our special coverage here of Toronto's new mayor. Olivia Chow is Toronto's new mayor. Coming up, we'll take a look at how some of the other candidates did tonight. That's coming up. food prices are through the roof and mortgage rates are skyrocketing too. Talk about bad timing. There's bills, car payments, kids lessons and what about the fun stuff? You need room to breathe and someone to help figure it out. You need Newborrow to show you how to solve your debt and save money with the equity in your home. Use your home to get a loan with Newborrow. Start your new tomorrow at newborrow.com. There's no second chance in horse racing. It all comes down to those two minutes. They're off! McDonald's done it again! These are professional athletes driving professional athletes. Experience it live at the track. Visit OntarioRacing.com. Barry and Honey Sherman were one of Canada's wealthiest and most philanthropic couples. The bodies were found in a seated position, like the sculptures in their home. I have a belief that I know who did it. Closed captioning of this CP24 program is brought to you by Wet n Wild Toronto. For park hours and more, visit wetandwildtoronto.com. Wet n Wild, located at 427 and Finch.
Welcome back. Anthony Fury finished fourth tonight. The former Toronto Sun columnist had campaigned on promises to hire hundreds of police officers and crack down on encampments. He says he's feeling good about how he did. An emotional Josh Madlow thanking his supporters after Chow's victory. The Ward 12 councillor says he's proud of his campaign. Nancy Hunter spoke to her supporters at dawn on Danforth. The former Liberal MPP had been looking to make the jump from Queen's Park to City Hall after resigning her seat to run. And that's Brad Bradford arriving in his election night headquarters at Local 1794 on the Danforth. Bradford, of course, remains City Councilor for Beaches East York. He was first elected in 2018, and during the campaign, he and his wife welcomed their second child. Stay with us. We'll have more on Olivia Chow's victory right after this. Our coverage continues. Chum 104.5. Today's best music and your favorite throwbacks. With Marilyn Dennis and Jamar in the morning. Listen on the free iHeartRadio app. You use technology to enhance your sleep. Exercise smarter and improve your health. Why not use it to personalize your prescription glasses? Now with digital measurements, we help create a more personalized fit. Nobody cares for eyes more than Pearl. If you're looking to get into the trades, your search is over. Join with confidence, graduate with the skills to pay the bills. For 40 years, Tribute Communities has been building with a vision, a tribute to home, community, and the families that live in them. With over 40,000 homes built across the GTA, our reputation delivers quality, award-winning communities, customer service, and leadership within our industry. Driven by passion and integrity for over 40 years, we continue to build and maintain a tradition of excellence. My Is there more to life than shopping? Could contemplation of our insignificance in the cosmos be more important? Gross! I just need shopping with cash back. It's true. I love saving. Well, Toronto is about to get a new mayor. That, of yeah. course, is Olivia Chow. And Lindsay Biscay has been giving us the story behind the numbers at the Power Board tonight. Let's see how this final breakdown goes, Lindsay. Yeah, we're just going to bounce from side to side in the city here, Nick and Lena. So we've got the, the east side, actually. I'll start with the east side. You can see Olivia Chow doing well over there in the Scarboroughs, taking a uh, majority of the vote there. But if we go over to the west side, that's where you can see maybe not doing quite as well. This is Ford Nation, a couple endorsements here from Mark Saunders. Uh, so Olivia Chow obviously winning uh, the most votes here percentage wise one percentage point over Anna Bailao but clearly has some work to do here has some work cut out for her so uh, again with the East End you can see in Scarborough Olivia Chow coming out on top there over Anna Bailao so it'd be interesting as you see this divide uh, to see how things go from here but again that's uh, Olivia Chow declared mayor tonight back to you all right Lindsay Biscaya thanks so much for breaking down all these fascinating results tonight Stay right there. Olivia Chow has a new, Olivia Chow rather, is the new mayor of Toronto. We'll have highlights from tonight's results coming up next. This Friday, it make a date Hang on. with Destiny. I've been looking for this all my life. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. For over 55 years, Green Park Group has consistently built communities that people proudly call home. With over 82,000 units and counting, Green Park's excellence continues to rise to new heights. The next chapter of our legacy unfolds with stunning high-rise projects in Oakville, Milton, and Richmond Hill. Inspiring the people who bring communities to life, Green Park is the people's building. See for yourself at greenparkgroup.com. 
Can I get you anything? No, I'm fine. For those who really love their vehicle, give them the gift they really want. With over 100 automotive accessories, a gift from WeatherTech is the perfect choice. For the ultimate vehicle protection, go to weathertech.ca. People think you have to sign back a severance offer by a deadline. EmploymentLawyer.ca says that is a myth. Deadlines are used as a pressure tactic. Make sure the offer is fair before you sign. Always check with the Employment Lawyer first at EmploymentLawyer.ca. Delta Bingo is now online. And with guaranteed jackpot payouts of $20,000 every Saturday in July and $100,000 on August 5th, we think you'll be online too. Play at online.deltabingo.com. All right, Olivia Chow, elected Toronto mayor. Thanks so much for watching our election special. And we should point out Olivia Chow will be joining us live on CB24 Breakfast tomorrow at 7.15. Good night and thanks. Thank you to the people of Toronto for the trust you've placed in me and the mandate.